What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Am I live and is it working? I'm pretty sure it is. And let me know the light's good because usually I have the light angled a little different. Oh, this might be the way to go here. I think that might work. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? All right, let's see. Fish Layer Freshwater, what up? I asked him when his next live stream was. He said around spring break when he gets 75 hook sets. Cool, man. You have to let us know more about that. We're excited. What up, Firebird? Hey, Firebird, I hook set to you. We don't say uh, sub or subscribe in the chat because it's like becoming a bad word on YouTube. Kind of annoying. But we say hook set instead. So I just hook set to you before this. And I saw you had two, at least two videos on there. Um, and I watched a little bit of one, but then I ran out of time. That's why I was late because I was watching your video. So, guys, you can go check out Firebird Outdoors. I just met him recently. What up, Jade? Jaden Danger. Fish Slayer. Who else is in here? Henry Harrington. What's up, man? I saw Jeremy and Harrison were in here. Like I said, uh, Fish Natcher is doing a live tonight. So, if anybody can't join in here and wants to go be in Fish Natcher's live, and I think two stands is as well. So, I'm not expecting to have a giant... Uh, turn out tonight like i normally do i'm not expecting to have like 20 people in here unless somebody else's live stream ends and then people come over here so it looks like to me it says there's only three people in right now but i got seven thumbs up which is cool anybody who haven't hasn't hit that thumbs up go ahead and do that thanks for the four people who are in here what we're doing tonight i've got two mystery tackle boxes right here and the plan is to open them up and show you guys what's inside one's for panfish and uh i haven't I haven't opened it yet. I just peeked in enough to know that this one is the bass one right here. Put a tiny B on it so I remember. And this is the pan. This one is panfish and trout. So I'm opening two up tonight for you guys. I have my panfish box from last time too. Everything's still in here. So at the end, if anyone didn't see that and wants to see that, I will give that option. And then we can have some fishing discussion because I don't have anywhere to be or anything to do tonight. Um, I can stream as long as people want to be on here. So, so we got five people in here. Um, I'm two minutes into the stream at, at the 20 minute mark. I'm going to start opening these boxes. So I'm going to let people trickle in here and stuff. So I just got a couple announcements and stuff like that. Um, and we can chat a little bit until the 20 minute mark. And then I'll start opening these. I just want to give some more people time to come in. We got four in here right now. Let's see. What up, da Danny Donks? Donks Boys Fishing, Real Urban Fishing. That's my man right there. What up, dude? He's driving uh, mad love, homie. Yeah, if you got to get off here, if you can't stay because you're driving, that's cool, man. But I'm drive. Yeah. If you're driving, man, that's fine. But thank you so much for popping in. That's my dude right there. If you guys uh, if you guys like like my positive attitude and stuff that I try to have in my live streams, you'll definitely like that, dude. That dude is super cool. He's, he's got so much energy. He's a super cool dude, and he catches nice fish, talks about baits and stuff like that. So, yeah, check my man out. What up, NKR? How was my new vid? Some fish came on new too. They were good, man. That's exactly what I've been looking for is I like, you know, I like seeing your PBs and the pictures and stuff like that, but I feel like more people want to see you catching fish and showing the fish that you caught as opposed to just like showing those pictures on your phone and zooming in on them and stuff like that. They're cool and all, but uh, when I saw that old catfish you caught where you're getting all, you're like, yeah, let's go. You're all excited. Like I, lo I love it when people are hooking up with fish and getting excited and stuff like that. It's just a little cooler to see footage of actual catches and stuff like that. So I really liked your two new videos. I thought they were fantastic. Jaden Danger's going trout fishing tomorrow. What do you use? Okay, we can talk trout fishing for a little bit. What up, Wyatt Willis? Oh, man, uh, KY Guy Fishing. What's up, man? I didn't know you could uh, – you could join in. Yeah, I shared your thing on Instagram. So yeah, KY Guy Fishing. If you guys are on Instagram, check him out. If you're on Fish Brain, check him out. He's got like probably the best giveaway going right now. I'm pretty sure it's still going and everything. It's a it's a GoPro. He's giving away a GoPro. I believe it's a Hero 7 and a kayak. I could be wrong, but I believe that's what it is, man. So that's a super awesome uh, giveaway. You guys need to check out his channel because he it's not like he's just doing giveaways. He's making awesome content to go along with it. So check out my man at KY Guy Fishing. Thanks for being in here, bro. Appreciate you. King versus King coming soon. Yeah, apparently uh, I'm being challenged. It's going to be king on king action. <laughs> See who can catch more bass or something like that. We're, we'll make it happen, man, for sure. Probably come over on your turf and do it in Kansas. That'll be exciting stuff, guys. That's the Joe Bass King, Kansas, if you guys are uh, on Fish Brain. Check my man out. 
Let's see. Firebird Outdoors. This summer, I'm planning to do a lot of catfishing. Awesome. What do you use for catfishing? Oh, yeah. I was going to talk about trout. I'll get back to that. Sorry. I got a little distracted. If your phone's about to die, that's fine, NKR. Yeah, the Creek Chub one was all right. I'll just tell you I like the... I like the big creek chub one better than just, you know, the the other one just because it's longer and it actually shows you like holding the fish right after you caught it. I don't know. They're all good. All your new videos are good and you're showing improvements. So I think they're all good, man. I don't know what I'd rate it out of 10, but it's it's good, man. We need to get a video session soon. I'll be all over that, man. I'm down to collab with anybody, whether it's whether it's a live stream where I bring you on and you could talk about what you got going on with your channel. Uh, I'm talking to KY Guy right now. Or whether um, I'm always into like, you would destroy me, but I'm always into like challenges and stuff like that. Maybe I go live for two hours or you could even, you know, record it. You don't have to go live, but like try to see how many fish I could catch or something like that or the biggest fish. And then you do the same thing for two hours and have a little competition because even if I get smacked, which I probably will, because you're, you're really good at catching bass, it would still be awesome. It would um, put both of our channels out there and then bring more people in so they could see stuff like that. Cause I know I like to see people competing against each other and stuff like that. Let's see. So let me cut bait. Firebird outdoors use cut bait. So what are you using for cut bait? Are you using carp? Are you using uh, bluegill and shad? What What's your favorite cut bait? So I'm gonna answer. Who asked about trout? Jaden Danger. Um. So here's my here's my trout drawer right here. For stock trout, what have been absolutely just tearing it up lately, and it's pretty chill. I just kind of like hang out, sit back, um, and just throw a couple rods out there with power bait. So I use the orange power bait or the chartreuse, which is like a yellow color. I don't know if I have any chartreuse in here. Yeah, I don't think I do, but it's like the bright yellow, like that highlighter. Ooh, so I use it. That's what I've been using lately. So there's multicolored ones, white ones, red ones, pink ones that work too. And I put them on like a size um, 12 salmon egg hook uh, with a little leader that's like two pound uh, mono and then a little bit of weight kind of floats it off the bottom. It's floating power bait. And if I'm not using that, I'm either using like bucktail, marabou type jigs. Um, and unfortunately, I normally have a bunch of those with me, but I think they're actually in my fishing backpack. Rooster tails work really good. Panther Martin spinners work really good in gold and then silver and stuff like that. Anyone who's just joining in, we're going to get to the unbox. I haven't get to the unboxing yet. We're going to get to it here in about 10 minutes. Well, I'm just answering a couple questions in the chat and I'm giving more people time to come in. So if anyone hasn't hit that like button, hit that like button. We're going to get to the two unboxings very soon here in about 10 minutes. But yeah, we're just talking about what I, what I use for trout. You guys can comment what you use for trout, but like little cranks work good too. But like all this, this is my favorite spinner right here. The Panther Martin Deluxe. It's gold with a gold blade. Got black and red on it. Kind of when it's moving in the water, it looks like a smaller brown trout or something. That tore up the brown trout in Colorado. And then if you guys don't know... The little bucktail or marabou type jigs. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to find those. Um, I got them somewhere around here. But those are the one, same type you use for panfish or crappie. And uh, when I open the panfish and trout box, you can see some other type of stuff. Yeah, it's going to take me too long to find it. I don't feel like messing around. But just like these type of things. Like little marabou, little hair jigs, whatever you call them. This one's yellow. Got a gold head. These work really good. This is what I caught my my first and only two ice fish, ice trout, um, through a frozen lake, and that was on a live stream. So yeah, those work good. Trout worms. There's a lot you can use for trout. Like I said, one of these boxes here is for trout. I always forget which one. Yeah, the bass one's closest to me. I wrote a B on it, duh. So yeah, anyone just joining in? What's up? We're gonna get to these unboxings really soon. Let's see. What's up, uh, Mo Creek Fishing? That sounds like my type of style. If you're t if that if Mo Creek Fishing is Missouri Creek Fishing, that's all I do is Missouri Creek Fishing. <laughs> I fish lakes and stuff too, but yeah, I'm all about it. Um, thank you, Fishing with G. Don't forget to hook set to the Sunfish King. And I'm not just promoting myself just to promote myself. I'm prom promoting myself because I have some exciting stuff coming on. So you guys can. Go ahead and chat it up, whatever, for the next 10 minutes. Uh, here in about 10 minutes on the dot, I'm going to start opening these uh, these tackle boxes, and I'll see at that point what you guys want me to open first. But you guys can keep coming with the chat. I'm going to tell you right now what I got planned this weekend. So tomorrow at 7.30 Central Time, which is 8.30 Eastern Time, figure out what time it is in your guys' time. 
I'm doing a content creator slash networking live stream. So we're going to talk about thumbnails, titles, music, how to improve your content, how to promote yourself better, all types of ways that we can help each other grow together. And then we'll introduce each other. And um, hopefully you guys can like get some more hook sets to your channel and stuff like that. Get some more viewers and find out tips and tricks to help make better content. So that's going on tomorrow. And I'm trying to do that once a month. And then um, let's see what else. Sunday, same time, 7.30. There's going to be a time change, I believe, between Saturday and Sunday. I could be wrong. but uh, So just keep that in mind. But yeah, 7.30 Central Time. I'm testing something out. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm testing a fishing trivia night if anyone wants to pop in. Anyone in the chat, sit there. I'm going to have a bunch of trivia questions to ask, and they're going to be different categories and stuff like that. I'm going to try to figure out how to make it work. I thought about doing Kahoot like on the phone, but most people are going to be on their phone watching the stream. So we'll just do it where I keep track of score. And uh, basically, the winner will probably get a shout out in my next live stream after that and my next actual video. So that's that'll be kind of cool way to compete with your fishing knowledge and stuff like that. Let me know if you guys like that idea. Let's see. Where at? You're in Festus. I'm not exactly sure where Festus is, man, but I fish near Kansas City, near Warrensburg. And then I like to get, I'm not near the smallmouth, so I like to take like two-hour trips, three-hour trips near the Arkansas border, Ozark area, whatever, try to go for smallmouth. But I haven't got to do that that many times. I've done it once this year so far. Caught some smallies. And I haven't got my first rock bass yet. So if you live by some rock bass, let me know, man. We'll make it happen. But yeah, I live here. I live uh, south of Kansas City, Raymore, if you know where that is. Now everyone knows where I live. What up, Off the Hook? What up, Harrison? Um, Shark Fishing TV. And that's the other thing I was going to talk about. Shark Fishing TV, his link is in my description for this video. Um, on Tuesday, uh, probably around 7.30 also. I don't know. It might be a little bit later at my time, 8.30 his time. Um, I think we're going on Forward Fishing's channel, who's, who's – Channel link is also in my description for this video. If he can't make it, we're going to be on Sharp's channel. Um, and then the next time, you know, at, sometime after that, it'll be back to my channel. It kind of rotates, but it's called Multi-Species Weekly. And every week we talk about um, a different subject, maybe a different species, a different aspect. Last time we kind of talked gear, but then we also just had a free-for-all where people could ask whatever. Um, it's pre-spawn time, guys. We're going to talk about pre-spawn bass, pre-spawn baits, techniques, tri tips, tricks, stuff like that. Um and getting into spawn and stuff like that as well. So that's going to be the discussion Tuesday at 7.30. Anyone who wants to join in and talk about pre-spawn bass. Let's see. KY Guy. And off the hook outdoors. He said snuck his phone into the prison just so we could be on here. I'm guessing you're at work, man. The prison. Hey, don't uh, don't just sit there and say hook set me, Firebird. That's not how we do things. You got you to gotta offer something to somebody, man. You can't just sit there and ask people to hook set you for no reason. All right. Fish Slayer Freshwater. My shorts are coming out this weekend. Cool. Fish Slayer Freshwater. He said he's figured the shorts thing out. He's going to have some shorts coming out. Shorts are exciting, guys. I got 12,000 views, which is my highest viewed video on one of my shorts. It was me cooking some trout up. And uh, so shorts are very versatile. I got 38 or 39 new subscribers from, from that video, new hook sets from that video. So uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Anyone who joins the content creator live stream at 730, we'll talk about how shorts can help your channel because they actually don't give you watch time. There's a lot of exciting, a lot of um, exciting stuff about them. And there's a lot of weird, like confusing stuff about them. So shorts are cool. They're not the most useful thing in the world, but they can definitely help you out a lot. Let's see. Congrats to Crank and Bates, Jay Thomas, uh, Cox, Weston Hamilton for the win today. Yeah. Congrats to everybody. Those people won stickers and also um, two other people won hats and, uh, and another sticker. So there's a big merch giveaway today. Let's see, hit that like button for the King. Thank you off the hook. That's my man, Ted from off the hook outdoors. I recently did an interview with him looking forward to working with him in the future. If we can figure out any way to make that happen, cause he's a very good dude. So go check him out. Um, about five minutes here, we're going to get to the unboxing, everyone. Five minutes, we're going to get to the unboxing. So that's all the announcements I really had. Write it down. Tomorrow, 7.30, I'm going live on my channel here. Sunday, 7.30, I'm going live on my channel again, Trivia Night. Tomorrow is uh, the content creator stream. Sunday is Trivia Night. Tuesday, about the same time, 7.30, either going to be on Forward Fishing's channel or Sharp Fishing TV's channel. Multi-species weekly, which is always exciting every week. So join in for that. Thank you to the 14 people who've hit that thumbs. Thank you to 
10 people who are spending their Friday in here with me. Um, and for the next five minutes on the dot until we open these boxes, I want you guys to tell me what your favorite pre-spawn bass baits are. Let's talk pre-spawn bass baits. What your favorite are, what you went out and threw today, what always catches you the fish this time of year. Let me know. Brands, types of baits, I don't care. Let's just talk pre-spawn bass for about five minutes. This will be a little uh, preview of what Tuesday is going to be like. So pre-spawn bass for five minutes, y'all. And then we're going to get to the unboxing. So we got, yeah, Weston Hamilton, what up? And congrats for winning that um, that sticker. Weston Hamilton, this is the sticker you want, correct? Before I send it out, you want the lime green one? The light's not very good, but you saw what it looked like in my video earlier on the GoPro. Lime green. It's it's Trust me, it's a much more vibrant green than you're seeing right now with the purple hat. So if that's the one you want, that's the one you'll get. And then, um, let's see. Fishing with G said, I like the hat, man. Shut up and fish. Yeah. Shut up and fish, everybody. I don't know. I need to find out if this hat is copyrighted or not, because I like to start putting out hats that say shut up and fish on them. I don't know. My sister gave it to me. I just got it. Super cool. I wish I made it. <laughs> but yeah, shut up and fish. Let's see. What else? Ah. Fishing with G says, and you guys, go ahead. Comment your favorite pre-spawn bass baits. I want to hear them. Um, do you think the Mystery Tackle Box subscription is worth it? I may get it tomorrow. So in the – it is because I don't know the exact price, but it's somewhere between 10 and 20 bucks per for each one. I think it's 15 maybe a little less, maybe a little more. It's right around 15 but one of the baits, you, all, you usually get four baits, five baits, six baits, something like that. Or you get like a pack of hooks or something in there. But you usually get between four and six baits and then some other little things. Um, one of those baits last time for me was the the Mike Buka Bullgill, which is a $14.99 uh, swim bait, $15. So, yeah, if you get something like that, it's definitely worth it. But, yeah, they always try to make the the, the price of all the baits put together. They always try to make it a $25 value, and the thing is less than 20 bucks. So price-wise, yes, but it's like if you get five baits that you're not going to throw or that you don't really like, maybe not. But the idea is to get something that you're not really familiar with and get out there and throw something that you don't have a lot of confidence with and get some more confidence with it. Because most things that are going to be in a mystery tackle box, people have caught fish on before. It's usually not just something that's really, really terrible. They're usually name brand. They're good baits. And um, – some of them I am fully confident in going out there and throwing, and some of them I'm not, and I have to grind with a little more. But yeah, pre spawn uh, bass fishing, guys. Let's see. Uh, Joe's, Joe Bass King, Kansas. Joseph Dale says, I've been throwing a yum, Ned, crawl, and green pumpkin red. Plenty of bites, but no hogs yet. I'm digging the chatterbait right now in the creeks. Okay, chatterbait. I've never thrown a chatterbait. Red and oranges are the juice right now. What up, Nate V? That's my man. He just won the Sunfish King Super Fan Package today, so congratulations. I'm sending him a orange hat, which are for sale. I think my email is in the description on this video. Orange hats. He's also getting one of these big old stickers on the wall behind me. So congrats, man. Thanks for entering. Got about two minutes, and we're going to get to the unboxing. So no one's missed anything yet. Thanks to the nine people who are in here. I hope Grippin and Rippin joins us. Yeah, that'd be cool. I met him on Instagram, and then I told him to get a uh, fish brain. He recently got a fish brain, so hopefully he can get a following on there as well. Gripping and Ripping's a cool guy. So, for this last minute or so, I guess I'll show you guys what I've been tossing around. And I'm going to experiment with shortening up this little, like I'll cut a little off the head so it's not as long of a, of a trailer on there, but it's been all right. Um, this is the, I'm not sure what the jig name is. I think it's by Hard Hats, Hard Hat Jigs by, uh, shoot, what is the company? I'm not 100% sure, guys, but this was in the Mystery Tackle Box. If I can find the package, I'll let you know. But it's a, it's just like a football jig. And the, uh, I really don't remember what the color is, but it's blue with some green here. I wish I, wish I knew what the name was to tell you. But the, uh, the trailer is the Biospawn Vile Crawl, which I believe I might even have the package. Yeah. That's what those are. So I've been tossing that around. Football jig, dragging it a little, doing a tiny bit of hopping, but mostly just dragging it. And then 
for my finesse type thing, my spinning lose setup, I've been throwing this. So yeah, crawl imitations. If I had something more red, I'd probably be throwing it, but I was just rolling with blue. And this thing got me a couple bites as well out there. Um, just kind of hopping that, hopping that along the rocks, hopping it in front of the, the weeds, stuff like that. It's all fun. Just waiting for my first hog as well. So guys, without further ado, let's hear your vote. Um, who wants me to open the bass box first? Who wants me to open the panfish and trout box first? Let's hear it in the chat right now. I'm going to take the first five votes. <sighs> All right. Joe Dale loves him some biospawn. Yeah, you're going to have to... I'm gonna have to bring that when we when we go fishing together, and then I'll have to. Hopefully, your your luck rubs off on me. I haven't caught a fish on that one yet. Managed to snag a weedless jig. It happens. It happens, man. Let's see. Bass. So we got one vote for bass. Two votes for bass. Bass, bass, panfish, bass. All right. So it was four to one. And then the the last vote was my grandpa Claire Aki. Thanks for joining in. I'm curious uh, if you're in here, Poppy still, Poppy's what I call my grandpa. Don't judge me, guys. <laughs> Let me know what your biggest bass is. I don't know if you weighed it or not, but I'm curious what your biggest bass you ever caught was. I know they got some Florida strain bass down there. They probably got some monsters, and you've been fishing a long time. So, guys, we're going to open the bass box first because that's what was decided by the good people. This is what we're doing, Mystery Tackle Box. So the deal is, guys, I got for the next – several months i've got the subscription to the bass one and the panfish and trout one over there and every month once a month if i get more stream time i'll i might let somebody come in here and chat at the end of my unboxing or something like that um not in this one because i can't let any guests in here but if i get more stream time on Streamyard, i also have a donation link in the description if anyone wants to help me get um it's only 20 to 25 dollars a month and then i can get unlimited stream time i can let more guests in do more live stream fishing and stuff like that so I'm not telling anyone to donate, but that would really help me do more live streams. So links in the description. Anyone wants to share my PayPal link, go ahead and do it. But that's not what we we're talking about here. We're talking about the mystery tackle box. I'm open this bass one, and then afterwards I'll open the panfish one. And here's how these things kind of work, guys. I'm going to show you. Um, they're $25 value, four to four to six baits. It says five or six, but sometimes there's some pokes or something in there that's not really a bait. But somewhere between four and six baits. I get them every single month and you can switch if you have the subscription and start getting like there's a walleye one and I think there's a whisker seeker catfish one as well. So maybe one of those months I might get a different one, but I'm going to get right to open this and how this works is you guys can, when I show you a bait, you can comment, you know, what you think, you think it's good, you think it's not good, if you've thrown it, what your experience is with it, um, how you would rig it, what time of year you would throw it. So you can give advice and then if you've never thrown it, I can try to give you advice if it's something that I've thrown before. I'm sure there's a lot of people in this chat right now who are just as good or better with bass than I am because I'm still in my learning process. I've caught 400 bass last year. My biggest one was just under four pounds. So I'd say I'm doing okay, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not the dude who can go to anywhere and just start pulling hogs out. And most people aren't. So, you, you know, it takes a lot of work. Bass can be a grind. Four pounds in the Okala national forest that's crazy i gotta look up where that is that's really cool yeah my biggest and i just started fishing but my biggest was three pounds 12 ounces out of out of my sister cat's pond so you ever come to missouri poppy fish her pond they got some ones just that big what up grip and ripping we were just talking about you a second ago man what up dude hey everyone check out grip and ripping fishing if you get a chance we're gonna get right to this unboxing everybody Thank you for sharing that link, Fishing with G. Thanks for sharing all those links. Dude, you learn until you die. Yep, I plan on, like, the second I can't hold a rod and cast it anymore, I have no no uh, use to be alive anymore. That's that's it for me. Fish till I die and keep it. There's no point in not learning and keep on getting better. Yeah, what's up, Grippin? Yeah, I was just about to say, Grippin Rippin is on uh, Instagram, so check him out. And I believe he just recently got a fish brain, if I am correct. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure he's got a fish brain, so check him out. All right, guys. Here it is, the bass package. These things usually come with stickers. They come with a little joke or tip book or something like that. Um, hold on. I somehow wrote bass on the wrong one. This is the panfish package, guys. 
Plumfish King's goofing, goofing up here right in front of everybody. This is the bass one, guys. Oh, my goodness. What a dork. Okay, so I'll already tell you, it's looking like it's a good value for the, the amount I spent, whoever asked if they're worth it. So this there's a card in here that tells you everything that's in it. So I can, I'll can i tell you what we got going on. Um, what else comes in here besides baits? You got this thing. It looks a little, more, a little more official than it was last time. It's called the Dibble. So this says, what I straight up love about fishing. It's just some stuff that I think Carl, the guy who does the, the uh, mystery tackle box, like Carl's baits, whatever. And then um, he just writes some of this stuff. There's a beginner look at fishing reel. So it compares spin cast to spinning to bait casting. And then the ultimate pre-spawn fishing tips, guys. I'm going to save this. Ultimate pre-spawn fishing tips. We're going to talk about this Tuesday. So I'll bust that one out Tuesday. If anyone's curious about that. Sometimes they have jokes and other stuff in them, too. Got some good-looking baits here, guys. I'm excited to show you them. But I want to see if there's anything else, uh, you know, not bait-related, too, just to show you first. Okay. Oh, man. It's exciting stuff, guys. So these things come with... These things come with a little if, – if you've ever seen a fish brain post or a fish picture where someone's, like, seen how big their fish is on one of these rulers, that's what it is. It's a mystery tackle box. I used to always wonder, like, how does everyone have the same weird cardboard ruler? That's where it comes from. And thank you. 15 thumbs up. I really appreciate that. 12 people in here chilling with me. Awesome. Let me see if there's anything in the chat I haven't addressed because I really like this to be interactive, everyone. Welcome if it's your first time to a Sunfish King live stream. Um, as soon as I can get – a little more money on my end or maybe a little bit of donations from you guys. I'm going to be uh, doing a lot more live streams on StreamYard so I can actually bring guests on here with me. If you're someone I kind of know, I can let you come in here and chat for a few minutes. So that'll be a lot more exciting and really help network and help get uh, people recognition on here. I like to help my YouTube fan grow. So thanks, everyone, for being in here. 16. What is the 16 uh, fishing with G? Did I miss something? Anyway, yeah, guys. Um, so this is something about one of the featured baits. I'm not going to talk about that until I pull that bait out. And then here's another one about one of the featured baits. Um, that's pretty cool. So we're about to get to it, guys. Last thing I want to show you, it always comes with a little sticker, and they're different every time. This one's pretty cool. It says Catch Company on his uh, tattoo. It's a, that fish looks like he pulled some drag if he were to bite. Pretty buff fish right there. So yeah, I got a lot of stuff to put on um, tackle boxes and stuff. And let me know if anyone's interested in this sticker because I might be I might add this sticker to like a giveaway or add some of these stickers to giveaways or something. It's not like a super you know high dollar item, but it's just something exciting I can send out. Some of those are pretty cool. I might use them for myself, but I think I'm slowly collecting some of these mystery tackle box stickers. I might be able to do some stuff. What up, Dirt Tracking Thirty One? He's slowly becoming a member of the Sunfish Squad, joining in these live streams. Um, the more you pop in, the more we'll get to know you and the more people will probably go and check out your channel. Let's see. So 16 thumbs is what you were saying, Fishing with G. Yeah, awesome, guys. I really appreciate that. The thumbs really helped me out. Um, so a lot of people, and we'll talk about this more tomorrow in the content creator live stream, but a lot of people like to try to mold their content to work with the YouTube algorithm. Really, the YouTube algorithm depends on what viewers like at any given time. So what you really need to do is mold your content to viewers. The more thumbs you get and the more views you get, the more likely you are to get the algorithm to promote your stuff to other people. That being said, let's get straight to it. I've talked too much. I just need to shut up and fish. Shut up and talk about baits. Let's do it. Um, let's see. Dirt Tracking doesn't make videos. He just watches. Okay, yeah, I didn't know if you had a channel or not. That's awesome, though, man. Uh, we like, we like uh, supporters subscribers and people who just like to come in here and chat just as much as anyone else. And then if you ever in the future have any plans on making a channel, a lot of people have thought about it. You'll get some tips and tricks here. If not, we really appreciate you joining in anyway, man, for sure. So the first thing makes me think there's going to be some soft plastics. Anytime I get these, you know, I told you it's not always baits. Sometimes you just get some hooks or something and it's like, Oh yeah, it's kind of disappointing, but not really. I mean, you can't catch fish without hooks. Um, I mean, you can, but it's not really fishing. So, wide gap worm hooks. These are, what are they, 3 aught? No, they're 4 aught. And you could do a, if you're doing a Senko or something, really any soft plastic creature, whatever. You could do it like a wacky rig. You could do it like a Texas rig, however you want to do that. So, yeah, there's some of them. It makes me think that there's going to be uh, some soft plastics in here. 
Let's see. All right. My chat might be freezing. I haven't seen anything since dirt tracking. All right, guys. We got some exciting, exciting stuff in here. All right. This is the Gambler Little Otter. First, first, uh, first bait in the package. A two dollar and thirteen cent value. These are some cheap baits. If anyone's looking to get some cheap baits, it is a what is it? A four pack? One, two, three, four. Looks like a four pack. It's called a three inch little otter, little creature bait. I think you call that maybe a green pumpkin. It looks like a green pumpkin to me. I'll pop them open and show you guys what they look like. First off, smell test. They got a pretty strong smell. Um, it says enhanced with gambler bite. So there's some secret formula. Some something on there is supposed to smell good to the fishies, but that's that. Got some interesting little feet on it there. They're kind of flat on the end, and then this big old like beaver paddle looking tail thing. Uh, they're called the little otter. So got an otter tail, I guess you would call it. So is that a green pumpkin? Is that what you guys would call that color? Joe Joe Dale Joe Basking said four out he uses the most. Yeah, I'm usually using between a three and a five out when I'm doing soft plastics like uh, Texas rigged or wacky rigged or whatever. Uh, Fish Slayer said he would rig a creature bait or a worm on this hook. Yeah, you could rig one of these straight on this hook and go weightless. In a creek, weightless is pretty cool in creeks because it just like flows super easy down the down the stream. And then, but you can't do it in super fast moving water. It's got to be gentle flow. But really good in ponds for sure. So there's that. I'm sure you could do this with a little Ned type head on there and bouncing on the bottom. I'm sure you could put this as a trailer on a jig, maybe on a spinner, something like that. If I'm making a fool of myself, let me know. But I'm pretty sure this is a versatile bait that can be used a lot of different ways. Let's see. Claire Aki gives it a thumbs up. What up, Backwoods Barbarian? We're opening the bass package right now. This is the, uh, one more time, everybody. This is what the package looks like. The company is Gambler. It's the three-inch little otter. Got a very interesting tail on it. Looks more like a beaver than an otter to me as far as the tail. But triple tail, just a little creature thing. This will work good in creeks, ponds, a lot of different stuff. Um, the first thing I opened was these hooks. So you could Texas rig it. You could uh, just, I don't think this is like something you really want a wacky rig. It's more of a Texas rig type thing. But uh, you could also put it with a little bit of weight on there and hop it along the bottom, put it on a jig or something like that. A lot of different ways you could fish that, in my opinion. And Fish Slayer said drop shot would work good. I've never drop shotted anything, but what size hooks would you guys use? Like a two? I know you go smaller with the hooks when you drop shot. I know off the hook is in here or was in here, and he's a big drop shotting guy, if I uh, remember correctly. For I, he would use a rage bug. Okay, so I do have what I like. I like uh, whoever said it. Whoever said something about learn until you die, I'm, I don't remember exactly who it was, but like it might have been Missouri Creek fishing. I'm about to write down right now. So four out hook with a rage bug. Is that what you call it? A rage bug? Yeah, rage bug. And is that something you throw right around this time of year, all year long? What what's the deal with that off the hook? Thank you, fishing with G. It's got the paddle tail arms, lol. Yeah. They're literally like a paddle tail for the arms. Like those things that very interesting. But if I had a thing of water, maybe I should get a thing of water and like rig something up and put them in there. But yeah, that's a $2.13 value for four of them. Really an inexpensive bait. So can't go wrong with, if you catch a fish or a couple fish on $2 baits, I think you're doing good. So we've opened that so far. The pretty cool sticker here if you're just joining in. and the hooks put them aside we got three more items to open here three super nice items in this bass one and then we're going to get to the panfish one everybody 17 thumbs up thank you guys 12 people in here awesome fist bump through the screen everyone thanks for spending your friday evening night whatever time it is with me i appreciate it um same with wacky i have like two main wacky hooks i use well what what's the difference what hooks do you use for for wacky rig because when i'm doing wacky rig i need to start doing like the little circle hooks with the uh with the uh o-rings and stuff so you save your hooks better uh, save your soft plastics better but i'm not gonna lie i'll go out there with the same offset type hook whatever and i'll have it texas rigged and i'll just pull it off and put it right back on there wacky rig and just nail them i don't really mess with 
changing hooks or whatever. Maybe I should. Let's see. Two main wacky hooks he uses. Fist bump to the fish hooks. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Joe Dale. Thanks, Dirt Tracking. Two aught he would use for – she used a little smaller for wacky. Okay. All right. Yeah, he's about three aught for both. Maybe a little bigger for – Maybe a little bigger for like the Texas rig. All right, guys. So the next thing I'm going to open here, Lake Fork Tackle. I don't know if anyone's heard of Lake Fork Tackle. Live Magic Shad. $5.99 value. Garlic and salt impregnated, it says. Not infused, impregnated. And one of the baits is popping out of its dang container here. I need to get it back in its place. Hey, hey, easy there. They're too alive, man. They're <laughs> it is the ultimate live action swim bait. Lake Fork Tackle. Has anyone seen these? Those are interesting. That's going to be a weedless rig, I believe. A Ned rig. Maybe. It's a little big. Um, drop shot. Carolina. Let me know how you guys would rig something like this. Let me see if it says what the color is. Yes, watermelon red pearl is what we're calling these. $5.99 value. It's a six pack. It says, as seen on TV on episodes of Big Bass Battle. So, those are the different ways it recommends rigging it. It says, weightless, wacky Texas nail rig, Carolina rig, jig head rig, drop shot rig, or umbrella rigs. Let's see what people say. Backwoods made garlic bait for trout. Yeah, garlic works really, really, really good for trout, man. You got garlic, cheese, um, Man, there's a bunch of different scents and stuff. Corn, there's a bunch of different scents that people use and different types of baits people use for trout. A lot of people make their own, um, what am I trying to say? Make their own dough baits for trout. Very cool. Two aught for the drop shot. You use two aught for drop shot? That's a lot bigger than I've heard most people using. I'll write that down. Anyone use anything else for drop shot besides two aught? Any other size? Two aught drop shot. And is that for bass, or are we talking musky? Because that might be, that might be where the confusion is. But yeah, two odds, not that, not that uh, big. I just thought people would use like real small ones for some reason. But yeah, I'm gonna pop one of these open and show you guys. Why not? Why not? They are the live magic shad, the ultimate live action swim bait by Lake Fork Tackle. Six pack of them, five dollar and ninety nine cent. Let me know how you guys would rig these things up. I'm kind of interesting i kind of like that color it's got the pearl the pearl laminate on the bottom it's got good action right here out of the water look at that action guys i feel like i feel like that's kind of fire actually how would you guys fish this thing you would throw that fish it throw it now fish it slow Always keep that on my rods at all times. So you would fish. Are you, are you talking about something like this? You're talking uh, drop shot, whatever. Like you would fish this thing off the hook year round. Something like this. This thing looks really good. I'm going to make some videos where I throw this thing. Definitely, guys, for sure. Because this thing looks fire. I've never used anything quite like this. For pan fish, like crappie and perch, I might go a size two on a drop shot. Okay. Backwoods prefers good old live worms for trout, though. Yeah, worms work pretty good. They just don't float for me. I know a lot of people like blow up their worms and stuff like that to get them to float. I like my if I'm using bait for trout rather than spinners or something. I like to get it to float a little bit. Let's see. And I know you can you can do trout on uh, I mean worms on a, under a float and stuff like that. Let's see, gripping and ripping. I would text this rig that Texas rig. Okay, I would Texas rig that. I would definitely Texas rig this. I'm going to Texas rig this and go throw it. He said, or use it as a trailer for a chatterbait. I don't know anything about chatterbaits, guys. Hopefully a chatterbait comes in one of these mystery tackle boxes one day. But yeah, I'm gonna, I guess I'll go wait. Uh, Texas rig it. You mean not weightless though? You would actually put a, put like a, what the heck do they call that thing? Bullet weight on there? Sorry. My mind blanked for a second. You Texas rig it with a, Texas rig it with a bullet weight and would you peg it or would you let it go straight weight to the soft plastic? Because this will work weightless as well. And we'll move on to the next thing. But I just, I can't get over the action on that. It's really cool. I got to make a video in some clear water where I just kind of twitch it around on some uh, finesse gear. Show you guys what it looks like. 
Drop shot hooks come in four, two, one, and one odd. Yeah, so they don't even go to two, two odd. And that's what Joe Ott's, Joe Dale's saying. Sorry, I'm having a hard time spitting it out. The jointed bait would work great as a soft bodied jerk bait. Bro, what are you saying? What state are you from and do you like to hunt as well? Hunting sounds cool. I'm not legal to hunt right now, so I can't hunt right now. I can do like, yeah. Um, I'd love to get into hunting. I got way too much going on. I'm from Missouri. So that was that, guys. We've decided it's going to be weightless or Texas rigged. And I need to write that down. Thank you guys for sharing your tips and tricks with me because a lot of these baits I haven't thrown yet. A lot of these baits. You guys, has anyone thrown a, a weird jointed, uh, a jointed soft plastic ever? Is that something anyone's ever tossed? Let me know if anyone's, I can't knock it back in the package to save my life. So the things I do for you guys. All right. So that's just, yeah, those just aren't, they're never going back in the package. That's just how they're going to be. So yeah, that was the Lake Fork Tackle Live Magic Shad, a $5.99 value. We got two more things in this package. No one here is throwing a jointed. Uh, you made one with dough, LOL. Yeah, fish layer. That's the weirdest thing, man. I, I'm, I want to see you catch a fish on that because he's been making like soft plastic type baits out of dough, which is just weird to me and mind blowing, but like very interesting if you catch a fish on that. I would never think to do that. I use VMC survival hooks so you don't get line twist. Put them on. You would put one of those on a trailer for a shutter lure from Terminator Lures. Yeah, I don't know what that is. All right. So jointed soft plastic as a trailer for shutter lure by who? Who's what's it? The who? Terminator Lures. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We got two really, really nice baits left in here to show you guys. Um, great pike bait, the shutter lure. Yeah, I'm not going to be getting into pike, any pike around here, but if anybody fishes for pike. Okay, cranking baits. What's up, man? Cranking baits won my um, my giveaway today. Let's settle this once and for all because I, I don't want to disrespect you and pronounce your name wrong. Is it Kike or how do I pronounce it? Is that close to right? Kika's cranking baits or Kike's cranking baits? Is it A, Kika? Is it B, Kike? I know it's not Kike's cranking baits because I said that earlier and you said I mispronounced it and I apologize for that. Bass with the drop shot. Wacky rig that shad in winter during a shad kill. Really, you'd wacky rig something with that's jointed like that? Yeah, I guess it would work. You had all that dying action on there and stuff like that. You could flick it around uh, Weightless Texas as well and get some of that same action. Yeah, I might do that. I might do that. We do have shad kill in this. Uh, we have like, I saw a shad the other day. It's probably like three pounds. The biggest shad I've seen in my life. They just wash up there. They are mad. Like the shad out there are massive. You have to think there's got to be some monster bass if there's shad that big. Did I pronounce it right? Kike's cranking baits? Kika's cranking baits? Well, I'm trying to get that right. You can let me know if I said it right at any point. Um... And let's go on to the next bait, guys. What do we got? Maybe this is a chatter. No, it's not. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Um, let's see. Which one's more expensive? I'll say, yep. We got one by Biospawn and one by Guggen. Let's do the Biospawn one first. We got the Biospawn Rattlebot Crawl. And as Joe Bass King was saying, red and orange kill it this time of year. This has got some nice red on there. Imitates that red crawl color. I know you guys can't see it too well through the package, so I'm going to bust it out. Probably end up with a treble in my finger so I can show you guys. 19 thumbs up. That's awesome, y'all. This is the Biospawn Rattlebot. Two and a half inches. Half ounce. It's a sinking bait. It says it's got a deep, subtle rattle. And it's, it's just a... It has genetically engineered baits. That's what Biospawn said. That's hilarious. But yeah, it's a lipless crankbait, which worked really well in pre-spawn. This, I'm going to show off on Tuesday in my multi-species weekly. This is like definitely a prime example of a pre-spawn bait. Anyone throw any of these uh, Rattlebot crawls or anything like this before? It's got That's what the thickness is on it. It's a half ounce. It feels heavier, but it's only a half ounce. Let's see. 
Fish Slayer likes it. Fishing with G likes it. This guy's is a seven dollar and ninety nine cent crank. So not super expensive, but enough to where if I get this hooked on something, I'm probably going swimming after it. Fishing with G says that's a sick bait. He likes it. He likes the biospawn rattlebot crawl. It doesn't give an actual color, or is just I think crawl is just the color. That's rattlebot in crawl color. Yeah, this is their crawl color. Pro tip, guys. The Rattlebot Crawl is a lip lipless crankbait, genetically engineered, it's not, to imitate a universal bass snack, the craw the crawfish. Pro tip, when fish move up to the shallows, ow, don't hook yourself, pro tip. When fish move up to the shallows in spring and fall, fish the Rattlebot with a steady retrieve. I love the steady retrieve, maybe little jigs, jigs in every once in a while, just off the bottom. It's a sinking bait, so keep that in mind. You're going you're to work it just off the bottom. When fish are around aquatic vegetation, rip the rattlebot through the grass to trigger reaction strikes. And hopefully you don't lose your $8 bait. But yeah, looks super nice. The hooks on it, guys, are freaking deadly sharp, which is really nice. Let's see. You should be proud of that. It's heckin' high tech. Yeah, fishing with G. This thing is sweet. Fish layer said lipless I use for pre-spawn. Can you zoom it in on cam? Yeah, I mean, you want to see it. What else you guys want to see about it? That's what it looks like. Sorry, I should do that more with the baits. That's what we're rolling with. Very pretty. Pro tip, don't hook yourself. Ouch. Famous quote by the Sunfish King. I got one like that in a mystery tackle box. Can't wait to use it. Yeah, man. Mystery tackle box is the way to go, everybody. Definitely the way to go. There's one more bait in here, and it looks fire. It's a Guggen. So I'll be throwing that with my Lose American Hero. I've definitely been throwing some cranks as well. I got a couple bites on cranks the other day. I've only landed three bass so far this year, and none of them have been on what you would expect. Two of them were on inline spinners and one of them was on a worm and then two large mouths were on Ned rig, which you would expect, but the, the I mean, small mouths, two small mouths were on Ned rig. My three large mouths were on weird random baits for some reason. It has an interesting body shape said fish slayer, freshwater. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, science research and development that goes into those body shapes to try to get them to swim and have the best action. So there's a lot of different prototypes and stuff that people put out there. Go hit the red button, and is that a dab emoji? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fish layer, freshwater. Thanks, fish emoji. Fish layer, freshwater. It might give off an interesting vibration in water. Yeah, it's got a rat. It's got a deep, low rattle. Um, you hear it? That's not just the hooks. It's got a little rattle in there. And the last bait, my dudes. $8.99 value. So these two baits together make the whole thing worth it. This one and the last one. It's a Guggen Squad Clickbait. Guggen Squad Clickbait. Kind of like my thumbnails. Vibrating Jig. Look at that, y'all. Hold on a second. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Give me literally 30 seconds. No, you can't, man. I'm live streaming. Just All right, y'all. I heard someone sounded like they're getting angry out there. I was like, let me end this before <laughs> before anybody yells something they shouldn't. I want to let them know that I'm live streaming. That's a chatterbait. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Vibrating jig. Yeah, so. Someone said to use this as a trailer for the cheddar bait. Is that correct? Or am I just drunk and imagining that? What trailer would you guys use with something like this? Or would you even use a trailer? Let me see what they call the color. Sexy Shad. It's got a four-aught hook on it. The Guggen Squad clickbait is a hybrid vibrating jig with the flash of a bladed jig, the swimming action of a scrounger. I don't know what a scrounger is. And a unique sound and vibrate and vibration that fish have never felt, unless someone's done one of these in front of them. Listen for that distinctive clickbait clack. The clickety clickbait clack 
when the, when the lure's blade bangs. Dude, there's so much. That's a tongue twister. Listen for the distinctive click, bait, clack when the lure's blade bangs off the leading metal beads and wire. Use the simple straight retrieve and crush shallow water fish all season long. So everyone take notes. Um, let me know what trailer you would throw with it with the Guggen Sexy Shad Clickbait, which is a chatterbait. Oh, oh, we're doing a straight retrieve. Shallow water. And I'm going to open it up and show you guys it closer and everything, too. Let's see what the chat's saying. Love the color, says Fishing with G. I do, too. Looks like some shad to me or some female bluegill. Guggen's chatterbait. This is Guggen's chatterbait. That's a chatterbait, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also big fan of the Guggen's. Pro tip, remove the front hooks and it won't hang up nearly as bad. The front hooks? What do you mean on the... Remove the front hooks on that uh, other thing? That uh, crankbait deal. Yeah, it's a chatterbait. Everyone just keeps saying, yeah, that's a chatterbait. It has a bar with a ball that the blade smacks off of. Yet to throw, but three. But you have three different colors. This is. I'll show you guys it a little closer. Nate V says, use the beaver thing. You mean the little otter? The three-inch little otter? Put one of those on there? Is that how we're going to roll with it? I don't know. The color combo is a little weird with the green pumpkin going with the shad. That lake fort bait would be perfect on that. Joe says put the lake fort bait on this. He wants the shad on there, which is also a pumpkin color. You like that combo, guys? Or a crawl for a trailer? Yeah, crawls have been doing it good. Definitely throw it. Um, Fishing with G is telling you Joe Bass King, which Fishing with G, if you don't follow Joe Bass King Kansas on Fish Brain, do it now. Catches hogs, great post. But yeah, he's telling you definitely throw it. So apparently he's recommending the uh, the chatterbaits. I need to go out there and throw it, throw this. So chatterbaits are for shallow water fish, I guess. Probably near rocks and weeds, I would guess. Grippin' Rippin just got a Guggen order in. He's definitely gonna be doing a video on this clickbait or on a clickbait. He did a review today for the seven inch contender swim bait. He's gonna have that video up next week. Yeah, guys, check out Grippin' and Rippin' because that is a good idea for content creators. I need to freaking write that down for my content creator live stream. Which I'm probably not going to, I'll probably forget it, but for the content creator stream, it's good to do how-to videos and to review like new baits, name brand baits, Guggen baits. A lot of people are searching for stuff. like You got to think what people are going to be searching for. If a bait's fairly new, expensive, people want to know if it's good, people are probably going to be searching to find out if it works or not. And they want to see you out in the field testing it for them so they don't have to. So great idea, um, gripping and ripping. And guys, I'm sure you want to check that out. I'm probably going to go over and I'll write you down right now. Everyone go check out my man, gripping and ripping. Gripping and ripping fishing. He's got this seven-inch contender swim bait review coming out in a week. I'm excited to see that. That thing's got some good action, I know. It's a hard one, man. Let's see. Thanks, Fishing with G. He said over jackhammer. Jackhammer is too expensive. If, if someone gives me a jackhammer, I'll throw it, but I ain't buying that. Too expensive. All right, guys. I think there was. Yeah. This was the monthly spotlight. So every month they do a MTB Hat Guys monthly spotlight. Spotlight. I said spotlight. Hopefully I get a spotlight on the spotlight. But yeah, makes a lot of noise and crap. That's what we're. That's what it looks like. Can you guys see yourself in the reflection? Look at that. It's got nice colors on there. Four out hook and then really nice looking jig head. That thing's painted pretty. Loving it. So we're gonna talk about this thing right here, guys. The Guggen Squad Clickbait is a hybrid vibrating jig with the flash of a bladed jig. Again, same thing. Swimming action of a scrounger and unique vibration that fish have never felt. Listen for the distinctive clickbait clack when the lure's blade bangs off the leading metal blade and wire. During free fall, 
The clickbait shimmies and shakes, allowing for an easy rise and fall retrieve. So a rise and fall. Are they talking about kind of doing a kind of yo-yoing type of deal? Using a straight tail trailer instead of a paddle tail will allow the clickbait to swim better with a more lifelike action. Okay. So maybe that uh maybe that live magic shad's good. Maybe use something with even straighter tail that doesn't have joints on it and stuff like that. Gear recommendations, guys. And it does say that the oversized blade keeps this thing swimming deep. Which is weird because it said you're catching fish in the shallows with it. It's a three eighths, if in case anyone's wondering. Three, three eighths. So they recommend a medium to heavy casting or spinning rod. I would probably go bait caster with something like this. They recommend high speed casting or spinning reel. And they recommend 12 to 20 pound fluorocarbon or 30 to 50 pound braided line. I guess if you're ripping it through weeds and stuff, you're going to want to go with the braided line. But yeah, 12 to 20 pound fluorocarbon or mono. But I'd probably go with Flora. What do you? What line, guys? Let me know. What line would you guys throw with this? And it probably depends on whether you're fishing it through weeds or not. Let me know what line you're tying on, what brand, what type, what size. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Later, Fishing with G. He said he'll be back. Appreciate it, dude. We still got eight fine, fine people in here tonight. Thank you, guys. Anybody got any videos or live streams coming out? Is, is there any content creators in here who have anything coming out this weekend that I need to tell the, the people here about? I'll support you. Braid to Floro? I don't really. Why, why, Nate? Why braid to Floro? Why has everyone got to do the leaders and make things challenging and difficult? I don't, I don't like tying leaders, man. I don't like tying leaders, dog. And if I do, I'm doing a micro swivel. So I don't want to reel that thing up past the guides. I ain't doing no uni knot or anything. I'm not having a some crappy knot fail because I decided I need to do a, a leader for some reason. Why are you doing the leader, Nate V? Let me know. That would look great with a white and silver speed worm. Okay, I don't know what that is, but let's go. Um, so the clickbait would look good with a, for a trailer, white. And silver speed worm. I think it would look good. I just don't know what a white and silver speed worm is. I can kind of imagine what it probably looks like in my head. But that's that thing, guys. Um, let me know. Someone's going to eat some pasta. Nate, let me know why you're doing braid to flora, why you have to do a leader, why you got to do two different types of line, make things difficult for me. Anyone else, let me know what you would throw if you agree with Nate or if you would just straight do. What I would do with this is I'm going to probably throw it with probably around 12 pound fluoro i don't like to go too heavy because there's no reason to the fish will see that line um reaction baits you expect the fish not to but sometimes they will see that line especially if you're working it slow nate said there the no stretch is nice for the hook set so the no stretch to the braid but then you don't you use a um, i'm guessing a leader so it's less visible for the fish gotcha gotcha man i just don't like tying all that crap on it's got the Guggen logo in the eye you guys probably can't see it the hologram sensitivity right yeah okay i might do that if i get more into stuff but i've i've never tied a leader line that didn't have a, a swivel to it i've never tied like a uni knot or anything like that so I'm sure that's something i'm gonna have to learn soon at some point whatever and figure that out but even i went on a guided fishing trip and we were fishing for pike and lake trout and stuff like that. Even he, he didn't have any uni knots or anything. All his, all his leaders were tied on with a micro swivel, which is the way I would do it if I, if I could get away with it. Just don't re reel that thing up past the guides and destroy your rod if you got a long leader on there. So that's that thing, guys. And then the last thing about it before we move on, it says where to fish the Guggen Squad clickbait. So you got matted grass cover, grass line, and weed lines. Fish it next to points. It doesn't say riprap. It doesn't really show anyone throwing it next to a rocky area. Let me know because if you guys, because I think throwing this next to a rocky area would be fine. They're more throwing it in near tree stumps and near weedy areas and around docks, I guess. They, they're they not throwing it under bridges. They're not throwing it at downed trees and submerged timber for some reason, but they are throwing it near tree stumps. Maybe they just don't want it to get hung up. But that's where, see, see the places they have on there? 
those little arrows in orange are where they would throw them. And then that under the bridge and then down trees are where they would not throw them. And the riprap it looks like they're throwing them in places with a little bit of weeds and a little bit of tree stumps. I think you can throw this probably about anywhere in my opinion, but this is like, I guess what they say is the most effective off the hook. What's up? Still in here, man. Thank you. Uh, speed crawl for the clickbait chatterbait or that swim bait you got. Okay. So also for the trailer, we do the, Live Magic Shad trailer. Or thank you off the hook. I really appreciate you, my man. Or a speed crawl trailer. Speed crawl trailer. And is this something you guys are throwing year round? Is this something you're throwing more early in the year for pre spawn in the beginning of spawn time? I feel like this could be a year round type of deal. Maybe not super effective in the winter, but everything else let me know y'all let me know i want to catch some fish on this thing so that was the that was the ow that was the bass package and uh there is one more thing i do want to show you about that package everyone seemed to really like the um and now i'm having a really hard time finding it where's that thing no how does some with two treble hooks get lost? That's what I want to know. All right, guys. Well, I was going to show you the uh, crankbait thing one more time, but apparently it is now lost. It was awesome while it lasted. Rest in peace. Ooh. The, um, what was it called? The Biospawn Rattlebot Crawl. I've already lost it, guys, and I haven't even taken it fishing yet. So that's going to probably end up stabbing someone in the foot at some point. I don't know how you lose something with two uh, troubles on it. But anyway, hopefully I find that without get without it getting stabbed in my foot. But that, those are the two options in that. There's the crawl, and then there's the bait fish one. Half ounce, two and a half inch. And apparently they disappear as well. So there's that. Don't know where that thing went at all. What does this say about it? Biospawn has moved into a new phase, the crankbait. Pro tip, when fishing, move up to the shallows in spring and fall. Fish the rattlebot with a steady retrieve just off the bottom. Fish are around aquatic, aquatic vegetation. Rip the rattlebot through grass beds to trigger reaction strikes. So that is how to work the thing. Oh, my goodness, guys. I found it. I knew it was in there. So one last time. I got that. It was a $7.99. Yeah, $7.99 cent value. This is the Bio Spawn Rattlebot Crawl. What up, Eric Burnside? What's up, man? Um, let's see. We need to figure out how to stream on OBS with the GoPro quality. Yeah, we do, man. I'm all about it. I don't know how to stream on OBS at all. I got to figure that thing out for, for sure. But yeah, what up, Eric? What up, Fat Basses? Awesome. Thank you for being in here, guys. Cool. A lot of cool people in here tonight. We're still, we're still, we're going, we just opened and showed everybody everything in this uh, bass tackle box. I still got one more tackle box to open, but uh, we're just doing a quick review of everything that was in there. So yeah, this, uh, thanks for everyone who's just joining in. Thanks for spending part of your Friday night with me. But this thing, super beautiful. It's the uh, Biospawn Rattlebot Crawl 799. So I'm going to be throwing that. That's a good pre-spawn bait because of that red color on there and the crawl imitation. The hooks on it are dummy sharp. I already almost put it through my finger. So that was one thing that came with it. It came with some laser sharp 4 out hooks for soft plastics. It came with um, the Gambler 3-inch Little Otter. Like these are really, really interesting. They have the arms on them look like paddle tails, and it's got a fat like beaver tail type thing. Could be a trailer, could be Ned rigged, could be Texas rigged. Throw it in ponds, throw it in creeks, throw it around shallow areas and lakes, whatever, around the dock. But yeah, and then I also got, let me see, this is really interesting. This is a $5.99 value, I believe. Um, those, those little waters are only $2. They're super cheap. It's a four-pack. And then this is Lake Fork Tackle Live Magic Shad. It's a jointed soft plastic. So that could be used as a trailer. It could be used 
you could use a uh, wacky or Texas rig. There's a couple of different ways you could throw this thing, but it's garlic and salt impregnated. It says, <laughs> but yeah, a bunch of different ways. These are all the ways it recommends to throw those. What else was there, guys? The last thing I want to show you from here is the Guggen. It's the most expensive one in here. It was the Hat Guys featured bait of the month, and it is the Guggen Squad clickbait. So it's like a chatter bait, guys. I think it's super beautiful. That's in a sexy shad color with a four aught hook on it, and it is a three eighth ounce head on there. All right, and that oversized blade keeps it diving deep. So that was the bass package, everyone. Thanks for checking it out. Anything in there looks super fire, let me know. Uh, the people said they really liked the uh, that crankbait. They said that was looking pretty good to them. I always forget how to close this damn thing. So that was that. If you guys haven't checked out Mystery Tackle Boxes, they're a lot of fun, and they save you a little bit of money um, on baits as long as you get baits that you will throw out of them. Let's see. Griffin Rippin, 20-pound Power Pro is his go-to. Go he hasn't broke it off yet. Yeah, I have, like, I have 30-pound Power Pro, and then I have some 50-pound Power Pro that I use for top water and for, like, catfish and stuff. He says it keeps its color and it doesn't bird's nest as easily. Yeah, I, we, there was, like, a discussion the other the, – you guys comment what your favorite braid is right now. There was a discussion the other day whether Power Pro was better or Spider Wire was better. And everyone on my stream agreed that most people said Power Pro was better. Then I had a lot of people on Fish Brain saying that Spider Wire was better. And they seem to be, I don't know, musky fishermen or something like that. So maybe there's a difference there. I have no idea. But I think Power Pro is pretty good stuff. Let's see. GoPro is all I use for braid. GoPro? Is that different than Power Pro? He said GoPro is all I use for braid. Best stuff out there. So is there a braid called GoPro off the hook? Let's see urban caught one with that bait last week with which one uh joseph dale which bait did did uh urban jayhawk catch a fish with last week and the fat bass said i love stuff like that rip something with two treble hooks through grass <laughs> yeah great idea rip something with two treble hooks through grass they always say that they say rip it through the grass for whatever and it's just like this is an eight dollar bait i'll rip it through the grass once what they want you to do Fat basses, they want you to break it off and go off to buy another one. That's why they tell you to rip it through the grass. Not that it wouldn't be effective, but it would be super effective at getting hooked up. What up, Ripper Rod Fishing? He said he was on Luke, Luke Crane's live stream, and he said that I won the giveaway. Cool, man. Yeah, I won a giveaway from him. Um, I won a mystery tackle box giveaway from him not too long ago. He's, he's a super cool guy, Luke Crane. So, yeah, he said he was live streaming tonight. That's cool. Um, he uh is his live stream over then ripper rod i was i kind of try not to step on anyone's toes and live stream at the same time but it's hard to schedule around everybody i think two stands was live streaming tonight fish snatcher was live streaming tonight luke cranes was live streaming tonight and i am and that's just of the people like that are associated with the sunfish king family or that i watch and like there's probably a lot of other people going live as well so it's hard to not step on people's toes and stuff like that we got one more mystery tackle box to open unless you guys want me to show you the trout and panfish box uh, from last week again because if anyone wasn't in here we can do that one again as well i'll take a vote on that after i show the second mystery tackle box so let me answer a couple of people's things and we'll get right to the second um mystery tackle box remember guys shut up and fish what up backbone ripper rod was alternating between the two live streams so is it over then is his live stream over then later gripping and ripping he said nice to meet you all for sure dude um i already been knowing you man but uh we recently met, and then uh, anyone who hasn't checked him out, go check him out because he's a pretty cool dude. And like I said, he's he's out there doing videos where he's testing brand new Guggen baits and stuff like that. So if you can get reviews on baits, then without having to go and buy them, that's always that's always a plus. Hit him up on Instagram for shout outs in his DM. That's cool that he does that too. He'll help you guys. Um, he'll shout you out and help you get your name out there and stuff like that. So pretty cool. Let me know you are on here and in your shout outs. I'll also mention Sunfish King. For sure, yeah. If you guys do, go hit up Grip and Rip and let them know that you found him through through a Sunfish King live stream. Just be cool to know where everybody's coming from and how everyone's discovering each other and stuff like that. Off the Hook said Power Pro and Mo Creek Fishing said Power Pro 100%. So good night, Grip and Rip. Yeah, I'm a Power Pro guy for sure. I got Power Pro, like you said, 20 pound. 
I think that was Griffin and Rippin who said that. And that's the dark stuff. And then probably in my catfish drawer, I have more of the 50 pound stuff, but there's some 50 pound. And then I also have some bright, oh, this is the bright yellow. Yeah, this is bright yellow as well. That's more for my visibility than anything. But yeah, this is what this is the type of things that makes uh mystery tackle boxes work. This is a $15 bait. And this is what I got last the last live stream I did with mystery tackle box. So in the future, guys, be some really sick baits that I'm gonna be opening out of these things. But without further ado, if anyone doesn't have any pressing questions, we're gonna get to the second mystery tackle box. Weston Hamilton back. What up? Congrats, Weston Hamilton won a sticker from my from my giveaway that I announced today. He won one of these Sunfish King stickers. I got a bunch of different colors, guys. Hit me up on Instagram or in my email if you are um, interested in buying one of these stickers. Or if you have a channel, I might trade stickers with you. I might do deals with people if they want to shout out my stickers and show them off in their channel. And those are not the only stickers I got. I got so many more stickers, but they just, a lot of them are white. They look good on Windows, but they don't show up very well on live streams. So check out my channel and you might see a couple videos on there where I'm showing off some of my stickers. They're hard to find though. I only have one or two videos like that. Let's see. What up, Living Emin Outdoors? Living Emin Outdoors has got a pretty solid channel. Just joined Fish Brain, and I'm going to be interviewing him next month sometime. So everyone say what's up to my man, Living Emin Outdoors. Fellow YouTuber. We're all trying to grow together. Showing each other support. So for the 10 awesome people in here and the 21 people who have hit that thumbs, I just want to say seriously thank you. I know I say thank you a lot, but I mean it each and every time. Thank you so much for helping me out. Let's get to the second. Uh, let's get to the second tackle box, guys. This was the first one. This had the bass stuff in it. I'm excited to throw some of that stuff. Uh, I thank you guys for sharing tips and tricks and ideas and how you would rig it and stuff like that with me. This is the next one. I just popped it open, but I haven't even looked at what's inside yet. And then once I'm done with this, I'll take a vote if anyone who's still here wants to look at my panfish and trout package from last time. But this is the panfish and trout package from this time. Somebody got a link for gripping and ripping. I don't think I have any mods in here right now. All my mods left. So, yeah, you'd have to check out gripping and ripping. Just look up the name um, that's on his title right there. I'll try to share his link. Hold on, everybody. Let me try to share his link. Let me see if I can do it. And let me turn my volume off here as well so it doesn't start playing a video. Gripping and ripping. Let's see. Gripping and ripping, gripping and ripping, fishing. Click on his deal. Why is it not? I just had to click the bell again. YouTube's been doing weird stuff lately. I was hooked set to him, but I didn't. So here's gripping and ripping's link. Let me know if that link works for you guys. I'm sure my the link should work if I share. Fishing with G's back. Okay. Fishing with G, can you share? Oh, I didn't write. I didn't follow my own rule and write gripping and ripping, ripping before I wrote the link. Dummy. Can you share living in, in outdoors link too when you get a chance, my dude? Thank you, fishing with G. Popped on in. How was the? Uh, yeah, I I didn't show the trout package yet, fishing with G. I'm about to show everyone the trout package, and then if you guys want, I'll show you the one from last time. But some of you have already seen it. Some of you haven't. But yeah, share share limit living in and outdoors. Share off the hooks if you get a chance. Um, you can give a little time if you want between sharing links. But yeah, and how was that pasta, bro? All right, guys, pimp fish and trout package, and it's about the same uh, price. I think it's the exact same price, somewhere around fifteen bucks for this. Super excited to see what's in here. Again, it comes with the dibble. This is a smaller version. Tips and tricks. So on the back. Carl's fun fact. Remember to loosen the drag on your fishing reels when they're not in use. Doing this takes the stress off the reel's internal components, which will keep those reels cranking for years to come. Which is funny. I did that in the middle of my live stream because so someone told me that, and I loosened the, the drag on them. And then I was fishing with someone last time, and he's like, oh, I don't do any of that crap. So I kind of forgot to do it again. But, yeah, I need to probably do that. There's anything that they say will increase the longevity of your fishing gear, especially if you're poor like me. Definitely take that advice. Let me know if you guys do that or if you don't do that. There's some information here about MEPS, MEP spinners and stuff like that, which I love MEPS and Panther Martin type spinners. And there's some stuff on here. Uh, the most memorable day in a lifetime of fishing. There's some guy telling about his most memorable fish story. And then, um, yeah, the back tells you how to, how to not give away your honey hole, basically, and not tell people what you're catching on. 
If someone asks you what you catch them on, say a little of this, a little of that. If someone asks where you catch them, say a little spot I like to call the honey hole. How did you find them? Just say it was a grind. Um, yep. It said, how would you get so good at fishing? Half talent, half hard work, and half mystery tackle box baits. Nice. All right, guys. So that always comes with it. Let me see if there's any other crap in here besides just the lures. A few lures. Let's see. All right. This tells me what's inside. All right, guys. So in this trout and panfish thing, and I already have this sticker, so now I got two of them. Little cowboy, cowboy bass or whatever type of fish that's supposed to be. Cowboy fishy. Let's see if I missed anything. Nope, just sharing links. Thank you, Fishing with G. Still want to know how that pasta was, though. Well, that's interesting. That's why I thought it was the bass package because I saw that thing. Okay. A dollar and 99 cent value. Pro V. They always got to come with dang hooks. I got enough hooks, man. Pro V Bend Aberdeen hooks. So these are a little big for crappie. I like twos for crappie, but you could use them for crappie. And that, that bend on there is good for using smaller minnows, shiner, stuff like that. But these are also good worm hooks. And see that long shank on there, guys? That makes it really easy to get the hook out when a, when a bluegill or something gut hooks it. Because you got a little bit of hook to grab with your pliers or whatever and twist and pop it on out of there. So that's a $1.99 value, 10 of these. So it just comes with some little worm hooks, whatever. I don't use these a whole lot. I use snails a lot of the time when I'm doing bluegill fishing. but I'm sure I'll probably end up using these things. So that's $1.99. The next thing up, $2.99. Lindy Live Bait Jigs. So more hooks, but yeah, these are jig heads. These probably would have been good for the ice fishing if I had some live bait. Tell me what you guys would rig on these. These are live bait hooks. They're for jigging like maybe minnows, leeches, worms, stuff like that. What would you guys put on there? What would you fish them for? These look like they could work for crappie panfish. Maybe some winter bass with some minnows on there. Maybe you could catch some walleye with them. What are you guys thinking? What for the, uh, it's a six pound, six pack and they're one sixteenth ounce. He said that pasta was fire. His dad was raised in Italy. He was an Italian chef. Oh my goodness. You just made me so hungry by saying all that. Oh my goodness. That sounds so, I'm really hungry actually. Off the hook has some advice for everyone. Clean and lube your reels every year. He's doing a reel cleaning video soon. I do it more than once a year if you, if you get the chance, guys. But, yeah, anyone use these things? Anyone use them for anything besides minnows or worms or leeches or whatever? I was going to say, yeah, he said use them for walleye. I've never fished for walleye living in and outdoors. We got walleyes in a couple lakes. Not really close to me, but somewhere, you know, an hour or two away. But I've never fished for walleyes. I also don't have a boat, really, so. Yeah. Tell me how you guys would bank fish for walleyes if you guys bank fish. Where would you go? How would you do it? What would you use? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Tip them with a leech. Yeah, I don't know where to get leeches, man. We don't have we don't keep we don't have leeches in bait shops around here. No one uses them. And we don't have leeches in our waters around here either. So there's nowhere to get leeches. No one uses leeches around here at all. What's up, Recovery Bass and TV? That's my dude. I need to send you a sticker, man. I got to send you a sticker. So, Recovery Basses. This was the... Everyone just joining in. We opened the bass package already. Maybe at the end of this thing, if anyone's interested, we can we can recap the bass package. But I've already done that once. But yeah, this is all I've opened so far to the panfish package. We got a couple more nice baits for the panfish and trout package. And then I got the panfish and trout package from last week. If anyone wants me to show what was in there, if anyone wasn't part of that. But I do have a question for you, uh, Dane. Um, where are my stickers at? Somewhere around here, I got my big thing of stickers. And if I can find them, I want to ask you. You said you were going to take the sticker that had the YouTube logo on it. Were you talking about this one I showed you? That I know it's really hard to see because it's white on white background but it won't look like that when it's on something we're talking about this one with the youtube or are you talking about i'm assuming this one sunfish king productions with the big youtube thing on it so let me know if you're still in here dane let me know one or two which sticker you wanted this is one two one two one two one 
All right, y'all. We got a couple more baits to open. A couple more baits to show you. The tidal basin supposed tidal basin. God, I'm an idiot. The tidal basin supposedly has a few walleye. I was very surprised. Weston Hamilton. I was looking for something, so I might not be commenting much until I find it. That's fine, bro. Thank you for being in here, though. I appreciate it. The second one, recovery basin. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this one, the Sunfish King Productions. We're on the same page. This is the one you want me to send you. I will try to send this out within a week. Maybe this weekend, maybe sometime next week. But, yeah, within a week, I'll try to get that sent to you, and I'll let you know when I send it. Fishing with G likes the Murica one. All right, just for Fishing with G, I'm going to show off the Murica one. I do too, man. I wish it was a little darker blue, but it is what it is. It actually looks good on the camera here. In person, it looks a tiny bit more purple when the light hits it, but it's it's definitely blue. USA. Yeah, I thought that was – that's an S right there, by the way, in the white. All this white stuff will show up good on a window or anything that's darker than white. So, yeah, that's the America one. I like that too. Thanks, Fishing with G. Off the hook, still in here, my dude. For while I use a floating jig head. The heck is a floating jig head? I'm already, you already lost me off the hook. I don't know what the heck a floating jig head is, man. All right, I gotta look up floating jig head now. What the heck is a floating jig head? All right, searching it right now. So yeah, yeah, keep commenting whatever you guys want to comment. I'm looking for floating jig head because I, I have no idea what a floating jig head is. Mind blowing. Okay, there's floating jig heads apparently. So there's floating jig heads, and he uses them with a worm, and use a worm blower to keep the worm floating. What is a worm blower? Off the hook, you have the most confusing advice, dude. That's like giving a, a definition that has the word in the definition. You use like seven things I've never heard of to try to tell me a tip. I appreciate it, but I have no idea what you're talking about. If anyone knows what he's talking about, he uses a floating jig head and a worm and a worm blower to keep the worm floating about 15 to 20 inches off the bottom. Are you, you're saying you actually pump the worm full of air and do that like the trout fishermen do? USA all the way. <laughs> fishing with you all right guys a couple more things here we're apparently we're using worm blowers and floating jigs this is we're getting into territory i've never this is why i don't walleye fish because i have no freaking idea what any of that stuff is no idea i'm jealous of anyone who had parents and stuff who fish and taught them how to fish because they probably have a lot more knowledge than i do about all these different species all right that's why i need any of you guys who live near me or something Take me fishing, guys. I want as much experience as I can get. So the next thing, we open the hooks. We open the live bait jigs. Apparently, they're good for walleye, ice fishing, etc. These next ones are awesome. I'm going to freaking throw these very soon. As soon as the bite starts picking up, which is going to very soon for this stuff. You can already catch crappie right now the blue are just a lot harder to catch right now but yeah bobby garland which is one of my favorite brands of soft plastics these are the sexy shad or the original baby shad whatever you want to call them style uh tails i think baby shad would be about the about the best name for these things they look like a little baby shad um it's a three dollar and 49 cent value i forget how many come in here is it 12 it's an 18 pack they recommend anywhere from a 124th ounce up to three sixteenth ounce of jig heads these are a two inch long body and yeah, Bobby Garland are money. You just, what you do with those, I like to take them on a light spinning rod. I like to go out and there's two ways to do it. You can either off of a dock or off of a boat. You can do vertical jigging where you drop it near the bottom. And then if it's really cold, like winter, I just keep it somewhat off the, near the bottom and I'll just every once in a while I'll do like tiny little jigs or whatever. And uh, if it's warmer, you can do that same thing, but I kind of retrieve it all the way up and you can still do that when you're, when you're, uh, fishing it off a dock or off a boat but yeah vertical jigging you just pop it you slow retrieve while you pop it up or keep it at a certain depth you can also from the bank or in a creek or whatever toss it off the dock off the dock toss it off the bank let it sink a little bit and then while you're slow retrieving you just do these little jigs do these little jigs you can stop it and let it sink a little bit or you can change the speed up a little bit um 
Jigs are very versatile. You just put them on a jig head and toss them out there. Catch a lot of fish. I like to go out in the kayak, which I have a kayak that's not for fishing. It's really bad, um, but I still try to make it work. That's why I got the kayak fund in my uh, PayPal link in the description. I'm trying to get a trying to get a kayak, trying to get some live stream stuff going. But yeah, I got a kayak. I go out in there. It's a pretty bad kayak, but I still make it work. And I, I drop straight down from it, or I cast near the bank, and I catch green sunfish, red ear sunfish, bluegill, hybrids, bass, uh, crappie. I've hooked up with a big old catfish on one of those jigs before, but I lost it because it bent the whole hook out backwards. Let's see. RRC Fishing. I've got a pond you can come fish at. Where are you at, RRC Fishing? Is that the real RC, or is that a different RRC Fishing? I'll come fish at the pond, man. Let me know. The only RRC Fishing I know is the real RC real rc fishing so let me know if that's you because i thought your name was like missouri monsters on here or something like that yeah off the hook thank you man sorry to sound so confused yeah you're blowing the worm to keep it floating yeah trout fishermen do that too to keep it floating in the creeks inject air into the worms thanks mo creek appreciate it man some can get in touch with me we'll meet up some somewhere halfway and fish a day send it for sure um i need to find out where you're at you said festus or something like that are there smallmouth or rock bass or anything near warmouth? Is there anything there that we don't have? Is there perch? Is there anything that would be exciting? Because if so, I'll come more than halfway, man. I'll come to your area. Let me know, Mo Creek. I'm all about it. I uh, I probably should be more careful because I I'm like I just meet up with all types of random people online and go fishing with them. I try to you know get a good conversation going, make sure they're they're not seeming super weird, whatever. But yeah, I recently went up and met with somebody from Fish Brain in Arkansas. I had a really good time walking around fishing some of her creeks. So I like meeting up with different people and doing some dangling. Fishing definitely brings people together. It's awesome. Awesome. The fishing community is the best community. Yeah, you changed it to your Fish Brain name. Okay. I, yeah, that's RRC is the real RC fishing on Fish Brain. Yeah, let me know. Hit me up on uh, hit me up on Fish Brain. I'd love to come out to that pond. And then if you want to get if you want to get famous and be on YouTube, let me know. I'll bring my GoPro out. Film you, film you uh, catching some nice fish out there. Or just let me know where you're, where that pond's at. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, any, I'm down to fish anywhere, anytime, any species, guys. That's the one thing you guys need to know about me. 70 miles south of St. Louis. You got everything I want. You got spotted bass there. You got smallmouth there. You got rock bass there. Maybe. Probably you got smaller rock bass. Not really big ones like they have down south, if, I, if I'm thinking correctly. And then are there warm mouth anywhere near you? And can you catch the walleyes out of the creeks? Because I've seen people over there catch walleyes out of creeks. And no one around here around Kansas City catches walleyes out of creeks. That's just mind-blowing to me. And then you guys got the long ear sunfish. We have some of those, but not as many. Yeah, I'd love to come to your area, Mo Creek. St. Louis is awesome. Do you know Mo Creek Fishing? Do you know Show Me Creeks? Please tell me you know my bro, Show Me Creeks. On Fish Brain, on YouTube. Anyone who doesn't know Show Me Creeks, check him out. I need to start putting his description or his link in my description on all my videos because that dude is so awesome. He lives in Missouri like I do, fishes creeks like I do, and he's like my inspiration for YouTube for sure. So we got eight people in here. Um, so far, we've opened this, which I guess you could put on here, but I wouldn't. I would rig this on a just like a 1 16th ounce or 1 32nd ounce um, jig head. Like a you know unpainted jig head or even one of those ones with the colorful eyes on them, vertical jig or fish off the bank or fish off a boat for crappie, other panfish, bass, stuff like that. With these, they're very awesome baits. I love Bobby Garland and different colors are always working at different times, so it's good to have like ten different colors with you. Mo Creek definitely knows my man Stony Creeks. He said he's thirty miles south of me. Oh, he's even further south than you. Oh, okay. Have you ever fished with Show Me Creeks? That dude, that is my dude. That is my man. And I'm trying to get together with him um, also this this season to, you know, sometime this spring to go fishing and do like a YouTube collab. I don't know how well you know him. If the three of us could get together, that might be epic, like legendary. Do some multi species fishing. I need to check you out a little more, Mo Creek. I'm guessing you do a bunch of multi species stuff in the creeks and catch, just try to catch everything because that's kind of what Show Me Creeks does. That's kind of what I do. That could be so epic, man. Like, I'm excited just talking about it. You said, no, you haven't fished with him, but you watch all his videos. Me too, man. Me too. Yeah, I wonder if we can make that happen. If not, I can meet up with you guys separately. Maybe come out there for two days. Go fish with my man. Show me creeks and then fish with you, Mo Creek Fishing. That'd be cool. Recovery Bassin, my man, 
Dane caught a walleye out of a creek once. It's actually the only walleye he's ever caught. It's always surprising. And what were you throwing, Dane, when you caught that walleye out of the creek? I'll show you guys what else is in here. We have we got down to six. I think people started leaving because you're like, he said he's going to open baits, and he's not. But I like to address the people in the chat. We're back up to seven. I picked up the tackle box, and we're back up to seven. So anyone who just joined in, we already went through the bass tackle box. I can, If anyone's interested after this, I'll take a poll and see if they want to want me to recap and go back through it. But there's a couple more baits in the panfish package right here. And then I have another panfish package that I, I showed in my last uh, tackle box live stream. And I'll also take a quick poll if you guys want me to open that and show what's in that again or for anyone who didn't see it. And then after that, we're going to have a fishing discussion for as long as anybody wants to stay. And then I'll end the live stream. So that's the plan for the rest of this night, how we're doing things. You cut it on a live worm and bobber. Crazy, man. I know jigging worms works good for them. Like a worm on a little jig head. That's how I catch bullheads too. Worm on a little jig head. Work it along the bottom or just let it sit. Okay, guys. So there's three more things in here. We open these, which is what I've been most excited for so far. These are $3.99 value. Bobby Garland, 18 pack. And the, the color is called uh, Baby Shad Rainbow. Rainbow with laminate, which means it's got white on the belly. I don't know why it's called rainbow when it's green. But that's what it's called. And then we opened these Lindy live bait jigs, which are good for panfish, walleye, winter bass, maybe. And then just these little hooks. So the three things we got to open up. We got 24 likes. That's awesome. $4.49 value, everybody. The Lindy, another Lindy item. This is crazy looking. This looks like an ice fishing thing or something. You guys will have to let me know. The Lindy Rattlin' Flyer Spoon. And it doesn't look like a spoon to me, but I guess it's a spoon. The Lindy Rattling Flyer Spoon. You guys seeing that? Let's see what it says. Did it tell you how to fish it? It darts and glides with a panicked swimming action. Extra, extra loud brass rattles. And then a bunch of French stuff that I don't under, understand. It's an emerald shiner color, and it's a quarter ounce. So it's actually heavier than it looks. Emerald shiner, which is a type of uh, minnow. Thanks, Fishing with G. Let me see the bass items you got when you get done with the panfish. Okay. Dane, I'll try, to, I'll try to go through the rest of the panfish pretty quick if you can hang out. I don't know how much longer you can stay, but I'd love to show you the bass items and get your opinion on some of them. Two of them I was really excited about. Yeah, I'd love to show you the bass stuff. Living in and outdoors, great for ice fishing walleyes. Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to ice fish walleyes, but that's that's on the on the list. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say I will get the chance. I just gotta make it happen. I gotta get gotta make it happen. I want to fish for everything, every way, and I know there's not enough time in the whole world for me to do that. But yeah, so that's that thing. I don't even know how to fish this. I mean, I, you could throw this out in a creek and work it like a spinner. I'm guessing that you need a swivel with it because with anything that says spoon on it, with spinners, you don't need swivels. With, with spoons, you usually have to use a, a swivel. But yeah, probably just work it like a spinner. Slow retrieve it, do a tiny bit of jigging and a tiny bit of um, speed changes and stuff like that. This would probably work good for trout as well, trout and panfish. It's in the trout and panfish box, so of course it would work for trout and panfish. That's what it's freaking for. You got as long as you need, Dane. Awesome, dude. Yeah, I'll show you guys all this stuff. There's only two more things left in the, bat, the panfish one, and then I'll show you all the bass thing, things again, and we'll go over it pretty quick. So that's that. It's got the red hooks on it. And then there are two more items, guys. Uh, $5.99 value. And this looks like it's for bass. It says on it, walleye, bass, and crappie. A little big for bluegills here, I'm going to go ahead and say. Quarter ounce. Number five, Vexen Rattling Wasp. The Vexen Rattling Wasp. The Rattling Wasp crankbait, and it's got a big old freaking bill on it. Fat bill. The Rattling Wasp crankbait is one of the best walleye baits around. I don't know why they give me all these walleye stuff in this package. I guarantee that's good for bass, too, though. Just look at it. The Blood Red Hook. You probably troll this for crappie. The blood red hook will entice the most finicky trophy walleye and other freshwater game fish to strike. Diving depth for the number five wasp is six feet for casting and trolling. Yep, it says trolling right on it. 
Enjoy catching some of your favorite fish. Anyone anyone thrown anything by Vexen before? Let me know. Enjoy catching some of your favorite fish on a well-built quality lure built by Tackle Industries. So does anyone know anything about Tackle Industries or Vexen? This lure was designed by world-renowned lure builder Paul Coot Williams. Coot. Paul has, I don't even know him, I just said Coot because it sounds cool. Paul has spent thousands of hours designing, testing, and perfecting his baits. And we are proud to offer his design for your fishing enjoyment. It's in the Coot Crippler is the color. The Coot Crippler. Look at that thing. I'll, I'll bust that out and show you guys. So yeah, that could definitely be a bass bait. I don't do a lot of walleye fishing. I don't do a lot of trolling for crappie. So this is probably going to go straight into my bass uh, stuff. This might have been good. Let me know. Would you guys throw this in the winter? Did I miss my opportunity with this? Would this be good right now for pre-spawn stuff? Year-round? Fall time? When would you guys throw it? Fishing with G said the spoon looked cool. Living in an outdoor said vertical jig it open or ice. Vertical jig that spoon? I don't know anything about vertical jigging spoons. The whole process of vertical jigging a spoon doesn't make sense to me. So I'll have to look up videos on it before I attempt that. Because I, I don't like spoons. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I don't like spoons at all. I love spinners, but I do not like spoons. Between spoon, rooster tail, and spinner, everyone has their own personal preferences. And I think spoons are probably a little bit more versatile, actually. But I haven't really figured them out. I don't like them. And they're really fluttery. And I can't get a fish to even look at one. I don't like fishing them, and I don't like the fact that you need a swivel with them. So I'm definitely a spinner guy. Rooster tails are pretty good, too. I just, at this point, I haven't got myself to like spoons yet. And especially vertical jigging a spoon doesn't make sense to me. Just doesn't make sense. But yeah, for some reason, red hooks on the front and then silver hooks on the back. But I do appreciate the advice. I'm not saying that because I don't appreciate the advice. I will write that down as well. Vertical jig, that uh, that spoon spinner thing. But yeah, I don't do ice fishing. So I ice fished for my first and second time this this fall, and it was probably not very safe ice. And I caught two trout, so I didn't get skunked. I got skunked the second time, but I caught two trout the first time on a tiny little rod. Let's see. Mo Creek's got to run because his wife wants to go eat. Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm starving right now. Here in a little bit, I might have to I might have to go grab some food and give you guys like 60 seconds to just ask me whatever. In the chat, I might actually do that here soon. After I after I go through this package, I'm gonna go and grab something to eat, and it'll take literally 30 seconds. I'm just gonna get a snack, and then I'll go through the bass stuff for Dane. Let's see, that should work great for crappie. Yeah, I've never thrown cranks for crappie. Crappie for me is always on crappie jigs. I always catch them on jigs. I've got every copy I've ever caught on a jig, except for like three have been on live worms. But yeah, I'm sure if you, I'm sure if I go out trying to catch a big bass with my luck, I'll end up with a crappie on one of these, which is fine. I love crappie. But yeah, it should work good for crappie. If a crappie bites on this, it's got to be a pretty decent sized one, right? There's a specific reason for the red hooks on front. Is it just the action, the color, and everything like that? Probably catch bass with it too. Yeah, I mean, this is a crankbait. That's what I would throw it for is bass, even though it came in the pan fish and trout pack. Yeah. I'd definitely throw that for bass. I've never really thrown a crankbait for anything but bass. I know people throw tiny little crankbaits for trout, and it looks fun, but I've never really done it. And the last thing in here, it looks super salty. Salty, salty. It's a $6.25 value. Fish Sleep Repeat. JMR Outdoors. It is the JMR Outdoors Kraken Jig. And these are like little tube jigs for panfish. I'll bust them open. It says trout, bass, bluegill, etc. And this is what it release the kraken is what it says, says on the back. Let's see. They tell you how they want you to fish it too. Before I show it to you guys, we'll go with that. For best results, use with two to four pound line. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I love two to four pound line when you're fighting fat pan fish. The one sixteenth ounce kraken is best for deep water. One thirty second ounce kraken is best for shallow water. The one sixteenth ounce Kraken falls approximately one foot per second. Steps to fishing. One, cast and release. Number two, let it sink for five seconds. Now you're five feet deep. Number three, do a slow retrieve while jigging your rod tip continuously up and down. That's how it works pretty much any jig. 
And then every once in a while, mix up the cadence, mix up the speed, mix up the action. So that's what they look like in the package. They got red hooks as well. They're so salty. A lot of salt in here. A lot of salt. That's what they look like. Big long shanks on them. They got the tube jig heads. And that those things, they have some really good action when you it's kind of too salty right now and they're sticking together. But yeah, they got good action when you pop them around and stuff like that. If you work those the same way you'd work the Bobby Garland jigs or really any jigs in my opinion. Let's see. Fish layers gotta go for a second later, bro. It's because the gills on the fish are red and it causes the fish to hit the front of the lure so you don't miss them on a short strike. Gotcha. Thanks, Dane. Learn something new every day. Weston Hamilton's back. NKR Fishing Outdoors is back. Fish Slayer's still in here, I guess. What's up, everybody? Thanks for being in here. So that was the that was the panfish and trout package. The most expensive, the thing in there that was the most exciting, I guess, were these, the JMR Outdoors uh, Kraken Jigs. Super excited to catch fish on those from the kayak, from the bank, from the dock, whatever. Um, and then $5.99 was the Vexen Rattle and Wasp. This would be good for bass. This would be good for crappie. They say it's the best walleye, one of the best walleye lures, but I don't really fish for walleye. But maybe I should go to the lake that has walleye and just try it anytime I think walleye might be, you know, somewhat shallow. That's what that package looks like. Got some Aberdeen hooks for worms and, and nose. This thing was for ice fishing and stuff like that. It's a spoon spinner type deal. And it is by Lindy. Good for walleye, good for panfish. And then these, everyone knows Bobby Garland jigs are awesome for panfish. You'll even catch bass on them every once in a while. I've even caught a catfish on one. Boom! And then Lindy live bait hooks. These are good for ice fishing, walleye, minnows, leeches, uh, worms, stuff like that. So that was the panfish package. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go to my kitchen and grab a snack, and it's going to take, I'll be back in less than two minutes, probably less than one minute. It'll be super quick. Um, and when I get back, I'm going to show the bass package that I just opened because uh, Recovery Bassin wants me to show what was in there, and there was some super cool stuff in there. So we're going to recap that bass package, and then we're going to have a little bit of a fishing discussion. So what I want you guys to do is anyone who has any questions for me at all, go ahead and comment them in the chat. And I want there to be some questions for me when I get back. Comment any questions for me. You guys can keep talking, chatting with each other. I'll be back in 60 to 120 seconds and I'll answer anything in the chat as long as it's appropriate. I'll be right back, guys. I promise. Right back. I'm not leaving. If anyone joins in, tell them that I'll be right, 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 right.
He's back. I had to get some snacks, everyone. I don't have anything ready, so I got just some cheese and crackers. Just basic, basic stuff. Oh, we still got six people. You guys didn't leave. So awesome. Sorry about that. All right. Dixie May said, dance the jig, LOL. What up, Dixie May? He's gone fishing. Yeah, I want to get a snack. I'm back, though. He stuck to the shut up and fish. <laughs> uh, fishing with you. What happened? Hey, dude, I'm not happy right now, but I don't want to talk about it. Then why would you comment that? Why would you comment I'm not happy, but I don't want to talk about it? Well, I'm sorry, NKR. <laughs> sorry you're not happy. Let's see. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll sit in a boat all day and drink beer. It's damn right, fishing with G. No summer sausage. No, we, ain't, we don't have any summer sausage. I don't have any meat in my house really right now. As far as like, I have meat. I know that sounded wrong. I don't have like, I, def, I definitely have meat. I just don't have like lunch meat or anything like that that I could have easily prepared. If anything that's like protein is like frozen, it would have taken five minutes for me to go heat up or whatever. I got a lot of fish in the freezer. I wasn't trying to do all that. All right, guys. So here's what's going on as I eat a little bit more. If you're still in here, Dane, Recovery Bass, and what I'm about to do is um, I'm about to recap. I opened the Bass Tackle Box and the Panfish Tackle Box, and now I'm about to show you guys again one more time what was in the Bass Tackle Box because I had a request for it. Okay. Is this the Panfish one? That's the Panfish one. All right, guys. One more time. Here's what came in the Bass Box. Here's what came in the best box. There's a little card that explains what everything is. All right, so I lost that, so I'm not going to sound too smart about what I'm saying here, apparently. Oh, there it is. So it came with some hooks. They always give you some hooks. Dane? Yeah, 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 he's here. What up? Recovery bass in off the hook. Fishing with G, living in and outdoors, and Dixie May, if you're still in here. Weston Hamilton, NKR, if you're still in here. What's up, everybody? Thanks for being here still. Got those for soft plastics, you know, Texas rigging stuff. You use them for wacky rig, too. They're, they're four aught, so they're probably better for Texas rig, honestly. Um, just want to make sure, do you get what you pay for in these boxes? I feel like we answered that a million times fishing with G. So... One, I just went over like the entire price. They're they're about fifteen bucks or something like that. They're always a twenty five dollar value of the baits inside, sometimes more. So this one all added together is nine plus eight. That's seventeen plus six is twenty three plus four is uh, twenty seven. So it's about twenty seven dollar value for around fifteen bucks. And then, like I said, my one last week for about fifteen bucks. This was one of the baits in it. And this is a fifteen dollar bait. Fourteen ninety nine for this thing, so they're always they're always worth it for the value. If you get a whole bunch of stuff, you're not going to throw like the panfish package that I just busted it out. It's got a couple things in it that like ice fishing type things that I may not throw, but most of that stuff in there I'm going to throw. So the only way it wouldn't be worth it is if you get a whole bunch of stuff that you're just there's no way you're going to be throwing it. So definitely worth it. Fishing with G, fair question. Um, but yeah, that 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 was. The Mike Buka bull, bull gill. My goal with this thing is to catch at least one fish on it before I snag it and lose it on a tree or something. Whew. It's hard to throw a $15 bait. I'm sure you guys know. So that was the first item was the hooks. Not that exciting. The, I'm, I'm kind of excited about the rest of the stuff. In here. There's some awesome stuff. So here's some trailers or just uh, creatures, whatever. You can throw these, these weightless. You could throw them Texas rig. You could throw them... Um, Ned rigged, you could do a drop shot, use them as a trailer. The three inch little otters by Gambler. This is literally two dollars and thirteen cents. It's a two dollar package. So super, super value baits here. The four pack of them. They got weird paddle tail arms on them. And then a big fat beaver tail thing. Very interesting. It's in a green pumpkin. Man, I'd love to get me one of them. Yeah, the blue, the bullgill or the bull shad. Yeah, those things are awesome. There's no way I would have bought that, but I'm so glad that I got it because now I get to fish it for less of a price than I would have ever paid for it. You know what I mean? Fishing with G fished his for three minutes and then he, he got snagged and he lost it. Three minutes. <laughs> that sucks. But yeah, definitely got those. Three more exciting things in here. 
The next one is these have a strong smell to them. It says enhanced with gambler bite. The gambler bite. All right. And then what else I got in here was these are really cool. These are Lake Fork Baits. And it's a $5.99 value. So a $6 value. The Live Magic Shad. Ultimate live action swim bait. And it's a it says swim bait. It's a um, soft plastic. So it's a jointed soft plastic with garlic and salt smell. Three and a half inch. Watermelon red pearl. It says you can weightless, wacky, Texas rig, nail rig, Carolina rig, jig head rig, drop shot rig, umbrella rig. These would be good trailers. So I'll show you what one of them looks like. The action on these is going to be mean. I mean, mean. Look at that. You will barely have to swim these around to get them to. Yeah, those things are awesome. So, yeah, I'm excited to throw this. Uh, you could even, like, wacky rig this and throw it for, like, a shad kill is what some people were saying. Looking like a dying off shad. Let's see. Yeah, I would have went scuba diving for it. Yeah, 15 bucks is 15 bucks. You're not wrong, recovery. I should have, but it was it was too cold. Yeah, dang, man. Yeah, these things look awesome. Very interesting. I've never thrown a jointed soft plastic, so I'm excited for that. There's two other super, super cool things in here. I saved the best for last. Fishing with G's got to head out. He might be back. Thank you, man. Appreciate you modding, too. Like, modding is the most thankless job ever. You guys don't get paid anything, and it's just I just say thank you over and over again. So it's cool to have that blue wrench. It's an honor. It's a responsibility. But, um, you know, I don't have a whole lot to offer for you guys. If I'm ever making money off my channel, I'll help my mods out with something. I don't know, some free stuff or something. But, yeah, just keep grinding until that day, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> How do you buy a mystery box? Weston, go to I'll, – I'll share the link right now. Here's the website. Here, everyone, here's how you buy. Here's how you subscribe for Mystery Tackle Box. You can get one. They also sell them at Walmart for, like, single ones at a lot of Walmarts. Oh, I can't share the link. Darn, guys. Here, I'll share the link to the website. Hopefully it works. Let me know if it works. There's a link. If not, just type in that website and you'll find it. But, yeah, it's Carl's. And they sell a bunch of name brand baits, Guggen, stuff like that. You can become a Carl Squad member or Carl's member or Carl's Club, whatever it's called. I don't know how much that costs. If anyone knows, let me know. But I think you pay some amount per month or something. And then, like, all their baits, everything is cheaper. Everything you get a percent off of. I'm not a Carl's member. I need to look into that. I don't think I buy enough. But I do get the mystery tackle boxes. So the last two items in here, um, the second to last one is the – Biospawn Rattlebot Crawl. It is a $7.99 bait, and it is pretty sweet looking. It's got red on it, so it's really nice for this time of year, pre-spawn and stuff like that. Got that crawl imitation going on. Um, so that's what that thing looks like right there. Um, show you guys. Biospawn. What's it called? The uh, Rattlebot Crawl. And then they have a Rattlebot Bait Fish, too. There's two colors of these. That's what they look like. This is the Crawl one, and they also got the Bait Fish one. So whatever you're trying to imitate. They are half ounce, two and a half inch. And they're, apparently there are six, there are eight different crawl colors and eight different bait fish colors. So my bad, guys. There's a bunch of different. Biospawn is getting crazy into the crankbaits now. They're all in on the crankbait game. Very sweet looking thing there. Let's see. It's forty dollars a year for the Carl's thing. Yeah, so you just have to if it's if it's worth it for you, then do it. Weston Hamilton found it. He'll check it out tomorrow for sure. Carl's Club is fifty bucks a year. And it gives you up to thirty percent off baits. Yeah, is anyone here a member of Carl's Club? Does anyone buy that many baits to make it worth it? You guys done looking at that? Pretty sweet. And then there's one last bait in here, which is Guggen Squad. Carl's Club is a paid membership, allows club members. He says allows our club members. So are you a Carl, are you a Carl's Club member then? 
to receive amazing benefits, which include discounts up to 30% off, free shipping on many items, and access to other exclusive offers. The price of Carl's Club is 49 US dollars per year. Oh, are you copying? I think he's copying and pasting the exact like Carl's Club member thing. Cool. Thank you, Fishing with G. Super helpful. So that's what Carl's Club is, guys. And I didn't know what the price was. It's 50 bucks a year. It's kind of like the GoPro thing. It's 50 bucks a year. And I get 50% off my GoPro stuff. $8.99 value. Final item in here. The Guggen Squad Clickbait, which is a, like a chatterbait. They call it a vibrating jig. The Guggen Squad Clickbait is a hybrid vibrating jig with a flash of a bladed jig, swimming action of a scrounger, a unique sound and vibration that fish have never felt. Listen for that distinctive clickbait clack and the lure's blade bangs off the leading metal beads and the wire. Use a simple straight retrieve and crush shallow water fish all season long. Here it is. Big old fat blade on there. Four aught hook. It's in sexy shad color. And it weighs three eighths. Three eighths ounce. Beautiful head on that thing. But yeah, the color's pretty nice. It's definitely a shad imitation. Let's see. That's what they say on their site. Yeah, exactly. You want to get two mother loads? Yeah, what all comes in the mother load? I'm going to search that up real quick. But yeah, that's the last item. So I'm going to go look up the mother load, and I'll tell you guys what all's in there if you don't know. Go ahead and comment in the chat. We're doing a vote right now. Do you guys want to – It's we're going on two hours right now. I have no problem going a little bit longer, going 30 more minutes, going 45 more minutes, whatever you guys want to, want to do. Um, if you guys want to get straight to fishing discussion after this, we'll just get to fishing discussion. I'll ask you guys whatever you want to ask me. If not, if you guys don't have anything you want to ask me, I'll try to think of some topics. If we wind down and no one wants to talk about anything and people have other stuff to do, then I'll just end this live stream and I'll I'll see if anyone else is live streaming and try to send you guys their way. Um, send you guys on a raid or something. I've never sent people on a raid, so if anyone still wants to see anything and I want in this thing, I might see who else is live streaming. Anyway, um, Fish Slayer Freshwater said a fish a day keeps the skunk away. Very true. So I'm going to look up the mother load. Let me know. Uh, vote right now. Do you guys want to get straight to fishing discussion or do you guys want me to show you the pan fish mystery tackle box from last live stream? If you guys were here, then you already saw that one. If you weren't here, then you didn't already see that one. I've got it right here behind me. So either say pan fish tackle box. It's a pan fish and trout one. Or say fishing discussion. I'm going to let you guys vote. So are we going to get – if we do the pan fish tackle box, then we can still do the fishing discussion afterwards. But I like to keep things interactive, so I'll let you guys vote. While we're doing that, I haven't even looked in the chat to see if there's any votes yet. I'm going to give you guys some time to vote on that. If you guys want to go straight to the fishing discussion, or if you want me to show you what was in that mystery tackle box from last time, if anyone here didn't see it or just wants to see it again. So I am looking for the mystery tackle box mother load. And that's if I get enough money to buy one of those, I'll definitely do it. That is something I'm promising you right now. So it's 60 bucks, it looks like, $60 thing. Let's see what comes in it because I'm probably going to open one of these at some point soon um, on my channel. Mother load. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we're going to make that happen. It's rated 3.5 stars, so some people are happy with it. Some people aren't. What comes in it? Product information, guys. 12 plus for premium fishing products. 12 plus. What? It says 12 to 15 baits. An $80 value. So they guarantee that it's an $80 value for 60 bucks. Okay. So you're not you're spending 60 bucks for $80 worth of baits. 12 to 15 baits or items. Tips, tricks, and informative content. A limited edition fishing decal, which is the sticker thing. Another great reason to do the hashtag happy dance. <laughs> Box size, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, that is, that's what it is. It's 12 to 15 baits, $80 value for 60 bucks. Is it 60 bucks? 59.99, I believe. It's 60 bucks, guys. All right, let's see. Weston wants to get straight to that fishing discussion. Fishing with G has to go later, man. Thanks for being in here modding. I won't have any mods in here to share links after that, but I don't think I need any right now, so that's fine. Appreciate it, man. Later. So we got two people, no, one person who wants us to do the fishing discussion, and nobody, nobody wants to see, um, nobody wants to see the other panfish baits. 
So I think we will get straight to the fish layer freshwater. Did you see my last unboxing? Off the hook said, let's talk discussion. Okay, guys. All right. So we already saw those baits. I got all that crap and stuff. All right. So you guys can go ahead and start commenting if you want. Anything that you want to talk about as long as as far as fishing, outdoors, any questions about YouTube, questions about me personally, go ahead and ask in the chat. I'm open book. I'll answer your questions unless it's too personal, then I just won't answer them. Um, but let me know. For sure. And I do want to say thank you guys for being here. And thanks to everybody who gave me tips and advice about some of these baits and stuff like that. How to throw them, how to rig them. That stuff is all super helpful to me and I appreciate it. All right. But while you guys are thinking about stuff like that, I'll tell you my announcements one more time. Tomorrow, 730 Central Time, 830 Eastern Time. I'm doing a YouTube content creator slash networking live stream. It's going to be awesome. We're going to talk about tips and tricks, how to grow your channel, uh, hopefully introduce you to some new cool people, supportive people, help build yourself a supportive um, YouTube fan base and family and tell you the importance of doing that. And then all the stuff, all the advice that I'm going to give you as far as promoting, as far as thumbnails, titles, all this stuff that can help improve your content. It's all supplementary to actually having awesome content. So the focus of everything is going to be having great content. So that's tomorrow. And I just spend at least an hour beforehand kind of organizing my thoughts and ideas because I'm going to let you guys ask me a lot of questions, but I also want to try to go in some certain order and have plenty of topics and stuff to share with you guys. The hardest part tomorrow doing that is not going to be just covering too much because I want it to be a thing that we do every month and I don't want to just repeat the same things over and over. So we'll see how that goes. I'm super excited for that. Sunday, I'm trying something I've never tried before. And you guys let me know if it's the same people here who let me know yesterday. That's fine. But let me know if you think this is good idea or bad idea sunday at 7 30 central time 8 30 eastern i'm testing out a trivia night fishing trivia night i'll probably think of a lot of questions and then have some type of randomizer or something and then either roll some dice or spin some wheel to figure out the category i'll probably do like four or five different categories and we'll just go through fishing questions i'll ask them people comment in the chat and then like the first person to answer will get a point or something like that um the first person to comment the right answer and then what I'm going to do is at the end, whoever, like when you, if you come in and then have to leave, then, you know, you, you're stuck at that many points. If you come in late, you have less of an opportunity, but whoever has the most points for answering the most trivia questions right at the end, they'll get a shout out in my next live stream. And then they'll get a shout out in my um, next video. And then once I get to a thousand subscribers, then I'm going to start incorporating shout outs into my community tab post as well. Cause you can post on YouTube on the community tab. Whatever. So Fish Slayer Freshwater said that's a good idea. Yeah, if you guys want to join me Sunday, I'm going to be trying out that t trivia night thing and seeing if it works. So basically, don't expect it to run super smoothly on Sunday. It's going to be my trial run. It'd be cool if it runs smoothly, but we're going to find out what works and what doesn't. And I'll take any feedback from you guys because I plan on doing that maybe once a month, maybe more if possible. And then um, again, I can't have guests on there because I'm just streaming through YouTube. But if I do ever get enough people to help me out with... Uh, purchasing StreamYard for uh, Unlimited, then I'll be able to stream a lot more often, have more guests, do more fishing, streaming, and stuff like that. Because I want to take you guys to some of my honey holes that have somewhat decent cell service and just post put my phone up on a tripod, which is a sore subject. I lost the freaking attachment for my tripod that holds my phone. So I either need to find that or buy a new one pretty soon. But yeah, I want to put my phone up. I want to go to some of my honey holes, and I just want you guys to – Join me on some fishing because that's cool too. Besides just these discussions, definitely something I'm excited about. Everyone seems like they like the. Um, everyone seems like they like the idea for Sunday. And then one more announcement before I get to your guys' questions here. Um, Tuesday, same time again, seven thirty Central, probably eight thirty Eastern. I'm trying to keep things along the same time so people get in a in a habit in a groove. Check out the description on this video. Check out Forward Fishing and check out Sharp Fishing TV. Those are my guys, Griffin and Harrison. They also have Forward Fishing also has Charlie helping out his channel and uh, Harrison has Josh helping out his channel. I'm doing it all myself, so I'm jealous of those guys who have like multiple people to help with the channel and stuff like that. Like you, Fish Slayer, you got Albert to help you out. Very cool. It makes things a lot easier having a, having a second person than someone else. But um, yeah, check them out, guys, and go ahead and make sure your hook's set to them and you, are, you click the notifications if you haven't. I'm sure most of you have. Because on Tuesday and every Tuesday on one of the three of our channels, and it rotates which channel. That way we don't have to use too much stream time on one channel. 
We don't give all one person the watch time for it, stuff like that. We want to promote all the channels and, and get our name out there. But really what Multispecies Weekly is about every Tuesday, we talk about different types of fish, different techniques. Last week, we talked about gear and what you need for different stuff when you're fishing. And then we also just, it turned into a friendly discussion for the next like hour or two where people just asked a bunch of different questions and we addressed them in the chat. Um, but the topic, there's a rotating topic and it's going to be pre-spawn bass. So join us Tuesday to talk about pre-spawn bass. I'm going to try to do my homework beforehand and have some good stuff to cover. So let's get to the chat real quick. What did you guys say? Fishing with G's out. Later, man. Uh, living in and outdoors said sounds fun. Yeah, if any of you guys could join me for the for the fishing trivia. I can't promise you that it's going to go well and run smoothly, but I'll do my best to have a bunch of questions and try to think of anything that might go wrong beforehand so that if anything happens, we can prevent it. But it should go well. I think it'll go well. I'll be the judge, I'll be the question asker, and I'll be the scorekeeper. And you guys, all you got to do is just contribute to the awesome discussion and answer the dang questions. Weston Hamilton said, what's the best time of year to catch largemouth bass? I don't fish for bass, and I want to start fishing for bass sometimes. Weston, let us know where you live. And if you can, Weston, join us on Tuesday for that pre-spawn bass discussion, because that will really help you out. Best time of year? Depending on where you live. But it's pre-spawn, spawn, and then there's also some really good bass fishing in the fall when they're feeding one last one, you know, a few last times right before they're going to go really lethargic for the winter. They want to fatten up before that, so there's a pretty good bite in the fall as well. So right now, around here, it's just about to start picking up. It's still pretty cold water, but as soon as the water temperatures pick up, somewhere around mid to mid March, maybe late March, if you live in like Florida or something, it's like early March. It was already going on, but yeah. Um, you guys can comment wherever pre-spawn and spawn is where you guys live, but definitely pre-spawn and spawn time. And then the baits are different. And so we're, what baits you throw a different type of year is different. Like a lot of crawl imitations work well right now. A lot of jigs work well right now. Cranks, especially lipless cranks. Um, jerk baits are killing it for sure. Uh, top water is not the best to throw right now. So you just need to, you just need to join our discussions, do a lot of searching on YouTube and on Google and try to find out as much as you can about bass fishing before you get out there. Cause there's a lot of research involved. It's not just going out there and chucking baits and hoping that they work because you can throw some of the best baits out there. And if it's not, if you're not imitating something that's in the water at that time, or it's not an effective bait for that time of year, you know, probably not going to do as well. You know, so even if you're throwing a $15 bait, if it's, if you're throwing shad imitation and there's no shad out there, it might not do really well. Let's see. Did I miss any questions? Living in and outdoors had to head out. Yeah, later. Living in and outdoors. Thanks for joining us for sure. And I look very much forward to our interview next month. It'll be towards the middle or the end of the month. Because just so you guys know, my interview schedule is towards the end of this month. I'm doing Sleepy Hollow TV. The beginning of next month, if anyone knows Ashton Basson, I'm interviewing Ashton Basson, but it's a double interview. The same time, I'm going to have Backyard Boy TV on as well. So I'm going to interview Backyard Boy TV and Ashton Basson. It's going to be sweet. And then, um, what's up, Jaden Danger's back. Thanks, dude. Jaden Danger, how do you send that emoji? That's cool. I got to figure out how to do that. Oh, there it is. I'll send it myself. Send it right back. <laughs> Sad there's only two people. Yeah, since there's only two people in here, I mean, um, it's just Jaden Danger and Weston Hamilton, right? If anyone else is in here besides those two, let me know. Um, but yeah, I guess I don't need to go into any more like announcements or anything like that. If there's only two people, we can end this thing. Do you guys, you guys want to keep going? Do you have any questions for me? Or are you guys fine ending it right now? Jaden and Weston, let me know. Looks like there's only two people in here. Everyone just dropped off, and it's not because I was like. One, I, I got done doing the unboxing, so there wasn't much to talk about, but I usually have a lot of people in here for my live stream discussions, and I think the issue tonight is just that Fish Slayer's live, or might have just ended, I don't know. Luke Cranes was live. Stan was live. A lot of people went live tonight, so uh, we're fighting over stream time and stuff like that. So I did have, I don't know what, 16, 17-something people in here at one point, but I'm, I'm just down to three right now. So basically, click the smiley next to the chat yeah i did i figured out how to do it i don't know how to send people's names with the red around it i need to figure that out off the hook i just donated to the no you didn't off the hook did you really my dude that would be the most incredible thing in the world any amount from anybody helps dude you are awesome so yeah guys there's a paypal link in my description and off the hook apparently just donated to it dude 
off the hook. Do you want me to? Do you want me to? I don't you know what you donated, even if it's fifty cents. Let me know, man. And I greatly appreciate anything. Do you want me to donate, or do you want me to spend that on the kayak fund, or do you want me to spend that towards getting myself unlimited stream time? Let me know. We're back up to six people in here. What up, Dirt Tracking Thirty One Gaming? We are done doing the unboxings, pretty much, unless anybody wants to see the panfish and trout box from last week. If anyone missed that, we can do that. I just need three people in the chat to say let to say unbox and you unbox this one. Otherwise, we're just doing a fishing discussion right now. We're just talking fishing, YouTube, whatever you guys want to ask. Um, we were down to two people in the chat for a second, so I was considering ending it, but now it says that we got five, six people in here. So I'll keep it going as long as you guys want to. I did two unboxings already, and then we reviewed everything in there. So I'm not really going to go through anything unless you guys want to see like the top baits out of both boxes or something. Dirt Tracking said, I missed it. Unbox. Yes, yeah, so we got one, one vote to unbox the panfish box from last week if we get two more people saying unbox in the chat i'll unbox that and keep and you guys can see what was in there um thank you so much off the hook but yeah let me know um uh, off the hook if you want me if you particularly want that money to go towards me getting unlimited stream time or towards the kayak or if you don't care to say i don't care spend it however is the best but dude you are the first person besides myself who has donated <laughs> i donated to it to make sure it worked but thank you so much, dude. That's like incredible. The first person to donate to the Sunfish PayPal link was Off the Hook. So that is my dude right there. Guys, check out Off the Hook Outdoors if you haven't. So, yeah, only one vote for Unbox at this point. So it's basically fishing discussion unless someone else wants me to unbox this thing. So go ahead, guys. You got any questions for me? Anything YouTube related, fishing related, anything like that? If not, I'm going to start asking you guys questions. Since dirt tracking missed it, unbox. We got two votes for unbox. Sorry, I'm eating snacks. I might unbox it. We got seven people in here. I might unbox it, guys. Who wants to see me unbox this? This is the panfish and trout mystery tackle box from last month. I already unboxed it in a live stream last month. So if you guys saw that, then you've already seen what's in here. He said unbox, please. All right, all right, all right. Since we got seven people in here, the other ones aren't really commenting, but I'll unbox it for you guys. At any point, if you're like, I don't like that lure or that lure looks cool, comment. At any point, if you have anything you want to ask about the lures, comment. At any point, if you have anything you want to say about the lures, because you just whatever, anything related to these lures I'm about to show you, please comment. Dirt Tracking said, yay. Weston Hamilton said three votes anyways, LOL. I only got two. Oh, Jaden, Dirt Tracking, and Weston. So, yeah, we did get three votes. Thanks, guys. Yeet, says Jaden Danger. All right, guys. A couple cool items in here. First off, very nice. Tank Crossing. Got a little sticker. Second item, we got some big, nasty AB panfish hooks. Size 6. These are good worm hooks, good live bait hooks, good... Chunk bait hooks for not chunk bait for like catfish, but like little pieces of meat and hot dog and bread and fish them on the bottom, fish them under a bobber. Size six, it's good for bigger pan fish. I like to go eight or ten for smaller ones, but these are great for green sunfish and bigger bluegills. Definitely use size six for a lot of stuff. Let's see. Off the hook is still here. Very cool. That's my man. Wow, I like that sticker. Yeah, Weston, it's a super cool sticker. I'm thinking about putting it on my I want to get a native fish tank set up. I don't know if I'll get one big enough for bass, though. But I want to put that on that tank. But I really want to get a native fish tank set up. Like, really, 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 really bad. So, what else we got? We'll save that for... We'll save these two for last. Okay. The Lucky John Ultra Worm. These are one and a half inch, 1.4 inch. Chartreuse red is the color because chartreuse with a red um, 
flake. 12 piece. The Ultra Worm by Tackle John. And it says SMT formula, explosive injection of scent and taste. And it's got a picture of a shrimp or a prawn. So it's probably shrimp uh, scented. These I would fish the same way you do like a Bobby Garland. Just put them on a little jig head and toss them around. I guarantee they definitely smell. They smell like shrimp and like burnt rubber. But yeah, those would definitely do good for green sunfish, bluegill, crappie, stuff like that. They, it's got so much action. I'm not even wiggling it, and it's just wiggling on its own. Like that's got crazy action. Very nice for for panfish. I fish way smaller hooks for panfish on worms. I know we were talking to fish fish layer last time. He he said he uses like freaking size 12, 14, 16. I don't, man. I use size I use size six for. For panfish, it works fantastic. And if I'm getting a lot of dink, dink, dinks and they're not getting hooked, then I go down to an 8 or a 10. I went to a pond one time that was so overloaded with tiny bluegills that I went down to a size 12, and it was killing it. Every fish would swallow the hook, but they were so tiny hooks and barely hooked in them that I would just barely pull it, and it would just come right out. And the fish seemed to be fine. Let's see. Off the hook. You spin it whatever way you feel. It'll help you the most. Dude, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. I still haven't looked and seen what the amount is. I'll check it out after this, and I'll go ahead and give you a little thank you message or something on Instagram. But thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Especially because I'm just I'm having a hard time financially right now. No, I haven't really made that. I haven't complained about it to anybody, but I haven't made it a secret either. I'm struggling. I'm definitely struggling, guys. Started my channel and ran into some financial problems and I just my biggest fear is that something will happen to where I can't continue with the channel and I don't want that to happen so that's part of the reason I got that PayPal link is if anyone wants to help in any way but I'm not out there asking people to donate and stuff like that because everyone's got their own problems and this is just a YouTube channel it's not life or death that being said I appreciate you so freaking much dude but these the afterburner Jenko fishing these are uh, what they call them beaver tail or something like that they're 2.36 inches afterburner jig, 12 count. This needs to work really good for panfish. They're fat, though. You need a little bit bigger jig head. I'd do like 1 16th or 1 8th jig head with that. Pretty fat. Be a good crappie jig for sure. Bigger pan, bigger uh, bluegills and stuff like that. But yeah, you just work those the same way you would uh, Bobby Garland. Just toss it out, slow retrieve it, do some jigging with the tip, with the rod tip. All these crappie jigs, I work them the same way. You can do vertical jigging off a dock or a boat, or you can just toss them out from the bank or even toss them at the bank from a boat. Let's see. A weird smell, but aside from that, nice lure. Yeah, they they a lot of them have, are scented with different formulas because it attracts the fish when it's in the water. He said, unbox it. What the hey? Is there a like super delay on the chat? Because I just got him telling me to unbox it. Crazy. Yeah, there's a super delay on this chat. Sorry, guys. That's crazy. Is it because I'm like trying to chat on it? Give me a second. Send. No, oh, it didn't go away. Oh, well, yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm, apparently, there's a huge delay on the chat because I'm just getting some stuff. It is what it is, though. There are two more things that I want to show you out of here, and then we can continue the fishing discussion as long as we got people in here. We get down to like two or three people in here. Probably going to end the thing. But I like to go as long as you guys want to go. Second to last, these are hand-tied jigs. Um, I got some nice bites from the trout on these. I just haven't caught one on it yet, but they definitely work really good. I think part of the reason why I get bites and don't land them is the tail's so dang long. I was probably trim a little off the tail. But they're the warbird by uh kevin rogers jenko fishing all features of the kevin rogers warhead jig combined with kevin's own tide jig style this is what they look like white yellow feathers on it green eye crazy looking eye on the jig head you can't really see this one very well but the hook looks like about a size four if i were to guess Definitely good, a good uh, crappie and trout lure right there. And I used it ice fishing. I didn't catch on it, but I got bites on it. So that's half of a success. 
Let's see. Yeah, I apologize if anyone's saying th anything in the chat. I'll address it as soon as it pops up. There seems to be like a 30-second delay or something, but it's not that big of a deal. Thanks to the five people still in here. I got 26 likes, which is pretty sweet tonight. That's cool with me. Cool with me. And the last thing, there's one last thing in here, guys. This was the most expensive one. I don't remember what, how much it costs. I think it was around like 10 bucks or something like that. It's the Acme Hyperglide. This was the MTB Hat Guys featured bait of the month. Lifelike gill action from the wings. Yes, I said wings. You'll see it here in a second. It's got wings. Lifelike gill action from the wings is irresistible to game fish. Wing action creates a sonar attraction that fish can't resist. This is some high-tech stuff right here, guys. Unparalleled jigging action. Unparalleled. Guides through the water effortlessly. This just makes you want to fish it. V-drop system allows for vertical drop to get back on fish quickly. Then there's a bunch of French crap I don't understand. No offense if anyone speaks French. I don't. I took two years of French, and I still don't speak French. This is what it looks like, though, if you guys have seen this. This is good for ice fishing, panfish trout, stuff like that. You jig it near the bottom, vertical jig it through a hole off a dock, something like that. Look at these wings on it. That's what it means when it says wings. These things flap shut, and they open up, and they flap shut. So when it's falling, the wings open, and they close when it goes up. And the wings look like fins on the side of the thing. Super interesting lure right there, guys. I wish the lighting was a little better in here. I apologize, but yep, and it's got red on the tail. Probably trying to get the fish to strike at that tail and hit it, but it's got a little bit of red on the face too. So let's see. Weston Hamilton. I don't know anywhere near me with trout, so I don't have any trout lures. But in the future, I'll find spots or go to, and I'll see if I can get a trout lure. Any lures for panfish, crappie work for trout. So little jigs, tiny cranks. Um, spinners, rooster tails, stuff like that. And then also the power bait rig that I told you about. Were you here, Weston Hamilton, when we talked about power bait for trout? We can talk about it again if you weren't. But power bait for trout, small hooks, light line. I like the colors on that lure. Well, it's red, white, and blue. No, actually, it's silver, red, and blue. But yeah, I was going to say it's red, white, and blue, so you better like it. <laughs> yes, sir. So that's that. That's that mystery tackle box. I unboxed it for you guys. So we ended up doing three mystery tackle boxes tonight. That's what I did last time, too. Last time I told everyone I was unboxing two, and then I surprised them at the last minute. I said, you know what, guys? I actually have a third mystery tackle box. I like to keep things surprising and have surprises for you guys and keep it entertaining. That's why when I did my giveaway earlier, I was only supposed to have two winners. I ended up having ten winners. Five people won prizes. Five people won shout-outs. In my opinion, it was nuts. I try to do what I can to give back to you guys. So three mystery tackle boxes were unboxed tonight. Appreciate it. There's still seven people in here, so we're gonna start having a fishing discussion now, guys, until um, everyone's ready to go to bed and call it a night. So Weston Hamilton's still in here. I'm pretty sure I was looking for something while you were talking about that. Okay. So what we're gonna talk about real quick, guys. Go ahead, ask me anything you want in the chat about panfish, crappie. Those are panfish. Duh. Panfish, bass, catfish, carp, gar, uh, micro fishing, anything that you know that I go for, ask me about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about YouTube, whatever you want. If you guys don't have any questions, but I, I still see seven people in here, then I'll start asking you questions. If people start leaving and we get down to like two, three people in here, I'll probably just end it and you guys have a great night. But I want to keep, if there's going to be people in here, I got 27 likes. I got people contributing to the conversation. We'll keep things going. So, Right now, I'm showing uh, Weston Hamilton and whoever else is interested in my trout rig that I use. So, this would normally be about the biggest rod that I use for trout. This is the and ignore this. This is for bass right here. But the it's like a six foot six speed stick Xfinity by Luz, and it's medium action. My other two trout rods I've been using are uh, medium or uh, not medium at all. They're light action. Oh, wait, is this medium light? This might be a medium light. It's either a medium or a medium light. Yeah, it's medium. I got two light rods that are loose, and they're the loose XJ Xfinities, and they're awesome. I use those three for trout. I put either four pound mainline 
to a two pound leader or I just do two pound on the whole thing. They fight like crazy on two pound. You just got to be careful and keep adjusting your drag because they will snap your line, which is not cool for you or the fish. So pretty much looks kind of like this. If I'm using a medium or heavier rod, I normally have a half ounce of weight, but that's a lot of weight for trout fishing. Usually I just have one of these and sometimes I just do a couple split shots. But you've got a swivel on there. And then you got your main line. This is a lot thicker than two pound. I normally use two pound. This isn't for uh, trout. This is for just multi-species stuff. That's why there's a size six. So instead of the size six, the only difference in this is you're going to have a little longer leader. So somewhere between 18 and 30 inches. And then you're going to have, I don't have any with me, but size, size 12 salmon egg hooks. They're tiny. You can find them online. I love the gold ones. Gold works really well. And then I crush and just smash on there like a freaking chunk of Play-Doh piece of this this is floating make sure it says floating on there um right up here it says floating on the top floating power bait in orange yellow green red pink or white any of those colors even brown works because it looks like the the pellets they get fed but yeah any of those colors work and if you do it exactly like i said on those tiny hooks it'll float 18 to uh 30 inches off the bottom and it is trout crack for stock trout. Absolute crack for stock trout. So yeah, either either panfish, trout, lures, or something like that. Let's see, dirt tracking. Fishing is full of surprises. Yes, it is. Off the hook said super delay. Is it that bad? <laughs> is the is the delay that bad? That's crazy. My, gram my grandpa went to get a catfish I had on the line, and he almost knocked me into the water. So I'm not reading these as soon as they're coming up. These came up a second ago, so it's not that delayed. Okay, well, I just got Weston Hamilton's question that says, what's your biggest trout you've ever caught? What I'll do, guys, right now, I'll bring it up on YouTube on my phone, and that way, if there's like a super, super delay, I'll see it first on my phone. But yeah, I'll bring it up on YouTube on my phone so that I can answer your questions a little quicker, and I can deal with the delay. There's ways to go around about this stuff, guys. Let's see. I think I can go straight to this live stream if I just search on Google. Let's see. Backbone. Hey, Sunfish King. Could I join your live stream? No one can join my live stream. This is on. Uh, this is streamed through YouTube. You can't have guests on here. I can't have any guests on here. If the most famous YouTuber in the world, if Mr. Beast came in the chat right now and said, hey, man, can I come on with you? I'd be like, I'm sorry. Because I can't have guests on. There's no way to do guests. If I sent you a link right now, it would you'd click it and you'd come right back to the video because I'm streaming through YouTube. So, sorry, Backbone. Nobody can join. What up, Sleepy Hollow? Thanks for joining in. Sleepy Hollow Fishing. Go check out Sleepy Hollow's channel, guys. Um, I'm going to be interviewing Sleepy Hollow sometime at the end of this month. So, it's going to be some exciting stuff. Definitely, definitely, definitely want to go ahead and hook set and ring the notification bell on Sleepy Hollow so you can know more than the rest of the people in the chat about Sleepy Hollow by the time I do that interview. What I really want for these interviews is if I can get some people to go and follow the person before I do the interview, then you guys can have good questions for the person as well instead of just like, what do you do with your channel, blah, 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 blah. You can come on and say, oh, Sleepy Hollow, I watched the video where you were catching a bunch of winter crappie with jerk baits, man. You jerk your baits so hard. <laughs> you know, just stuff like that. <laughs> what up, Stan? And the only reason why, why I make that joke is because they were they were being hilarious in that video and they're talking about how hard they were jerking their baits and stuff like that. It was hilarious. But yeah, check out Sleepy Hollow. And thanks for joining in, Stan. Appreciate it. Um, I did two unboxings already. I did I'm sorry that my live stream interfered with yours. Didn't you do one at like 6 30 or 7 30 your time or something like that, Stan? I'm trying to figure out these live stream schedules so I can try to schedule them at different times than people. So I'm not stepping on people's toes. It's inevitably gonna happen every once in a while, but I think it really helps me and other people get more viewership if we can, you know, if I can figure out when you're doing your live streams. I should, I don't do regular ones besides the multi species, but I need to work on getting a schedule down or something like that. That'd be awesome. Sleepy Hollow said, ha, I love that. Yeah, I haven't seen too many of your videos, but I've seen a few, and I need to keep watching more for sure. Yeah, I'm at the point where I'm supporting so many people and trying to watch, be a viewer you know, for so many people that I'm watching like 120 different 
YouTubers stuff. And so every day I get so many notifications. So I'm trying to watch all your guys stuff and keep caught up. I'm trying to do the best I can. Cause I want to be genuine. I don't go out and just say, you know, the people are like sub for sub, sub for sub. I don't do stuff like that. I will share my channel out, but when someone shares a channel back with me, I try to check it out. And if I like it, I try to subscribe, hook set, whatever you want to call it. And then I try to actually watch their stuff when it comes out. It's really hard. You can't always be watching YouTube, but I try to give people the time of day that I think they deserve, you know, also helps you just meet new people and stuff like that. That way when people hop in my live streams and stuff like this, I can know who they are instead of just, Oh, that name looks familiar. You know? Yeah. Backbone, backbone. I can't have anybody in these, uh, in these things, unfortunately. So yeah, we already did two unboxings tonight. I was just going to basically have a fishing discussion. We were just going to talk fishing. I didn't have any topics necessarily planned. But um, Stan, since you're joining in, uh, I will let you know tomorrow if anyone's interested. I've already told a few people this. I'm doing a content creator networking live stream. You're all invited at 7.30 Central Time, 8.30 Eastern Time. So we're just going to talk about how you can grow your channel, how you can keep with consistent uh, content and just different tips on you know where people get free music, where, what people use to make their thumbnails, um, how people are promoting their channel stuff like that. And I'm sure everybody in there can learn a little bit from the other people. So that'll be interesting. I'm going to try to do one of those a month. And then Sunday, I finally decided I am going to do a live stream Sunday night, 730 again. But um, there, I believe there's a time change in there. So everyone be aware of that. But 730 Central Time, 830 Eastern Time. I'm testing out the trivia night. I mentioned this already to a few people. I'm going to try to do a trivia night. And I thought about it. I don't think I'm going to do the Kahoot thing because most people tune in on their phones and you have to use like a phone or something to do the Kahoot. So they have to be going back and forth. But uh, what I'm thinking is I'm thinking I will come up with questions, categories, either roll a dice or spin something to figure out what category I'm going to draw the questions from. I'll ask the people in the chat the questions. Anyone can answer. And then the longer you're in the live stream, the more chance you get of answering questions, stuff like that. At the end, whoever had the most correct answers, who answered first, you know, got the most points, whatever. Um, that person will get a shout out in my next live stream and my next recorded edited video. And then if I do get to the point where I get a thousand hook sets and I can start doing the community tab, you know, people will post like, hey, I got a video coming up. You can do those YouTube posts once you have a thousand subscribers. At that point, I'll probably shout out people on those too. So that's my idea. That's what I got planned this weekend. And then anyone who doesn't know, Tuesday on either Sharp's channel or Forward Fishing's channel, their their uh, links are in my description of this video. I'm doing multi-species weekly. And this week we are talking about pre-spawn bass. So baits, tips, advice, where to find them, different stuff about pre-spawn bass. Let's see. Two stands had P City Smitty on his show tonight. Caught 40 catfish for 600 pounds on his live yesterday. What are you telling me right now? That is nutty. For, I got to go back and watch the replay. 40 catfish for 600 pounds? How long did he stream? That's nuts. What up again, NKR? I hope things are going all right for you. If you got anything you want to talk about, let me know in my DM, man. I hope things are going good for you, man. Just let me know if you ever need anything, dude. I'm here for you. Fish layer freshwater is back. Yeah, we're still going. Um, basically, I just told people what my weekend was going to look like again. I got a stream the next two nights at about the same time I started this one. We got a question. Uh, yeah, Sleepy Hollow said, how long was Old Boy fishing for? I really want to know how long P-City Smitty went to get those 40 catfish for 600 pounds. And did he move spots or was he just nailing them out of this one spot or something? He had to be. That had to be a long live stream. I'm going to have to go back and check that out. Thanks for letting me know that, Stan. That's crazy. And he he was in your uh, he was on your show tonight. So I'm going to have to go back and watch the, some of the replay of that as well. It sucks. After I scheduled mine, I saw that you were going live tonight. And I was like, gosh, dang it. But, yeah, I apologize, man, for that. And I know it's probably no big deal. The YouTube posting is unbelievable. Someone put out a post for you before and, like, 40 extra people showed up for your live. Yeah, that's awesome. That's how people can really help each other out. Is when you have someone with over a thousand who could make posts, who could just be like, hey, by the way, everyone who's bored Saturday night or something like that, Sunfish King is live. And then next thing you know, you get rated, 30 people pop in. They're like, oh, I came from, you know, whoever. It's like people who, the more uh, following people get, they can really help other people out. Small, small YouTubers, small channels, stuff like that. 
and that's part of the reason why I'm trying to build this, uh, this family, this fan base, whatever, so that we can all help each other grow. Seven hours. It was a six or seven hour live stream. That is like a legendary day though. That's a, that's a legendary day. Catching 40 dang fish. What's your biggest lure says Weston Hamilton. Random question. No, no, that's what we're doing is random questions about fishing. If anyone doesn't have anything they want to ask, I'm going to start asking you guys random questions about fishing and get some answers from you. And then um, this live stream can go as long as it needs to. Like, is anyone else, does anyone know, is anyone else live right now? Because I'm just, we're just having a fishing discussion and chilling. If anyone's live and doing anything exciting, I can send you all their way and we can, we can go raid them if you want. That's always a possibility. So anyone let me know, um, let me know if anyone's live and we want to go do a raid or something. Cause I've never sent people on a raid before. That'd be pretty cool. Sunfish King raid. But if you guys want to keep talking, we got six people in here and we can keep chatting it up too. Um, go ahead and answer Weston Hamilton's question. If you guys want to, he said, what's your biggest lure? This is a random question. And mine isn't even that impressive. I don't have a seven inch swim bait or anything like that yet. This is one of my biggest lures. The bull, the bull gill. The Mike Buka Bull Gill. It's a $15 bait. I got it and I unboxed it in my last mystery tackle box unboxing. So that's why these things are exciting. You guys got to join in for my MTB unboxing. So sometimes you get a bait that's worth more than the whole dang box costs. But this thing is a four inch slow seeking. It's three and three and three quarter inches. So just less than four. It's a jointed swim bait, hard bait. And it is, uh, yeah, 3.75 inches, slow sinking. Um, yeah, it's one of my biggest baits. I might have a couple things about this size, maybe some jerk baits that are the same like length and stuff like that. But that's definitely going to be one of my biggest baits. But as they say, big baits, big fish. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Fish Slayer says, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that is when you blow up on fire <laughs> yeah man um seven hours 15 minutes yeah that's crazy even for seven hours that's an insane amount like i've gone seven hours and caught one fish before maybe even got skunked after seven hours so that's that's an insane bite i wish i was there for that i've still yet to be in a live stream for for a cat fisherman where they had like a really good bite and they were tearing them up it seems like i always join in I always join in right as they catch a fish for some reason. And then it always ends up being a day where they go like three more hours without okay. Like I'll join in and be like, oh, it's fire. And then three hours, they don't catch nothing. So I've seen some okay bites. I saw a DMV Whisker King catch quite a few in one day before. But it always seems like when I get busy and have to go and then I come check back the live stream later, I'm what did I miss? They're like, oh, you missed two 20s and a 30. And it's like, dang, man, I missed a bunch of freaking hogs. <laughs> Anyway, Fish Letter said, how long do you plan to keep the channel going? Do you mean the stream or the channel? Clarify your question and go ahead and ask it again. Do you mean how long do I keep plan to keep this stream right here going? I, I'll just answer them both. I plan on keeping the stream going until we got about two or three people in here. And then we'll just end the thing if, if it looks like. Because we a second ago, we about 20 minutes ago or so, we had we we're down to two people for a second. Right after I said, right after I did the last unboxing. And I was like, all right, good night, everybody. Um, but then we had more people pop in. So I always like to keep the fishing conversation going if you guys want to keep it going. So again, if you guys know anyone's going live, let me know in the chat. If anyone else wants to answer uh, Weston Hamilton's question about what your biggest bait is, that's fine too. And then if you do, if you are asking about my channel, like how long do I plan on keep the channel going? I don't really, does anyone here have a, have any answer for that? Like, does anyone here have a channel and they're like, oh, yeah, I only plan on keeping it going for – I don't think anyone has really a big picture. You know, people probably – if they have a channel and they're as dedicated as me and a lot of people in my Sunfish King squad are to our channels, you don't have an end goal in sight. You just want to keep rolling with this thing and seeing where it can take you. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Let me know, all you content creators, if you guys have any end goals or any idea or, oh, I probably won't keep this channel going. You know, if you know the answer to that, but I feel like that's kind of a question that's hard to answer. You know what I mean? If, if I lose 200 hook sets overnight and people stop watching my stuff and it seems like, I don't know, something crazy happens, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon that I might give it up. But everything's been really good for me lately with my channel and everything like that. I don't have I don't see any end in sight anytime soon. If I can keep growing, that'd be incredible. But Fish Slayer said, Fish Slayer, oh, you got to go leave. All right. Later, Fish Slayer. Off the... I'll have to join you in a future live stream, man, because that was fun last time. The Super Zara Spook is his biggest. Let me look that up. 
So Fish Slayer Freshwater's biggest bait is the Super Zara Spook. And I'll, I'll go ahead and read those. Oh, yeah, I was going to bring up the chat on my freaking YouTube on my phone. Sorry, guys, I'm getting distracted. Um, where is my charger? Because my phone's probably going to die at some point if I don't get it on a charger. And of course I don't have one in here. That's lovely. <laughs> well, we'll keep going until my phone dies or until people don't want to be in here anymore. Because I'd love to go grab a charger, but I really don't know where one is. Very unfortunate. I might be able to plug it into the wall. Oh, but I'm looking up the Zara Spook. It is a... Is that a jerk bait? It's a jerk bait that looks kind of like the... Uh, oh, yeah. Let's see. Five inches. It's a five inch bait. So it's even bigger than the bluegill that I just showed. Let's see. Um, Stan. Nine to ten inch swim baits for pike and musky, but they would catch bass too. Yeah, they'd probably catch some big bass too. Um, I've only fished for pike once in my life. They don't have them around here. And I was uh, I was using a, just a bass spinner, not even a bigger one. Just like a red and black spinner bait you'd throw for bass. So what I'm going to try to do for you guys, I have so many notifications on my phone. So many people text me during my live streams and say stuff. It's like, there's the chat right there. I don't know why they do that, but it's okay. Um, I'm going to try to bring up this video on my phone, guys, so that I have less of a delay with the chat. But if you're asking questions or saying anything in the chat, I will get to you as soon as I can. So paste should be. No, that's just my channel link. Oh, my goodness. Clipboard. Uh, hold on, guys. There it is. I found it. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything about fishing, outdoors, YouTube, go ahead and let me know in the chat. Um, and if not, but you guys want to keep talking, but you just don't know what you want to talk about. YouTube, hold on. Then I will. Uh, I'll ask you guys some questions. So let's see. I'll just. I'll. I'll uh, use this thing to do the chat since there's a little delay on there. Later, fish layer. Stan said, "Whisker King is epic. He's pretty consistent. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He's entertaining to watch, and he definitely knows what he's doing. Catches some good fish, and I like. I watched this video recently where he showed how to make that like." Uh, that hot dog bait stuff that he makes. Very interesting stuff with the sea salt and all the different ingredients in there. Bunch of garlic. Off the hook is still in here, it looks like. What up, my dude? He's got big bass on musky lures. Yeah, that's got to be fun. Um, I will tell you, there's a video game I play because I've never really fished for musky, stuff like that. But there's a video game I play where there's some of these northern lakes you can go fish. And it's like the, it's kind of like that. I think it's the Bass Pro fishing sim world tour or whatever that it's a pretty fun game but you can go out with like you know big baits that would catch any of those fish and you can go throw them in these northern lakes and you have no idea what you're hooking up with like you're fishing in this lake and first off you pull in a freaking muskie then the next thing you pull in is a giant uh, large mouth then a giant spotted bass you're like this is freaking nuts and then i've even got like trout and stuff out of some of those lakes That'd be crazy to go to a lake that has all those different predators in it. You got to think that there's some some limit in a lake to how many different types of predators can be there just because of like the ecological niche and like the food that they all eat. They'd have to compete with each other after a while. But that'd be so cool, you know, to go to a lake that had that many different predator populations where the predators were actually good size. That'd be freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. Not knowing what you just hooked up with a big fish. You don't know what it is. <laughs> Once you start building a YouTube family, you get so motivated to keep growing your family. That's so true, Stan. I had no idea a month ago how what was going to go on with this channel. And as soon as I, I wanted to do a live stream to test it out because I'd never done it before. And big shout out to uh, Sharp Fishing TV, my man Harrison. He got me on my first ever live stream where it was on his channel. And he brought me on on StreamYard and I talked to the people and everything like that. And we kept it going for a long time, like four hours or five hours. Or something yeah it was over five hours and harrison was sitting there like falling asleep on his chair and everything by the end so i was like all right we'll get off here and everything and i got the the live stream bug now the live stream fever it's like all i want to do is come home have live streams talk to you guys and i can't wait to the weather gets a little bit better and hopefully i can afford um stream yard unlimited i got my first donation thank you off the hook outdoors and i'm probably going to put that towards um unlimited stream time for the year 
but yeah, that'd be really, really awesome to start doing more fishing live streams. Cause I have to do that for my phone at this point And it, it uses up my stream time. I only get 20 hours a month and that takes away from interviews. It takes away from multi-species weekly. It takes away from all those different things unless I can get unlimited. So that's the goal right now is to get unlimited. And if I can get that figured out, um, I'll probably be working a lot more over the summer. So it might not be a problem. And then, uh, Next goal after that would be getting the kayak, probably about four hundred to five hundred dollars. I don't want to spend any any over five hundred, but I want a nice fishing kayak. And if I can get a little bit of help from you guys out, that'd be incredible. If not, I just have to save up for a long time for it. But yeah, thank I, I really appreciate any help I can get with that. But I'm not going to ask anyone to donate because I know other people aren't or having money problems too, like I am. Stan's got some of those giant soft saltwater striper crankbaits. Those things are huge. Those things are nuts, man. Sometimes they're so big, they're like comical. Like they don't even look like a real lure. They look like a toy or sort of de decoration or something. That's crazy. Weston out here killing me. What did Weston say? What did Weston say, Sleepy Hollow? Okay. Um... Topwater? What are you saying? Are you saying your biggest lure is a topwater sleepy hollow, like a topwater frog? Or I got some big whopper ploppers. They're probably bigger than that bull, that bull uh, gill that I showed you. And then honestly, I mean, like a, uh, I have somewhere some twelve inch um, ribbon tail power worms and motor oil, which are just money for summertime. Those are the biggest baits I truly have. But yeah, this is a you know good size bait too. Whopper plopper ninety. Decent sized baits. I don't have any huge baits. Question. Do any of you guys worry about weather conditions like barometric pressure, moon phase, wind, etc.? Yeah. Um, we, we've been talking about that a lot lately, moon and stuff like that. So, Stan, let us know what, what all those conditions do for catfish. I'd be super curious to know because we had a debate on it last time. Or not last time, but recently about whether moon does anything for catfish or not. I know it does. It affects all that stuff. Um, the bass, if you're going to be doing night fishing for bass with spinners and stuff like that, I don't know if it's the extra light. I don't know if it's something biological in the bass themselves. But you go out about midnight to 2 a.m. somewhere in the, around there in the full moon and you throw some spinners, something that's got a blade on it that's going to it's going to get some flash off that moon. I don't know what it is. It seems like I've seen people pull like 30 bass out in a couple hours just doing night fishing during a full moon. It's something about it. So the full moon definitely affects stuff like that. As far as wind, lately it's been crazy windy around here so much that the fish are like, they don't know what to do. So they're kind of like sitting still. I don't really know what's going on. Um, the trout are still active in the wind because you got strong current. Trout's like current and stuff like that. Uh, what I've had to do to adjust for the wind, obviously, is put more weight on my rigs and stuff like that. So they're not just moving along the bottom. But like, yeah, with wind, um, I usually check it before I go out because you get like four miles an hour wind, five miles an hour wind. You're still going to be catching pan fish. I don't know how that works for catfish. I would imagine that you're still catching them pretty good. Um, it depends on if you're in a river, lake, whatever. But <coughs> the bass don't seem to bite very well when there's like no wind. And it seems right around eight to ten, tell me if I'm wrong, right around eight to ten miles per hour of wind, the bass bite seems to pick up a lot. And uh, it's good up until about 15, 20. And then it gets super windy. It gets hard to cast. And it seems like the fish are just getting, they're just getting smacked around by all the really fast moving waves and stuff like that. I've noticed that when you have really strong winds, the bite generally slows down a bit. However, some of my best days have been when I went out there and it's like 50 mile an hour gusts, 40 miles an hour wind, whatever. It just like gusting super hard and you're like, you're casting and your thing's barely going out. And you're like, this is almost not even worth it. Some of those days I've grinded anyway and stuck with it have been, um, yeah, it's been awesome. It's been some of the days that I've ended up doing really well. So wind can really mess things up, but whatever. Fish Slayer Freshwater is filming a cooking video. Awesome, man. They're having grass carp for dinner. So that grass carp, are you smoking it? Are you braising it? How are you having it? Because grass carp is not good at all if you fry it. It's. I don't think it's very good grilled at all like that. Like Most people think grass carp isn't even food. But if you smoke a grass carp, it's delicious. Like brine it and smoke it like you would like salmon or something like that. Or if you um, if you braise it, it's really good too, and like some soy sauce, some some uh, salt and pepper, garlic, some ginger, 
maybe some onions, maybe some uh, like rice wine or white wine or something like that. Yeah. Weston Hamilton, NBA just made three videos in a three minute time frame. What do you mean by NBA? Fish Snatcher is still live right now. Yeah, so that's why there's only six people in here because Snatcher's live. And I told everyone at the beginning, I went and commented in Snatcher's right before I came on here. I said, I will not be offended if anybody stays on Snatcher's live instead of mine. So this will actually be a live stream that I get a lot less uh, view time than I normally do. Normally around this time, I'd have like 17 people in here right now. And I got like six. But I'm not saying anything negative about it. I think it's awesome. I got six of y'all chilling with me on my Friday. And if any of you are both in Fish Snatcher's and mine's right now, that's cool too. He's probably got a lot more action going on on his end. And uh, some of these times you got to be careful doing live streams because honestly, like I got enough people in here where I'm, I'm going to get more view time and stuff like that. But some of these times, if I would have just joined Fish Snatcher's thing instead of even going live and just said, hey, man, put me on the wheel and I end up getting my channel showcased, it might have actually done more for my channel than this. But I'm doing this to show you guys, you know, my baits and like I like the interactive component as well uh, with all my followers and not all you guys come over to Fish Snatcher's. So. I'm glad you guys are here talking with me. Nate V's back. What's up, man? This guy won my uh, – and I'm behind on the chats. I'm sorry, guys. But, yeah, Nate, uh, he won my – he was won the super fan package of my giveaway today. So he's getting one of my hats. He's getting the orange one. He says he's going to rock orange. And he's getting one of these stickers too. So congrats, Nate V. I love giving back to my, to my supporters. I love it. If I had more money, I'd give even more back to you guys. That's why I did 10 winners in my giveaway. I was only going to do two, and I just said, screw it. I want to give back as much as possible. Five people won prizes today. Five people got shout-outs today. I'm trying to help you all out. Off the hook, I always check out the pressure moon phase and find out all the majors and minors um, stand. Harrison says, still live, respect. You know me, man. I don't know the last live I did that was less than like two hours. Always be going for a long time. But, yeah, thank you, man respect and i can't wait till tuesday when we can talk uh pre-spawn bass harrison let's all let's make this a really really awesome um tuesday a really awesome multi-species weekly let's all get a piece of paper a pencil and let's let's all on our own time sometime between now and tuesday spend about 30 minutes to an hour just researching pre-spawn in your area when it is where there's fish normally located what what are the best pre-spawn baits even if you think you know still look it up anyway try to find some websites that say like top five pre-spawn tips, top five pre-spawn baits, stuff like that, and then write those URLs down or save them or stuff, anything like that. I would love to have some really good stuff to discuss with the people and think with, and ask them what they want to talk about for the pre-spawn bass baits. I'm sure they'll have plenty of questions, but I'd like to have a lot of stuff that we could potentially cover, even if we don't get into half of it, because I know it's not going to be on my channel, so we can't go all night. But I've got a little bit of stream time left, and I'll tell you right now, if Tuesday comes, we're talking baits, we're talking pre-spawn, and you guys both have to go to bed because it's an hour later where you guys are at and stuff like that. If people still want to talk, we can go pop over to my channel. I can start a stream real quick. We can go for another hour or so. I got no problem doing stuff like that. I got no problem talking to people if they still want to talk, keep things going. So, yeah, it's almost three hours on this live stream, and I got no plans to end this thing since we got seven people in here right now. So we can just keep talking fishing as long as you guys want to. Let me see. I missed a couple things in the chat. I'm trying to catch back up. I like to, I'm going to get better at it in the future. I think what I need to do is just ignore a couple things in the chat and just try to address, like, I think that's what a lot of you guys do, like you stand and stuff like that. It's hard to address everything in the chat. So you just kind of try to go over what's most relevant or what's most recent, especially if I get to like what my goal is. If I have like 50 freaking people in here at once watching one, like I went to shoe nice today. If anyone knows who that is, he had like 200 people watching his live stream at once. He's doing a three day long live stream. Crazy. <laughs> crazy but uh yeah weston said what's up to shark stan said in virginia the james river has giant blue and flat heads they've gotten six over 50 this year mad respect i don't even want to tell you what my personal best catfish is because it's just stupid embarrassing so we're not going to talk about that i'll tell you what it is when i get a new one let's just say it's tiny um i used to live right on upstate new york on a lake Pike, muskies, bass, crappie, bluegill. Yeah, man, that's incredible. Full you, full moon, usually midday, is good. But also find the majors and minors and you'll have success. So what do you mean off the hook by the majors and minors? 
Like you're talking about some limit, uh, some range of acceptable or tolerable conditions in each one of these, um, in each one of these aspects, as far as pressure, like what the fish can tolerate or when they're active or tell me what you mean by the majors and minors. I can look it up if I don't get a good answer. Cause I'm sure there's other people in here who are like, what, what do they mean by the majors and minors that uh, the, I've heard of that with music, but not with fishing. The wind, especially from the West moves the water, which turns up the bait fish. Yeah. I've noticed the, some of the rain and wind yesterday made the trout start going crazy in one of the lakes I fish. It was the best trout bite I've ever had. And I lost a little bit of the footage somehow, but I got most of it. And so when the wind turns up that bait fish, it can strike, it can trigger a feeding frenzy for almost all predator species, including catfish. Oh, so Stan, you like fishing in heavy winds. You like heavy winds. Do you like winds as heavy as they can get until you can't cast anymore or until it's just moving your bait too much? Or is there a limit to what you like? Hey, what's up, Laura the Explorer? Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate that. Said I'm getting closer to 500. Yeah, that's I didn't expect that because I started my channel in like December. It says I started in 2016, but that's because I put out some random video back then, um, way before I was a creator. I, I started my channel in 20 in December 2020, I think. But yeah, I just started a few months ago. Getting to 500 this quick is really, really awesome. So I do appreciate that. Thank you, Laura the Explorer. Sleepy Hollow said, what's your max viewers so far? Okay, so are you talking about like in a live stream? My max views on a video is 12,000. The max amount of viewers I've had in a live stream at once is in the 20s. I don't think I've ever got to 30 yet, but it's in the 20s. I've had 21, 22, maybe 25. We'll say it's somewhere around 25 viewers at once. And a lot of times that's in my interviews or when I'm just – I had a lot yesterday when I was just doing a random live stream I didn't even plan on doing. So that was cool. Off the Hook used to live in a place by Shataka? Shataka? I don't know how to pronounce that. Shataka. Somewhere in New York. Must be heaven. I probably made that way too hard to pronounce when it's not. But Shataka or Shataka or something like that. Let's see. Majors and minors are based off the pressures, and it is a time frame for feeding and activity. Okay, so it's the tolerance for, like, active fish or whatever, if, if they're within these majors and minors or something like that. There's a limit to the wind. Yeah, I'm sure, Stan. I'm sure it gets to the point where it's just not even fun to cast, and you can't keep your bait still and stuff like that. Wind from the north, do not go forth. Wind from the east, fish, fish bite least. Wind from the west, fish bite best. When from the south, blow bait in their mouth. That's what Fish Slayer Freshwater said. I've never heard that before. For me, for trout, I don't care which way it's blowing from. I just go and cast directly into the wind. Go to the bank that the wind's blowing to. It's harder to cast, but cast directly into the wind because the trout are going to stack up right off the bank, facing right into the current, letting food get washed straight into their face. But yeah, I've never heard that. That must be a catfish thing. The wind from the north don't go forth, whatever. I've never heard that before. You can look up majors and minors in your area. I would recommend everyone look it up. It's based on your area. Let's uh, let's try to talk about majors and minors when it comes to um, in the multi-species weekly chat. So I had somewhere I was writing. There you go. That's a good place to write it down. So multi-species weekly, we're going to talk about um, ah, multi-species weekly, majors and minors. For pressure, wind, etc. See whatever factors are included with those majors and minors. I'll find out more about it. We'll try to discuss it on uh, on Tuesday. You should join us on Tuesday if you're not doing anything off the hook. Maybe you can tell the people a little bit more about ma uh, majors and minors. I don't know if we can bring you on the live stream, but maybe we can. Maybe we can't. We'll see. Yeah, Sleepy Hollow said live stream. Yeah. Probably 25. I think I've had about 25 people in here at once. And the most amount of views from a live stream is a little over 200. So, like, after it's all said and done, how many people actually have popped in or went back and replayed? A little over 200, which is kind of cool. I go back and I watch some uh, some live streams that people with, like, 2,000 subs do, and they only get, like, 40, 50 views on their live streams. So, it's really cool to get that many views. I don't think I'll get that many tonight. It'll probably be somewhere in 
near 100 or a little over 100. But it just depends. We got five people in here right now. Um, a lot of people are doing lives tonight, so I might not get as many as normal. But it's not really all about like watch time. That's not why I do these things. I do these things so I can interact with you guys. If I didn't get any watch time, I'd still probably do these things anyway because it's just I like uh, hanging out with you guys and talking fishing. And there's plenty for me to learn, and hopefully you guys can benefit from some of my live streams as well. Laura the Explorer's achy knees tell her the air pressure. <laughs> Let's see. Luke Crane's back. Oh, you just got off your live? Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know if you were still live or not. Some guy came in here and he said he was in my live and your live at the same time. But I thought he had said that yours ended earlier. So, how'd your live go, Luke? And how many people were in there? Um, just so you know, Luke, don't be discouraged if you only had a couple people. The reason why you didn't get as many as normal tonight, I don't know if you did. Maybe you did. But it's because uh, I was live, you were live, Fish Natural was live. There's a lot of people going live at once. So in the future, I'll try not to go live when other people are. And I'll try to schedule mine at the beginning of the day so other people can see when I'm live. But, you know, we're stepping on each other's toes a little bit. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you doing your live. We already talked about that. That's fine. But um, you might have gotten more people if I wasn't live right now and if Fish Natural wasn't live. So don't be discouraged and definitely try it again. But I'm curious to know how your live went. I'm sorry I couldn't be in there, man. I would love to come in and support you. But I was live as well. Hope things are going good for you, Luke Crane. And I'm sorry to hear you lost all those uh, all those hook sets, all those subscribers. Hopefully, it was just like spam accounts, and hopefully, you get you get them all replaced with real viewers and people who show you actual support. That'd be great. Stan says, "I love how you're out there supporting everyone." Um, are you talking to Lori? It sounds like uh, Lori the Explorer. Yeah, sounds like Lori the Explorer is a good supportive person that we're all about that here on sunfish squad i must get some shut eye have a good night laura thanks for joining in really appreciate it looking forward to seeing you in more live streams and stuff like that i had joined a live stream where you were talking one time with uh with mud tramp and it was an awesome live stream so good to know you thank you for popping in have a great weekend if i don't talk to you again on youtube or something off the hook will be working that night, so he'll be popping in and out. He's talking about Tuesday. Yeah, I think the delay is still a little behind, but I'm going to try to – I'm going off my phone because I think it's less of a delay. The last thing I have is good night. Uh, off the hook saying good night to Laura. Yep. All we got, so we're, we're caught up in the chat. Actually, no, Stan said there is a major and minor feeding periods daily that are affected by moon phase. Oh, that's what the major and minor is. So feeding periods. What would a minor be like a feeding period that's not as, you know, productive for fishing as a major? Or I'll have to look into it. I'll have to look into that so that we can be on the same page and I don't sound as dumb. They occur during moon set and rise. All right. Fish layer, fish layer is back again. And good night again, Laura. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. So does anyone else have any? We got six people in the chat. 28 thumbs up, which is crazy. It just went up to seven people in the chat. Sunfish King, you play an instrument. You mentioned major and minors in music. So life... Unfortunately, I have a lot of interest in life. just doesn't seem to throw enough time my way to stay on top of everything. I played guitar a little bit when I was younger. And now I'm at the point where I can, I can remember a couple chords, but I would be terrible if I tried to pick it back up. I The best instrument I ever played was trumpet. I was pretty decent at trumpet. But again, I would probably remember some of the notes and stuff like that. But it's been so long that I just don't get to spend time with it and stuff like that. So I've played trumpet, played guitar. Um, and I'm super into music, but no, I don't. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, I don't currently play an instrument because I just don't see. I don't even have time to edit my videos as it is. I I don't see how I could practice and devote enough time to an instrument right now. If there were six of me, I'd do. I'd be doing everything, man. It's crazy, 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 crazy. Yep, Stan's got it with the majors and minors for sure. Yeah, I really appreciate uh, you guys helping me out learning some of this stuff because catfish is something I need to get way better with. If I eat a 50-pound catfish, I would be ecstatic. I don't have a scale that gets up to 50 pounds. So I wouldn't even be able to weigh it. So, Stan, what scale do you use? 
Let me know what scale you use for the big cats and how, how many pounds does it go up to? Does your scale go above 50? I'm sure it does. I'm sure you have one that goes above 50 for when you catch a monster. Let me know. I'm curious to know. You too, Sunfish King. Appreciate all the support and respect you show for others. I try to be respectful of others. I really do. And I try to show. I feel like every person deserves respect until they've lost it. I don't think. I don't, I'm not a person where most people have to earn my respect. A lot of people have earned my respect in a lot of different ways. But everyone starts out with a base amount of respect when you're dealing with me. And you can either lose it or you can gain it, basically. You can you can screw it up by you know, being an idiot. Or you can be a cool, positive person. And I'll just appreciate you even more. So I try to have respect for people. Fish Layer Freshwater said, what are you doing for your 500 hook set? He uses the 110-pound whisker seeker scale. Gotcha. I'm writing that down. So for catfish, for big fish, I want a 110-pound – because mine, mine only go up to 50. And my biggest fish was 41 pounds, so it, it almost tipped that thing. 110-pound whisker seeker scale. Awesome. Thank you, Stan. I appreciate the advice. But fish layer said, what do I plan on doing for 50? I haven't put a whole lot of thought to it because it happened overnight. Um, at 50, here's what I know so far at 50 hook sets, 50 subscribers. I'm going to announce the rules and what you have to do for my next giveaway. I'm not hundred percent sure what my next giveaway is, but I, I'm going to have probably two winners that are going to win some bad bass apparel merch, which is the company that I work with. So bad bass apparel merch, you'll earn some of that. Um, and then I haven't decided if I want to give away anything else. If I want to kind of do it like I did this one where I give away like a few stickers and small items to try to help people out. I might do that. I might not. I haven't decided. So that's something I definitely got planned. Thank you. Henry Harrington says, nice sweatshirt. This is my first time wearing the gray one. It actually had a tag on it. I just had to cut the tag off before I wore it. I think I've worn every one now except for the, uh, the highlighter yellow. So stay tuned for one of my next live streams. I'll be wearing the highlighter yellow one. You don't want to wear this fishing. They scare all the dang fish away. But yeah, here's the gray one that I got on right now. And if anyone hasn't seen the back, I'll show you what the back looks like. I try to. But yeah, hopefully I have these for sale at some point. Right now they're just kind of expensive. They're like 60 bucks, and I can't I can't sell these for that much. It's just too much. I want to try to get them closer to 30 or something and then sell them. Try to work with a different company. So thanks, Henry Harrington. Yeah, I don't know what I have planned for 500. Um if I was caught up on videos and filming and editing, maybe I'd try to do some awesome video or something like that for 500. What do you guys think? 500, uh, I can't make a PB happen or anything like that for 500. I, might, I could take a trip for 500 maybe, maybe go to Roaring River and smash some trout, maybe try to do a camping trip. I don't know what you guys think, and it depends on how busy I am. Um, I could try to do like 100 fish talents, try to catch 100 fish in a day, but it'd probably be a lot of green sunfish and smaller fish, but I guess that's what most people do when they do 100 fish challenge is catch smaller fish. But yeah, I'll, I'll think about that. So for 500, I'm definitely, I'm going to start a giveaway and I don't know when I'll end it. Probably 600, 650, something like that. Maybe 700, but I'm going to start a giveaway at 500. I'm going to, my whole goal was at 500 subscribers was to get a fishing kayak. I made that goal when I had like a hundred or 200, I said at 500, I'm going to fishing kayak and at a thousand, I'm getting a nice camera, like not to replace my GoPro, but just for like, like basically the camera is good or better than an iPhone because iPhone cameras, a lot of people will do their fishing with the GoPro, but then at the beginning they'll have like this little bit where they recorded some like super up close, like some leaves in the woods or like some sign or some water or something in slow motion. They just seem to have a lot better frame rate or something like that. So I need some type of camera or something like that. But those, that was my plan for 500 and a thousand. Now that I'm getting so close to 500 and I'm absolutely broke, the kayak's not going to happen unless like, someone rich comes along and donates to my kayak fund or unless I inherit a lot of money. So I don't like to make promises with the channel and I need to work on that in the future, not to promise things if I can't come through on them, but I could definitely make something happen for 500 as far as besides a giveaway, probably some video. So you guys let me know if you guys have any ideas of what I should do for 500. Um, it could be a challenge or something like that. I'm not super into challenges. Um, I'm more into like, fishing challenges and like oh go jump in a cold lake because i got 500 or something weird like that and i already did the fishing freestyle thing so we're not going to do that but i think i want to do something cool and fishing related some type of challenge i don't know maybe go on a trip maybe try to catch 100 fish i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know maybe an all night live stream trying to catch catfish i don't know i got 
a lot of possibilities, guys. Fish Slayer, 1,000. When you get monetized, you should hire an editor, LOL, since you are so busy. No, man. I would never hire an editor. I would never let somebody make my videos for me. Not in a million years. Not really, and when you get monetized, you don't get enough money to hire someone to work for you. Not at all. I know people have been monetized for years, and they're making pocket change every day. Build your... I thought I made subs a word people couldn't say on here. I swear they don't work. Like I make blacklisted words so people can't say them, and they still come up. I tried to make it so that people couldn't say subs or whatever, so I had to be hook set. You're fine, Stan. I was just... I'm trying to get it so it doesn't say sub. I don't know why. See, stay away from the sub for sub. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's why I'm saying because YouTube doesn't even like when people say it like you are right now in the chat. Like they freak out about the word sub. I lost someone. People said sub too much in one of my first live streams. and I didn't get any uh, watch hours for it. YouTube like took it down, took out my is crazy. You got to be careful about saying that. They treat it like a bad word for some reason. But I'm not getting on to you, Stan. You're cool. Um, I'm just letting everyone else know who doesn't know about the hook set thing. But I do agree 100%. Um, YouTube tries to stop that. They don't support your channel, whatever. Um, yeah. The sub, for, the sub for sub thing only really works out when uh, – when, uh, sorry, my head's super itchy. Uh, I had on for like hours and hours. The sub for – and I need a haircut really bad. The sub for sub thing only works out when you're actually like – actually subbing for subbing you know what i mean when you meet somebody and you're like oh i'll check out your channel you check out my channel and then you guys both actually sub and actually watch stuff it doesn't work if you're just like getting on instagram and send a bunch of sending a bunch of links to people and you're not actually like watching their stuff or interested in them and they they sub but they never watch so a lot of their subs immediately get taken away it's only the people who actually turn into viewers that end up counting as subs anyway. So you, you want to try to build your viewership, not just your number of subs, but I'm sure a lot of you guys already know that. What up fish and junk? Thanks for joining in. We're just having a fishing discussion right now. We did all the, we did all the unboxings already. Um, anyone who joined in and didn't get to see the unboxings, maybe I'll show you the best, the best out of each box. The best two things out of my bass box were this, which is the, um, what is it called? It's a Guggen, Guggen Squad clickbait. It's a chatterbait in sexy shad color. It's got a four-aught hook on it. It's three-eighths ounce. Good action there. Makes a lot of noise. And then I got the Biospawn Rattlebot in red crawl color. And that's a pretty exciting bait as well. So this is just for anyone who missed my unboxings. Got some pretty sick baits in there. Excited to throw those. Um, also, fish and junk. Last week, this was the highlight of my... Oh, is it gone now? Is it gone? Somewhere I have the bullgill, Mike Luca bullgill. That was the highlight of my bass box last week. And then these were also super interesting this week. was the jointed soft plastic swim baits by lake fork a lot of different ways to rig and use those and then uh, i did two panfish ones as well can never go wrong with good bobby garland stuff this panfish one had one that you could also use for bass a little crankbait but it's also good for walleye and crappie and trolling and stuff like that so that is by uh vexing it's a let's see tackle industries vexing the rattling wasp it's got a rattle to it came with a cool spoon um rattling flyer spoon that'd be good for ice fishing for walleye fishing stuff like that and then i got a bunch of these bobby garlands which are just money these are rainbow rainbow laminate color and these were really sick these were the lind are they lindy or what brand is no they weren't these were uh these were like the featured thing in there. These were the JMR Outdoors. Um, what do they call these dang things? The Kraken. The Kraken jigs. At least the Kraken. So, yeah. Definitely a bunch of cool stuff in those. Um, there was one other panfish thing I had showed people. If you care about that, if anybody didn't see that. I don't even know where it is at this point. But it had some hand-tied jigs in it. It had some interesting stuff. I've I have so many tackle boxes sitting here that I don't even know where it is anymore. Yeah, hand-tied jigs, 
some cool soft plastics of different types. And then uh, this was like the most exciting thing in there, which is like walleye panfish, ice fishing, all that stuff. And this is just for anyone who is just joining in and didn't see this. And if you did see it, I apologize for showing it again, but I'm just excited about all my baits I got. This thing is really cool. It's the Hyperglide. Hard and soft fishing Hyperglide. Super cool. It's got wings on it. So when it the wings deploy when it drops and then when it lifts up, they go back in. And so that's what that thing looks like. So yeah, a lot of good lures uh, today and a lot of good lures in my Mystery Tackle Box la unboxing last time. And I'm going to do one every month or, or every month I'm going to do a live stream where I do two Mystery Tackle Box unboxing. So yeah, I think I already showed you guys those, but the, the hand-tied Warbird jigs are money. So just want to do a recap for anyone just joining in, like Fish and Junk and anyone else who just popped in for the um, unboxing and didn't get to see them. So those were some of the best things in there. Let's see. They all look like they'll catch some fish. Yes, sir. It's just some of them look better for right now and some of them look better for later on in the year. One of your crawdad dough baits worked out pretty well. I wanted to send you some, but the dough would probably go bad. Yeah, 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 it will. Don't, I'm good on that. Thank you, though. What did you catch on a crawdad dough bait? It works pretty well. Off the hooks, got to turn in and head to head to camp. Oh man, hinge cutting of some trees for deer management plan. That's awesome, dude. When you're doing work, but it has to do with like, you know, you're fishing and you're hunting and making that better for you in the future. It's not really work because you the whole time you do it, you're like, this is going to be awesome. So see you off the hook later. Bobby Garland's are definitely six, Stan. Bobby Garland jig and plastic for sure. I, I catch so many panfish and even some bass on the little Bobby Garland. Ah! The little Bobby Garland. Bobby Garland jig. Sorry, my phone on the lake. It's at 60%, so we're doing good. We're doing all right. Um, yeah, anyone else like Bobby Garland or anyone else have any other brands? I like Arky as well, A-R-K-I-E. They make really good soft plastics and jigs and stuff like that. Still got seven people in here. It says we got 32 likes and zero dislikes. That's awesome. That is awesome. I don't know how what what the most amount of likes I've had on the live stream before. Um, I'd probably go back and be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around 30 or 30 couple. That's probably a record. I might have had more during an interview. I, just, I don't always go and look at how many likes I get and everything, but I just want to say thank you guys for hitting that like button. I really appreciate that. You guys are really good at doing that stiff. What's a sausage head jig, uh, fish and junk? Does anyone know what that is? Sausage. I'm looking it up. Sausage head jig. What's a sausage head jig? I don't see anything. Mr. Cro Strike King Mr. Crappie sausage head jig. So it's like a, it's just a tube jig, but it's got like uh, some weird ribbed pattern on the top part. Not really a tube jig because, yeah, it's weird. That's cool looking. That would definitely catch the crap out of some panfish, man. Strike King Sausage Head. Mr. Crappie. Cool. I never knew about that. I'm writing that down. Strike King Crappie Jigs. Or Panfish Jigs, I should say. Panfish Jigs. Um, the Strike King Mr. Crappie. And that's just one brand. I'm sure there's other brands of Sausage Head Jigs. But that's the first one that came up. Sausage Head jigs if you know any brother brands of sausage head jigs besides striking let us know fish and junk sniper of spades dude thank you for joining us um if you've seen my recent short video if you know anything about me at all then you know that my favorite company in the world is panther martin i don't even i would have a bunch to show you right now to show you how much of a fan i am but like so many of them are like in my fishing backpack or recently got Stuck in the bottom of the lake fishing for trout. I am all about the Panther Martins. They are the best of the best. This is my favorite one. What's your favorite Panther Martin? And the silver does a little better in like cloudy, muddy water, cloudy days. So I'm not always throwing this. But for most conditions, especially sunny, clear water. Oh, my gosh. This thing is money. Absolute money. Panther Martin Deluxe. I like Rooster Tails, too, but just not quite the same as Panther Martins. Panther. Martine, that's the silver one that does really, really, really good. And I've got a bag like this full in my fishing bag over there. So definitely a Panther Martin guy. 
Who was that? Something Spades. Sniper of Spades. Yeah, Panther Martins are freaking awesome. So what all Sniper of Spades? What all have you caught on Panther Martins? I've caught brown trout, rainbow trout, sunfish, and bass all on Panther Martins. And I've just started throwing them uh, in September last year. Let's see, fish layer freshwater. You work it like a crawdad soft plastic. I'll give you a formula. It's not as durable as a piece of soft plastic, but it's only about a tenth of the price to make one. I might try a fish layer. I just prefer soft plastics to something like that. It's, it's a really interesting idea. I don't know where you got that idea from. Luke Cranes Outdoors. Whenever I do my live streams, I schedule them, but when it gets time to do them, they never let me post. I scheduled them, but when it gets time to do them, they le never let me post, and I have to go back and remake it. All right, Luke, let's get this figured out. And if we don't get this figured out tonight, join in my live stream tomorrow. We'll talk about it. So here's what I do, Luke. Are you streaming directly through YouTube, or are you using StreamYard or something like that? So if you're streaming directly through YouTube, you click the top. You click go live and everything, right? And you've made it. And then it, uh, you're watching the thing, whatever. You're you're on the actual video where it says go live and people are chatting or, not, or, you know, where it's going to start just like you're a viewer and people are commenting and stuff like that. When you see that there's like a minute or two minutes left for it to start, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the go live button at the top. And when go live comes up, um, I don't know what it looks like on a phone, but I know on the computer, there are three things on the side. The top one, if you scroll over it, it just looks like a, the Wi-Fi thing. The middle one looks like a camera. And the bottom one is a calendar on the left, right here on the left of my screen. And if you click on the calendar one, if you scroll over it, it usually says manage or something like that. That'll show any live streams that you've created. And they should just be sitting there waiting for you to go ahead and click them. And then you can click go live at any time. And it'll start the live stream. Took me a while to figure that out, but that's how I do it. So you, you can create 10 live streams at the beginning of the day and schedule them for different times. And then all you have to do is go to that manage click one of them and click go live and you should start shouldn't be any issues make sure that youtube's not open on any other tabs or anything or you'll have horrible audio issues and echo and stuff and then fish layer said i'm gonna address the other things in the chat but um fish layer said he uses the cheap walmart spinners so those work too not even close to as good as panther martins they just don't spend the same time on them in my opinion but yeah they work They definitely work. Here's another one. This one looks almost just like a Panther Martin, but the blade just isn't the same. But yeah, they work. They're spinners. Panther Martin and Meps, though, are OG fishing junk. I think Strike King is the only one that makes them, but that's my go to lure. So I got nine in four different colors. Wow. You catch a lot of panfish on those fishing junk. It catches anything that can swim, probably anything predatory. They can swim. You're not going to catch a lot of carp on those, especially grass carp. Early season crappie and perch is tough to be an Arky shiny hiney jig. I'll have to write that down because I love Arky. My Arky favorite one is called like Old Faith or Old Faithful or something. It's red and black body with a yellow tail. There's no way if I look around that I won't be able to find a package pretty quick. Like those are my absolute favorites. Immediately. Old Faith Shad. Arky Sexy Tail. These are incredible. Because of like the color scheme, you can use it in dark water or clear water, and it works really well. I freaking love these things. I gave some of these away in my first giveaway. Some of these and then some of my favorite bass soft plastics, which were Strike King and Yum Brand. Fish Slayer is a rooster tail guy. Yeah, I prefer spinners a thousand times over rooster tails. They're so much better. It's just a personal preference thing. I think spinners, spoons, and rooster tails all catch fish, and it's just what do you like to throw better and what works better for you. For me, one million times spinners. Then uh, rooster tails and then spoons I don't like. I really don't like spoons. I haven't figured them out yet. I don't like them. Luke Crane tried to do through StreamYard. All right, so what was the problem, Luke? How did you go about trying to oh, trying to go back to your stream when it was time? Because I never once had an issue with StreamYard. Let's see. I tried to do through StreamYard. Yeah, I don't have any problems with StreamYard. When it's time to do the stream, just go to StreamYard, and it will show you your streams that you have, and you 
you click enter broadcast booth or whatever it says, and then you're in there. And then when the time runs down and it goes to zero, there's something in the top corner that says go live. You click that, you go live, and then it started, but you're not on there yet. There's a little thing in the bottom where you have to click add to stream where you click your face and then, then you're live. So I don't know what the issue is. Hopefully I help you fig- get it figured out. Cause for me, StreamYard was incredibly easy and I'm really bad with electronics. So I'll do what I can to figure it out for you, man, or help you. Yeah. And as, as Stan said, if you're trying to do stream through your phone, you can't do your phone on, on, uh, on YouTube, unless you're on StreamYard. Yeah, I could go live on my phone right now if I wanted to, Stan, but I just have to use StreamYard for it. I'm sure you know that. You do it. You use StreamYard when you go from different devices and stuff, right? Stan loves uh, maps. He said a gila long fishing junk. I've caught carp, catfish, gar, redfish, crappie, flounder, pinfish, sunfish, chubs. And one time I caught a turtle on the sausage head. The go live button was gray. Are you sure it was set for the time? Huh, that's really weird. I don't know. Dude, what's up, Curtis Outdoors? It's been a long time since I've talked to you, man. Do you have have you had any live streams recently or anything like that? You used to do live streams when I would be uh, at work. It seemed like I'd always be at work and we'd be driving from one job site to the other. And my dude was always driving. So I was sitting in the passenger seat and I'd always try to join in here. Like I joined in a couple of your live streams while I was at work. Thanks for hopping in, man. Sorry for promoting on your multi-species page on fish brand. I won't do that anymore. I totally understand. Um, people want to see pictures of fish, not a million YouTube links. So I'm right with you on there. Hopefully no hard feelings, but. Fish Slayer's got to go to dinner. I always forget that it's two hours earlier there. It's like 10, 15 here. Like, I'm thinking, dinner? What is this dude doing? The bite has been slow lately, so you haven't been doing any live streams. Same here, man. But I'll tell you what. Uh, I recently went to one of the local creeks, and the chubs and the shiners were tearing it up. So the, the bite from those has picked up for me lately. Hopefully, it's good for you. I didn't expect it to be good, but I went out there, and it was just a crazy bite for chubs and shiners. I also got a common log perch, so a new species for me. Okay, man. Yeah, I, I definitely won't promote in that group anymore. I've got enough groups to promote in as well. Um, and I totally, totally, totally understand. If people keep doing that to like my my PB group or something like that, I'll have to make the same rule. So it totally makes sense. Largemouth bass group um, on fish brand has been having a lot of issues with it. Apparently everyone's been posting on their YouTube links and stuff like that. And people are getting irritated. <clears throat> What did you say, Luke? No, he, he retracted the message. Okay. Your dad free my, He said your dad free my group twice and then deleted it. I'm, I think he's having a typo issue. What you trying to say, Luke? What you trying to say? All right, yeah, buy fish that are freshwater. Yeah, we already did all the unboxing, guys, for anyone who joined in recently, if anyone did, like uh, Curtis. We did two unboxings tonight, and I just showed everybody again what the uh, what all the baits were and everything like that. So, unfortunately, I can't bring them back out. You can go rewind the live stream if you want to see what the baits were. But uh, I got a lot of awesome live stream stuff planned right now. Um, tomorrow, I'm going live at 730. I'm doing a content creator live stream, so we're going to help people with tips and tricks for YouTube creators and stuff like that how to grow your channel, promote your channel, how to work on better content, better editing, filming, um, and just advice, introducing people, networking, uh, building a support group, stuff like that. And then I'm trying something super exciting Sunday. I'm trying to do fishing trivia where anyone who comes in, I'm going to ask you guys questions, fishing trivia, whoever wins that, whoever answers the most questions right and gets, you know, the first person to answer right is going to get a point for each question. Whoever gets the most points at the end, is going to win and they will get a shout out in my next live stream and my next uh, recorded video. So that's what you win if you win the fishing trivia. So I got a lot of crazy stuff planned, a lot of cool stuff planned. We'll see if it works. If it works, that'd be awesome. Let's see. 
you have my group. Yeah, Luke, you got like the biggest uh, fish brain YouTube group on fish brain. Awesome group. I don't know how you got eight hundred some people on there or whatever, but that's that's awesome. It's like eight or nine hundred people, I think. Big old group. Do you know why I can only catch sunfish and bass at my local creek in the summer for the rest of the year? I can only catch chubs and shiners. Yeah, water temperature, dog. It's just water temperature. As soon as the temperature gets too cold for those bass and sunfish, they try to go as deep as they can. So they'll move out of those creeks and they'll go into ponds and they'll go into rivers and they'll go super, super deep off drop offs and stuff like that. And they will just hang out there, eat anything that falls in front of them, but they don't eat a whole lot. They, they're they pretty slow and lethargic for most of the year. It's a little better here. I don't know where you live, but it's a little better here. Um, you can catch panfish for most of the year. It's like December through March about mid-march where you can't catch them at all in the creeks or in shallow water and stuff like that and then the rest of the year like starting here soon and then for the rest of the year i'll be catching bluegills green sunfish bass stuff like that but it's water temperature the chubs and the shiners absolutely love the temperature the water is right now mine are spawning right now i was catching chubs the other day they were going nuts they all had the, the red uh fins and everything like that their spawn colors they had the turbicles going on their heads they're in full spawn Full, full spawn. So, yeah, you got to find out what water temperatures that the different fish like, and then that, that is the time to go out and target those fish when they're active in those water temperatures. So, chubs and shiners here, the only time you can't catch them is like this December, January, February, and then March it gets good again. Even in December, I was still able to catch them. So, like maybe January and February is the only time of year you really can't catch any chubs or shiners or anything. Sorry, my voice is going out. I got to get a drink. Stan only uses his phone. He's 11 away from 600, so he can only use uh, StreamYard. Well, congratulations. Anyone who hasn't checked out two, uh, two Stan's Fishing, please go check out his channel. He does really awesome live streams and stuff. Uh, catches awesome catfish, fishes on the James River, and um, has good discussions. So he's 11 away from 600. I'm not telling anyone to go and subscribe, whatever, if you don't want to. But go check him out and at least consider it because he's a really awesome supporter of the channel and has an amazing channel himself. He was actually one of the big inspirations and reasons why I started doing these live streams after watching some of his and how well they went, how good of a community he's built around himself. I'm sorry, my voice is going out. It's crazy. So I'm known for doing long live streams, guys. The mystery tackle box ended a while ago, and now we're just doing fishing discussions. Basically, how these things go is I don't have anything planned at this point. You guys can ask me anything you want to know about fishing, outdoors, YouTube, the Sunfish King, anything you want to know, and I'll answer it. And if we got like five, six people in here and no one's asking anything in the chat, then I'll start asking you guys questions and you can answer them. We'll get a discussion going. I'm pretty good at getting the fishing discussion going and keeping it rolling. As soon as it gets down to like two or three people in the chat, nobody's saying much. I know when to end the live stream. That's when I'll say, all right, guys, have a good night. Peace out. But I went ahead and planned nothing for the rest of this night. And it is 10 o'clock here. Um, I did get up early, so I'm you know, fairly tired, but I'll, I'll keep doing this thing as long as you guys want or until I'm literally falling asleep or if something like my computer dies or something. And I do want to warn you guys, I've not had any issues since I started streaming on YouTube. Let me know if you've seen any any lag or any issues with audio or, or video. I think every once in a while there might be a tiny bit of an audio delay or glitch, but it, I think it's pretty good quality. Um, but I just wanted to warn you that a couple of my stream yard streams, my face would freeze. And it would kick me out of the stream for like 10 seconds and I would come back. So if that happens, just make fun of whatever um, expression I'm making that my face froze on. Hopefully I'll have like my eyes closed and it'll look like I'm passed out or something. It's usually pretty funny. And then I'll be back within 30 seconds. So I just wanted to warn you. That hasn't happened yet tonight, but if it does, sometimes I lose connection and come back. Just make fun of me and just hang around. I'll be right back. I also like to try to keep this thing interactive. So anything you guys ask in the chat, I try to address it. You go to the deepest part of your creek that you know of and still can't find any sunfish. Yeah, because they're not in the creek anymore, man. They moved down that creek to the river. They're not in the creek anymore. Like, even those deep holes, they're not in there. Sunfish are gone. They've done move. They migrated to the, the ponds, the rivers. They go to the bigger bodies of water that those creeks feed, and they'll be back. They'll be back. Fish and junk. Texas bass just started spawning. So they're actually past free spawn and actually on spawn. Yeah, it's warm down there. Florida, too. He bought, saw his first bass on bed of the year. That's crazy. We got we got a month 
until that happens. <laughs> we got a month until the first pass around beds. Two stands that are uh, stand, yeah. Sunfish King, perfect answer about the creek water. Awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah, I've noticed that. I do a lot of creek fishing, and um, about that time of year, I can't get into them either. So the time when it switches from a very diverse creek with lots of warm water and colder water species at the same time around here, um, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be different for where each of you guys are. So if you live in different states, you might have different times for that stuff. But most states have some time where those warm water species just aren't in shallow water anymore. I'll give you a prime example, green sunfish. Most of the year, I'm the green sunfish man. I don't like to brag too much, but I can catch a lot of green sunfish almost anywhere I go. Creeks, lakes, whatever. I'll challenge anyone to green sunfish just because it's fun and I know where to find them. That's like the species that I do the best with. I'm thinking about doing a challenge, 100 green sunfish in one day and making myself, I don't know what you guys think is a good rule for that. Make myself go to three different places so I'm not just sitting there fishing from the same spot. Something like that. But green sunfish, most of the year, they're biting in shallow water and you can catch them in creeks, you can catch them wherever. The second I go and fish those spots where I know they're supposed to be and they're not there, they're like kind of the way I know green sunfish are like, they tell me whether the warm water species are there or not. If they're not biting near rocks in shallow water, because that's where they live under big rocks and holes in the rocks in shallow water. If they're not biting there, then I'm just assuming that there's no warm water species in that area. And the make of, of those uh, shallow creeks has become mostly chubs, shiners, small minnows, things that like um, cold water. And the chances of me finding a gar, a sunfish, or a bass there are extremely low. They've all gone somewhere deeper where they can just hang out. Fish and Junk said, do you target catfish? I do uh, stand targets catfish a lot more than me. It catches a lot of big ones. My PB is embarrassing, and I need to break it this year. I've actually specifically gone to this really awesome spot that I think I think Stan would really like. It's on the Kansas River. And uh, some boat fishermen go there. But people also bank fish there. It's a really good spot by like a by like a spillway thing where the water drops down. A lot of people fish from the top of that spillway thing. I'm I'm not someone who wants to catch a fish and try to pick it up over a ledge or something like that. I don't know. That's always been weird to me. So I fish down below it. I've got some monster bites, but I have trouble. Like I don't know, uh, Stan. What hooks do you use normally if you're doing live bait or if you're doing cut bait? Because I've had trouble with where the bait gets taken off my hook, and I don't. I've missed all my big catfish bites is what I'm trying to say, except for one. One time my uh, I was my dumb freaking butt was using like an improved clench knot with braid, which is no no for braid. There's a bunch of other knots that work better with braid, like maybe even Paloma or something like that. But I know if you're gonna use the improved clench knot, you like go through twice through the eye before you tie it or something like that. I didn't know that. So I used the improved clench knot and I did lose one monster cat because my knot failed. Um, I've just had horrible luck when I have been targeting catfish lately. Every time I go to the river, it seems like if when I'm using cut bait and stuff like that, I catch gar and drum. For some reason, they get hooked on these giant hooks barely through their mouths. <laughs> the, the small fish just won't leave it alone. And I get bites from, you know, decent cat and stuff like that. But so far, I've either missed everyone or I've broken off or I've just had really bad luck. So it's just... A lot of bad coincidences, and I need to grind more. And the more I watch you catfish, man, I'll get better at it. I'll get better at it. Let's see. One of your videos got 75,000 views, Curtis. Oh, wow. Are you monetized, man? Or have you applied for monetization? Because if that video doesn't have a, a song or something on it, you know, that's copyrighted, that video will probably make you money every day, whether it's 10 cents or a dollar. That video will probably make you money every day. Thank you, Stan. I appreciate that comment so much. He said, love the content and the talk, positive and people learning. Awesome. What up, Jeremy? I got two moderators in here. Thank you, guys. NKR is back in. NKR, you're the second person asked to join the panel. Nobody can join the panel. I have no way of I have no way of letting you guys on here. This is on YouTube. I have absolutely no way of letting anyone on the panel. Sorry. Thank you a bunch, NKR. I really appreciate that. Luke Cranes, you are long-winded. That's his nice way of saying I talk way too much and I need to slow down. No, I appreciate it, man. I could go for a long time and talk about this stuff and 
it just energizes me to talk about fishing and outdoors and stuff like that. And I do want to, in the future, try to do a marathon live stream. And I know I say that I've already done five hour, I've done a couple of five hour, like fishing discussion live streams. But what do you guys think is crazy? Like doing like an eight hour live stream where I just talk fishing. I like to do some actual fishing live streams that are long. That's really easy when you're cat fishing or something like that. But if I could do like a, I don't know, eight hour, 10 hour live stream where I'm just talking just to see what my limit is. See if I get to the point where I'm like, I don't even want to talk fishing anymore. You know, I'm just falling over. That'd be super interesting. Curtis is almost monetized. Yeah, the shorts don't co count towards monetization. Yeah, same here. Shorts seem to get a lot more views. My biggest is only 12,000. I got 12,000 views on a short. I really appreciate that, NKR, though. That's awesome. Talking too much? No such thing, says Fishing Junk. I almost did a cr crappy fishing live stream the time I did my crappy fishing video. I said crappy. Crappy fishing live stream the time I did my crappy fishing video. Yeah, that would have been a that would have been a good live stream. That's the hardest decision sometimes is do I want to film this and edit it and make it look super cool or do I want to do a live stream? And some people, some people live stream with their GoPro on. I did that when I did my ice fishing with uh, Harrison and Griffin, forward fishing and sharp fishing. The, old, the other multi-species weekly dudes, um, there was audio issues, so my voice would echo back through. It was really hard to listen to, so I'm glad I recorded it with the GoPro because I'm going to go back and actually edit that because those were my first two ever ice fish. I got two trout through the ice, and it was super exciting. So I need to go back and edit that. Hey, later, Curtis. Guys, go check out Curtis Outdoors' channel. He's got over a 1,000 um, subscribers. He's got a community tab. He can post and stuff like that. And he's getting close to being monetized. And uh, you don't have to share anything you don't want to with me if you're still in here, Curtis. But I'd be curious to know if you could just uh, hit me up on Fishbrain. I got a few questions for you about that whole process and stuff like that. Because you've been doing it a lot longer than me. Uh, if you're interested in talking about it, I'd love to talk to you about it. But have a good one. Jeremy said, I'm driving, so not much of a moderator. Well, it feels good to have blue wrenches in the chat. All right. It just feels reassuring. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. And if you're driving, uh, you don't have to chat. You don't have to be on here at all. You can just put the phone down or whatever. Like, I don't want you to end up getting in a crash because you're listening to the Sunfish King. I'd feel bad, man. Fishing junk takes him three days constantly fishing before he gets burned out. When you say three days constantly fishing before you get burned out, are you talking like – because I, if it was me, I'd be constantly fishing all the time. But, like, do you mean – three literal days straight of nothing but fishing or do you just mean like you go out and fish you know for a day and then come home go out and fish for a day come home go out and fish for a day and then you're like i can't even fish anymore because i don't get that for some reason like if i fished five days in a row i think if someone's like what do you want to do tomorrow i'd be like i don't know probably go fishing it's weird it's like hard to get me to the point where i don't want to fish anymore unless i fish for five hours and the bite is just not there sometimes i'm like okay this is getting old but especially if there's any any form of a bite going on, it's so the hardest thing for me to do in the world is to leave a leave a body of water that has a fire bite. It's crazy. Appreciate that, uh, Curtis. Definitely. And I'll probably have especially more questions for you once you get monetized. I'm super curious on that. You don't need to share any, you know, secrets or anything with me. That's not what I'm asking. I just want to know a little bit more about it. It's super interesting to me. Luke, that's what I'm saying, man. You said I could fish forever. <laughs> so Snelled Circle Hooks, they target big 40-pound and higher blue cats and flatheads. So they use big 8 out to 12 out. Yeah, that always sounded huge to me, but when you think about it, a flathead's mouth is massive. But 8 out really ain't that big. I'm sure you still – what's the smallest fish you've ever caught on one of those 8 out or 12 out hooks? I'm, still, I'm sure you've still managed to somehow hook a smaller fish with one of those massive hooks before, Stan. Wow, 1,800. Good job, Curtis. Congrats if you're still in here. Jeremy said, turns out I do have FB. You talking about fish brain? Or Facebook? Because I know you got a Facebook. If you have a fish brain, Jeremy, uh, follow me. I'll share yours out if you want. I can send you invites to a bunch of different... Um, a bunch of different fish brain groups where you can share your your channels your, i mean your channels your videos your live streams etc so there's like youtube groups and then there's also there's 
like specific groups, the panfish ones and like the ones that are specific species, they don't really like you to post in them, but I can show you the ones that they do like you to post uh, links and stuff like that. If you're curious. Fish and junk. Where do you live where you're catching these sharks and stuff? Yo, I live in Missouri. I can fish for a shark all day. I ain't going to catch one. He uses ADOT and he's caught foot and a half long sharks. Is foot and a half like the smallest sharks that you've caught or something like that? Because I was asking about small fish or I'm curious. What's the biggest shark you've caught? Have you caught big sharks? Texas, mostly surf side. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I don't live anywhere near any salt water at all. It's just totally not an option for me. So anyone who lives within three hours of salt water, consider yourself blessed because you have the ability to go salt water fishing on a trip or a weekend or something. I don't. I don't at all. It'd be like two days of driving for me to get to the ocean. His biggest shark's a little over five foot. What species, my dude? And what'd you catch it on? Some type of cut bait or something alive? I bet a five foot shark fights incredibly hard. Like, I want to know. I want to know what the hook size was, if it was eight odd or if it was even bigger. I want to know what bait you were using. I want to know what line you were using. I want to know how it fought. I want to know so much about that shark, man. Tell me everything. Tell me the whole story. So I ain't never caught a shark. I dissected a shark recently. It was awful. It's really hard to skin a shark. Really hard to skin a dang shark. It was a bull shark on live mullet. Woo-wee! Jeremy, have you ever done any saltwater fishing? Let us know. We're curious. We want to know, man. Have you done any saltwater fishing? Yeah, you know it's crazy fishing junk. Um, I live in Missouri. And no, that's that's the crazy part. I live in Missouri. No, Kansas, where I have my fishing license. I got my Missouri license, my Kansas license. I think I got my Arkansas license. Um, the Kansas River, place I was telling you guys about that has the big catfish. And I need to keep going back there and keep trying because they do have good catfish. I need to get on one and stop freaking missing them. Need to go back to that spot. But that exact spot where I fish has had the most insane catches from it. And I just somehow i've never caught one they had an albino shovel nose sturgeon recently caught there and it was see-through and it was the weirdest thing i've ever seen it look like a fish or like an alien but someone caught a massive i mean hundreds of pounds someone caught a massive bull shark there in kansas that's how far upstream it traveled and this was just a few years ago and they ended up killing it because i don't know why they didn't want to dump it into some you know they didn't want it to end up in a lake or something like that i don't know they end up killing it, but it was like a massive bull shark, which I think is the only shark that can live in brackish and freshwater, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, in my fishing spot, someone caught a shark, but that's like a one-off thing. That shark was hundreds and hundreds of miles from where he should have been. Stan's caught some three-pounders on those huge hooks. Yeah, it's crazy. Are those flatheads you're talking about? 80-pound braid to 100-pound mono. 100-pound mono? That's thicker than weed whacker string, dude. What is a hundred pound mono like this? Like as thick as a pencil? That's crazy. With an eight dot hook, the sharks actually fight a less hard, less, a lot less hard than you would think. Like pulling in a floating log and it runs now and again. Really? Like a shark would fight really hard. That's cool. That's crazy. Jeremy's never done saltwater fishing. He's a freshwater man. He said, I should have been using heavier. Heavier than 100-pound mono? That's dumb. That's crazy. I can't even imagine 100-pound mono. That's like the, that's got to be a couple inches thick for a line. That's nuts. That is absolute nuts. <laughs> garlic and cheese for trout. Apparently one of my teachers was listening. One of my professors at college was in my live stream. And um, he's a big fly fisherman. Ties his own flies and stuff. And apparently he was offended when I was talking about using garlic and cheese for trout bait. He said he was gasping for air. <laughs> I didn't know they were in my live stream. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I'm not... Anyone have you, has anyone here fly fished? We can talk about fly fishing a little bit. Um, it looks an art. 
you know, making the flies. It's a science knowing what flies to throw at what times and what, you know, matching the hatch or not even matching the hatch, just trying to irritate them, you know, whatever they're going to bite at that time. There's a science and an art to it. And then the actual fishing itself is an art, and you know, a lot of specific techniques and everything, but it, even casting it is hard and the fight is a lot harder. And yeah, fly fishing is a whole nother animal. Um, he does a lot of my professor does fly fishing in like, you know, places with wild trout. So he's not used to probably fishing for stock trout in a lake here in Missouri. So he's like, garlic and cheese. What the heck? Yeah. If I'm fishing for trout in the stream, out in like Colorado or something like that, I'm using spinners and I would love to learn how to fly fish. That's on my list for sure. Um, if anyone fly fishes or has any recommendations, fishing junk, you got any recommendations for someone like me? Who's like, I am honestly right now poorer than I've ever been in my life. I'm I'm used to having you know some money to toss around and do stuff with, but it's been a real struggle lately. I got like no money. So someone who's super poor, what combo, what weight, what fly um, outfit would you recommend me getting to to start fly fishing for trout, bass, and panfish? Let me know. Let me know, and I'll write it down. Jeremy said I wasn't live. My bad. What were you like commenting on something else? I've done that before. Where I've been at the top of the chat, top chat instead of live chat. Cable is what I should have used, but my cable was rusted. Cable? Use cable instead of line. Oh my goodness. NKR is two hook sets away from 500. Anyone who isn't hook set to NKR could be his 500th tonight. He was at 500 not, not that long ago, then he lost the couple. So hopefully we can get him back up there and then past it. Jeremy's going to try to get some spawning crappie tomorrow. Yeah, we got a, we got a few weeks for spawning crappie. Crappie bite's going to get really good in a couple weeks. Some places you can already get on them pretty decent. NKR, that's a great question. He said, how's your day, Sunfish King? My day's been good. Um, been really good. I didn't get to do any fishing today, so I woke up this morning. Try to sleep in, but I haven't. I've been getting terrible sleep lately because I wake up and I'm like, I got too much stuff to do, and it's hard to go back to sleep. So, I got up last night. I was supposed to film the giveaway video, but I actually spent like two hours going through every YouTube video that I've ever put out just to make sure that I got every person who entered the, the giveaway. So I ended up twenty something people, and then last night I decided I was gonna do. Um, I was gonna give away ten, you know, five items and then five shout outs. So I didn't even do the drawing until this morning, but I wrote everything out. Then this morning I did, the, I filmed it. I did the drawing. I um, started uploading it and realized that it was going to take forever to upload, but I wanted to put it out. So I actually premiered that, did my first ever premiere. NKR was there. A few other people were there. They joined in the live chat. Premiering is pretty cool. I might do that. Um, I really like that premiering thing. I might do that with some of my fishing videos where I premiere them at a certain time. And then what happens is it plays. You can't pause it. You can't rewind it until it's done. It plays and everyone's watching. It's like watching a movie with your friends. You're sitting there watching. Other people are sitting there watching at the same time. And then you can comment. So like if I – like I was announcing winners. When I announce a winner, NKR would go, dang it. NKR would go, dang it, because he didn't win. And then when I gave NKR a shout-out because he won a shout-out, he was like, oh, thank you so much. So like it's cool. You can actually live chat with the – I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried premieres, but it was cool. My first one of those. And then I had college. I skinned a – tiger salamander which was awesome that was super super cool i did a really good job skinning that took all the skin off of it and uh identified some muscles and stuff like that in my anatomy course if that sounds super weird to you it is what it is i'm a wildlife biologist so i do stuff like that in class and then um i came back here and just chilled for about an hour and then started this live stream probably should have ate beforehand too but yeah that's how my day went and it went well, and I'm glad. So how was your day, NKR? Thank you, Fish and Junk. I'm going to write that down. Thank you for helping me out, man. He said, if you want an all-around fly watt, five weight is good. You can literally get $20 five weight rod. So I probably maybe spent a little more than that. But I'm a firm believer that if you buy the absolute cheapest thing in the world, it might not be that good. But if you spend a little more, you'll get a little more quality out of it. But you don't have to buy, you know, something that's 500 bucks. Thank you, man. Five weight rod, you can get it for twenty plus dollars. And then you said, uh, 
if you go cheap on anything, get a cheap reel for fresh water. You can get packs of small flies fairly cheaply. It would definitely be fresh water. Yeah, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be anything for salt water. Thank you, man. Jaden Danger still in here or back in here? Luke Crane's going to take wildlife biology. Yeah, Luke Crane, are you more on the side of? Because when I was about your, when I was a little younger, what I wanted to do was more of the management and conservation type. And then I started my career or I started my college and everything like that, my academic career. And I kind of decided halfway through with some of the research I did that I think I want to be more on like the the research and field work and stuff like that. It's like either get a master's or a PhD and then be in charge of programs and out there like actually doing research and trying to find stuff out and find answers to problems as opposed to once I found those answers and said, oh, this is what should be done. This is what should be done. This is what should be done. Then you got the conservation agents, the DNR people who actually go and enforce that. They have the the uh, authority to go and enforce those rules and enforce those policies. They were decided by the the scientists behind it. So if you don't know that much, you just know you want to go into wildlife biology. That's enough. Because when I was, but when I was your age, I wasn't even hundred percent decided what I wanted to do yet. I spent like three years wasting, just messing around in college, um, taking the wrong classes. I took a bunch of classes because I wanted to be a writer. I don't know why I really wanted to be a writer. And then I decided that I want to be uh, like a businessman for a little bit. I took a bunch of business classes. And then after all that, I was like, nope, wildlife. And that's what I stuck with. Cause that's what I enjoy the most. Both would be sick. Yeah, for sure. They'd be very sick. It'd be really cool and interesting to be like a DNR agent or something like that. But there's pros and cons. You know, you ruin people's day and you, you come up to the lake and people are like, oh, running around, like trying to. But also, you know, a lot of the times you're actually doing good. and You're keeping the, the riffraff out of there and you're stopping people from poaching and stuff like that and helping, you know, maintain populations and stuff. Or even a uh, like a park ranger would be really, really interesting especially out somewhere like Colorado, Montana, somewhere like where you can go hundreds and hundreds of miles without even running into a person. And then you find some random person out there and you don't know if they're armed. You don't know what they're doing. It'd be a very, very uh, exciting job, you know, in a lot of different um, responsibilities with that. So that'd be cool. NKR, I've seen you before. I just give you a hook set. You only need one now. Thanks, Stan. MKR is, I think he's like 13, so he's, he's definitely younger. He's a little younger than Harrison, I believe, or about the same age. But he uh, he is, yeah, getting close to 500. He's on Fish Brain. Um, I did an interview with him not that long ago. I usually like to help and support people that I see potential in. And what the thing is with him is his personality. It's just his energy. Like, he's got a really good personality, and he's got – like uh really good energy in his videos and stuff like that like like he always ends his video with like guess what keep fishing you know like i really like the the personality i guess there's something about that that i thought was really uh charging and stuff for the for the um people watching it you know people would watch it and they would get excited too so personality is a big thing and uh it can help you retain more viewers and stuff like that rather than if you're like me right now and like monotone you're you're losing your voice stuff like that people might hop in here and be like oh this isn't that exciting but like an hour ago when i was like really into this stuff and talking really fast you know it might be a little different but i'll, I'll keep going as long as you guys want to keep going uh, i'm not as tired as i sound it's just uh, my, i'm losing my voice because i've been talking so long i'm i'm like uh when people are teachers and stuff like that and they have to talk all day to a bunch of different classes i imagine their first couple months to their first year of being a teacher they go through losing their voice all the time. And then after you've done it for years, I'm sure your vocal cords, your throat, whatever gets stronger, more callous, whatever has to happen um, for you to get better at talking for long periods of time. I hope that happens anyway, because I have professors that teach courses all day, people who do like talking all day on the phone and they don't seem to, they don't seem to have quite as many problems with losing their voice. The last two days um, I've actually lost my voice in the middle of my live stream because just talking too much, I guess. Even though I have a drink right here. Mm. Jaden Danger said, can I get a yeet? Yeah, if anyone wants to give him a yeet in the chat. Yeet, that's all I got. I don't have a lot of energy right now, but yeet. Yeet, yeet, yeet. What else we got? Luke Crane, my uncle is a Montana. Yeah, Fish and Jones said yeet. Luke Crane said, yeet. 
I'm getting. I'm going to meet marine biology. Yeah, that's cool, Luke. That your uh, uncle is a Montana game warden. That'd be an awesome place to be a game warden. Fish and junk's going to marine biology, which is, um, you know, biology for really any saltwater. Like it's called aquatic biology when you're dealing with freshwater. It's called marine biology when you're dealing with saltwater um, species organisms. He said specifically for sea turtles, most specifically the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Yeah, actually, what's what's interesting is I'm part of uh, one of the many clubs and stuff that I participate with is the National Center for Science Education. And we went to Warrensburg and we go around, we do these booths at different events where we teach teach stuff to kids and science and stuff like that. And we had a, a booth out in Warrensburg and we were teaching kids. We played a game where we had a bunch of little toy turtles and they had to put them on different place that they had to try to identify each turtle we'd have like a taxonomic key like okay so which turtle has blank for the tail has this color has this teardrop shape versus a round shell stuff like that and it was all sea turtles the kim's ridley was one of them um and yeah so they'd identify the different sea turtles and stuff like that it was super cool apparently the kim's ridley is the most endangered sea turtle in the world yep that'd be cool i got a friend it's it's a very stressful job to deal with uh, endangered species, especially because you got a lot of people who just don't care. They just have literally zero interest. They're like, I don't care about that turtle, whatever. Um, a lot of times, one species it really makes a difference in the whole environment. And once they're gone, then what they eat gets overpopulated, and then it, you know, eats all the vegetation. Blah 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 blah. So once sometimes extinction of one species is bad. Usually, it's pretty bad. Um, I got a friend who deals with the. I don't know if you've heard of the Topeka Shiner. They're so protected that you can't even like if you catch a Topeka shiner you gotta immediately take it off the hook and let it go like it's which they're really small you usually won't catch them unless you're micro fishing or something but you can't keep them you can't use them for bait you can't anything at all and my friends dealing with them and most people just don't care about the Topeka shiner so it's a very stressful job for him watching him have to deal with that so good luck but it's awesome 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 people want to help out stuff like that Harrison's back what up sharp Guys, if you haven't checked out my boy Sharp Fishing TV, check him out. We go live every single week together. Me, him, and usually Forward Fishing is with us. Uh, their links are in the um, description for this video, but if a moderator wants to share the link for them, that'd be cool too. Thanks for joining back in, Harrison. We're going on. We just hit the four-hour mark here. We just hit the four-hour mark, which is pretty good since I have literally nothing planned at this point. We're just kind of talking and chilling. We're at the point where you guys can ask me anything, any comments you want to make. Anything about YouTube outdoors, about fishing, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm, I'm on spring break right now. Spring break just started or starts tomorrow, I guess. So if you got any questions about my plans for spring break or anything like that, go ahead and ask. Um, and again, if this thing drops down to two or three people, I'll go ahead and end it. If we're still at five, six people, but nobody's saying anything, then I'm going to ask you guys questions and try to get some info out of you. So we'll keep the fishing discussion going as long as there are people who want to discuss fishing. A lot of times when I keep these live streams going this long, it'll go down to like three people, you know, like midnight or something in my time. And then randomly five, six people join. It's like they were all on a live stream that ended or I don't know what happened. They all got bored at the same time. So I've been I've been about to end like four and a half hours in and then all of a sudden like five people join. In and I'm like, yeah, no reason in this now. If people want to talk, people want to talk. And that's another thing. If I get the unlimited stream time, if I get to the point where I can do unlimited, you know, live, uh, stream yard and stuff like that to have guests in, that'd be incredible. Because then if I get one of these four hour live streams, I start to get tired and I don't know what I want to say anymore. But the people are still in there talking and it's a really good conversation. I feel like having somebody come in and be on the other side of the screen, that split screen thing, um, join the panel with me. One, it gives me a second to sit there and rest and like think of something to say while they feel the silence and keep everyone entertained. But then also it would just wake me up more to have somebody fade in my face to talk to, you know, I feel like it keeps me a little more on track as well sometimes, but you guys can let me know if I ever trail off too much or whatever. Sometimes I get sidetracked and uh, I will let you know that I have adult, uh, like adult ADHD. So I, I'm like, I think I've done really good so far, but it's very hard for me to focus on one topic. And one of my biggest issues I've had in my life is I will mention something. I'll start a topic and then I'll see that someone else has like said something else and I will totally go away from that topic and never come back to it. So if there's anything I mention, leave and don't come back, feel free to say, Hey man, can we talk more about that? You, you know, you skipped it or whatever. Cause I try to cover a bunch of different topics and sometimes I sound a little scatterbrained when I'm doing it. 
Jaden Dangerous, what's your favorite rapper? My favorite rapper was probably MF Doom. He just died. Rest in peace. He died at the beginning of this year. But probably MF Doom, if you guys have heard of him. That's probably my favorite rapper. Your, your uh, spring break starts in two weeks. Fish and Junk said, what's the biggest hook you own? I own a 12 aught circle hook for big sharks. Everyone answer Fish and Junk, what's the biggest hook you own? Um, Stan has 12 aught at least for big cats. I don't know if you have any bigger than 12 aught. That seems pretty, you know, pretty massive for a hook size. This is my, that's my back drawer. That won't have my biggest hooks in it. And this time, that's my multi-species drawer. Here's my catfish drawer, everybody. My biggest hook. Oh, I might have taken them out recently. Seven Ot. So you guys all got me beat. Seven Ot Gamakatsu is the biggest I have right now. Which I think these are good for live bait and probably cut bait as well. Let me know if I'm wrong, Stan. You're the catfish god in here right now. The catfish god. Oh, there's such a delay. <laughs> Such a delay. I'm looking on this thing, and I'm, it's still me standing there holding the holding the hooks. Sharp's two away from 350. Oh, man, congrats, man. Congrats. When I hit 350, uh, I was supposed to do the giveaway that I did today. It took me 75 additional hook sets to actually get on top of it. It pumps you up. Yeah, it does pump you up having another one on the panel. I agree, Stan. And I'm sorry that my chat's delayed, so you probably said that two minutes ago. But, yeah, man, it definitely does. Um, and I would definitely let someone come on right now, except for the fact that I'm on YouTube. I think if I keep – it's not unrealistic to think. If I keep doing these live streams and make them entertaining and stuff like that, that I think I could maybe get enough people to donate – to where I could at least get that $20, $25 a month and get the unlimited. You know, even if I'm contributing 5 or 10 a month myself, I think I can get helped out enough where I can make that happen. Two months ago, I would have been fine. I'm just, I'm on some hard times right now. Um, I haven't been working a whole lot. I work outside. The weather's been absolutely terrible. And then my boss has been going through some stuff where on the days where I'm supposed to work, he just won't call me at all. And so it's really getting weird. So I'm, starting to schedule some side jobs and mowing and stuff like that and you know doing a bunch of like just random hard labor and stuff but it is what it is you know you gotta gotta pay the bills fish later said the grass carp was delicious yeah i didn't see uh your answer how'd you guys cook that one up how'd you cook up the grass carp if you look on fish brain i'll post a photo of mine tomorrow said fish and junk a fish a picture of your what tomorrow your big hook or what I'll be ready for it, fish and junk. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, Stan. He said Biggie. Is that how far the delay is? Someone asked the favorite rapper forever ago, and he just I just got Biggie Smalls on here. Yeah, the big hooks I own, or the big hooks you own, that's what you're going to post on Fish Brain for sure. Yeah, Biggie's good. That's a hard one. <laughs> That's a hard one. That's OG, man. They are perfect. Live bait or cut bait. It seems like some people's chat's a little delayed and some people isn't. Like Stan's is coming through a little behind. It's fine, though. Fish layer, fresh water. Soy sauce, green onion, ginger. That's exact. So you basically kind of braised it, the grass carp. You did it like in a big pan and kind of did it with heat soy sauce yeah i was just telling people there's two good ways to do uh grass carp and that was one of them i said you can either brine it and smoke it or you can braise it with soy sauce ginger some people do salt and pepper some people do uh rice wine some people do like white wine some people do yeah you got ginger garlic um onions stuff like that definitely good Shark posted a video a few hours ago. I don't think I've seen it. I think I was getting ready for this. Is it a short or a full video, Harrison? Harrison got a new video coming out or just came out with a new video. Added some water to make a soup-like sauce. Yeah, that's how we did it. We braised it up. It was so good. Oh, my goodness. 
Harrison, that's what I need to get on. He's on a he's on a good schedule. He posts a new video every Thursday, and it was a full video. Wait a second. Today's Friday, Harrison. He posts videos every Thursday, but today's Friday. Thanks, Dan, for sharing that that link. That's my PayPal donation link. I think most of the people in here are um like like fish layer freshwater and Harrison, you guys are miners, so I'm not expecting you guys. Please don't donate to my to my fund. That's just for like adults and people who have jobs and stuff like that. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. You were a day late this week. Yeah, it is what it is, though. It's good to have a schedule anyway. I haven't uploaded a full video in a while. In a while, unless you count those little three-minute rap videos, which is like, eh, it's okay, but it's not. Apparently, Fish Layer is about to shout out Sharp on Instagram. Fish Layer, you know what you can do on Instagram? It's even better than a shout out. I mean, it is a shout out, but then it lasts for longer. Go to my page and look at my uh, highlights, my story highlights. So under my profile, and then it says my YouTube channel, it says my description, whatever. You'll see these circles, and one of them says Busta Fins, and it's got that Busta Rhyme songs with like a little shad sitting there rapping. That one's just funny, whatever. And it's got the, a one with a whole bunch of my YouTube advertisements on it. It's called, you know, Sumpish King YouTube. Then I got Multispecies Weekly, and it has the Multispecies Weekly advertisement. It tells people when it is every week and stuff like that. Then the last one, this is the one you need to look at, or I don't know what order it's in, but this one says YouTube Fam. You should do something like that. Where all you got to do is you got to make a story, and so you go to one of uh, you go to one of Harrison's like pictures, one of Sharp Fishing TV's pictures where he's holding a fish or something, trying to do a, you know a good fish, good picture, and then you click that little um, thing that looks like a a paper airplane next to the post, and then um, it, it'll let you post that, and you post it as a story, and you make it your story, and then you put it at the top like go check out Sharp Fishing TV, and then I usually link them to and say at Sharp Fishing TV whatever their Instagram name is. Then you share that post. And then once you've shared the post, then you go down, um, you got to go down under there and click one of those pluses with the circles, or I think you can hold the actual post itself. And there'll be something called highlight or add post to highlights. And so you basically you add it to highlights. And if you look at that one that says my YouTube fam, and I'm still adding to it. I got to add fat basses to it. I got to add a couple more people, but it's got like all the, the YouTubers that I work with that are on Instagram. And they all say, like, subscribe to this guy, subscribe to this guy. So when people go to my channel, they can click that and they can see all the guys I work with. So it's got Off the Hook is on there. Adjust into Fishing is on there. Uh, Dogs Boys is on there. Uh, Sharp is on there. Uh, you are Fish Slayer. I got a few other people on there. So just another way to support people and keep it on there. If you make a post or you make a, a story, those things are, like, somewhat temporary. A story is completely temporary. It goes away. A post is kind of temporary in that after that initial post, a lot of people never go back and click it again. So that's just a way to you know continuously shout people out forever on your channel as you like when people uh, review your profile to see if they want to follow you or if someone if you follow someone and then someone wants to go follow you back and they click on your profile to see what you're all about. One of the first things they'll see is my YouTube fan and see all those people that I'm that I'm supportive of. So just an idea. Well, that's cool that you're gonna that you're gonna shout them out. NKR just hit 502. Congrats, NKR. Fist bump through the screen, man. 500 is sick. I can't wait till I'm at 500, but I'm gonna I'm gonna earn it. What up, Sunfish Assassin? Thanks for joining us, man. You're in uh you're in Georgia, so it's like midnight where you're at, right? Am I right? Thanks for joining us in so late, dude. I'm tired here just thinking about it being midnight. That's impressive. He said he caught the same crappie twice today out of the river. That's impressive. I've caught the same green sunfish three times before, but it was out of a lake, and it was like you could see the rock that he went under and then catch him again. Catching the same crappie twice out of a river is pretty impressive. I did see, though, Show Me Creeks. If anyone's followed Show Me Creeks, this is one of those crazy things in the world. He was throwing – I think he was throwing weightless uh, soft, soft plastic crawls. He caught the same bass three times in a row like this bass was just an idiot it bit the same orange soft plastic crawl three times in a row it had like this clear mark on its side so you could tell exactly which bass it was three times I'm like, you gotta be kidding me 
it's funny too. He caught two. He caught it twice, and he goes, "There's not a chance I'll catch this same one again." He put it back, cast it out, boom! I'm like, "Oh my goodness!" I'm just learning Facebook. You need to learn Instagram and Fish Brain. Yeah, I, th I think Instagram and Fish Brain are the two are the two best apps for helping promote your channel and your live streams and your content and stuff like that. Stan <laughs> Harrison. He said, dude, you'll be at 500, I swear, next week. <laughs> I appreciate that. Sometimes it does feel like I'm growing that fast, but there'll be days when I go like five days and I lose one over the course of five days. So it's not like I'm growing super fast, but then there'll be nights where the most craziest one was after I put that Chow Amandine video that got 12,000 views. That video got me 39 or 38 subscribers overnight. So I went to bed, like I had 375. I posted the video that morning and it takes a while after you post a short for it to start getting promoted by the algorithm. And then it's so funny. The algorithm will just make it blow up and then it'll just literally let go and stop promoting it. Right right when mine got to 12,800 views, boom, just stop showing it to people. It was crazy. But uh, yeah, overnight I went from 375 and I woke up with like 414, 413. I was like, what happened? I got, got 40 overnight. And the craziest thing about getting 40 overnight is they all stuck except for two. I expected to lose like 15 the next day. You, it had a turtle cut. It had a turtle cut out of its tail. You mean a turtle bite? The crappie? That's how you knew it was the same one. It had like a turtle bite out of its tail. That's crazy. The one time I caught the same shark back to back, and I know it was the same shark. The hook I couldn't get out of its mouth for safety reasons was sitting in the same spot, same hook at all. Yeah, I've done that with bullheads. I caught the same bullhead. I caught a bullhead. I tried to get the hook out, and I was like, ah, it was just at the point where I couldn't decide if I wanted to pull it out or leave it. So I cut the line but left the hook just barely in. I figured he'd get it out on his own. And it was like the muddy creek after doing a bunch of raining and stuff, like a flooded creek, and I was catching a bunch of bullheads. End of the day, I caught the same bullhead again. He still had my hook in his mouth. And that time I was like, eh, I kind of changed my mind and decided to pull it out. And it came out pretty easy. So I was kind of glad I did that. Well, how terrible would it have been if I got a second hook stuck in that same fish's mouth? He's, like, he's sitting there trying to get that first one out. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, screw me, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you got 12K views on a vid. Yeah, I got 12K views on the short. Definitely cool. Shorts, shorts can get a lot of views. Thanks for sharing Stan's channel out, man. His link. Got some good mods here, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, Sharp's definitely got some growing to do as well. I think he's definitely going to grow some, especially as the bike gets better and he starts putting out stuff more consistently and we keep doing live streams together. And I do think we're going to continue to grow together, man. That's part of the plan of this whole thing. So let's just ride this out and see where this YouTube thing takes us. Just hit 350. Oh, yes. Congratulations, dude. I'm so happy for you. Seriously, so happy for you. Harrison, my man, just hit 350 subs. That's a good number. Fish Lair, do you? All right, so here's the thing with other accounts. They don't stick unless you actually use those accounts. Like... Backyard Boy TV has another account called Sam Broderick, and he actually uses it, and it's just in case he loses his channel, and he does watch stuff on it. So that hook set will probably stay. NKR has two channels, and once he's uploading on both channels, and he'll be watching stuff on both channels, those hook, set, hook sets should stay as well. But like I have, a, I have a channel that I've got associated with my school email. I have a channel associated with my personal email. When I first started YouTube, I had hook set myself on both those, and I actually went through and started watching videos and stuff. But after a while, I think they unhook set because I just thought I hadn't watched anything for weeks. I just gave up on trying to get people's second accounts and third accounts hook set to you because it doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? It just doesn't do anything. So unfortunately, Sharp, you might lose a couple of those that got you to 350 if they were just uh, Fish Slayer's extra accounts. They won't stick. So we're all, we're, we love hook sets. It's cool and all. Get to the number is cool, but we're all more about getting viewers and stuff like that. So hopefully you got 350 good viewers. He said he does use them for different stuff. Okay, cool. That'd be awesome if those could stick. Let's see. Got you to three fifty. 
Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Stan said you guys will be seeing more of me for sure, man. We love having you in here for sure. One is a vlog channel, one's a music channel. You just do everything, Fish Slayer. Famous, bro. All right, Fish and Junk's got to head out. Yeah, if we do end up ending this thing, because it's 11-something my time, if we end up ending, ending this and uh, you try to come back and it's over, I apologize. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, I'll be live tomorrow at 730. And I'll be live Sunday. What I'm really – tomorrow is going to be a great conversation. I feel like it's going to go for hours and hours and hours. Uh, and I hope that we get a lot of stuff discussed. And I hope, I hope too many people don't come in there just thinking that they can just say, hey, everybody sub to me. Hey, everybody sub to me and just get some free subs. Because that is not at all what the plan is for tomorrow. Not at all. It's to share some actual good advice about how we can, uh, how we can all grow and make better content. Because I don't want to help anybody who doesn't have any interest in constantly improving their content. That's what it takes. You got to be doing that along with all the other stuff to grow. So I'm excited for that, but I'm really excited for Sunday. I don't know what that fishing trivia is going to be all about. I'm excited to see who wins. I think what I might do, I might ask some general questions about fishing, just fishing stuff. I might ask some questions about fish, like, like easier biological questions. Like I won't ask you like super hard biological questions, but I might ask you, you know, stuff about difference between this and that stuff like that. Then I might ask some questions about my channel that, you know, like the only the true supporters would know and stuff like that. Definitely, definitely uh, got some ideas of questions to ask. I'm excited for that. That should be good. Sunday at seven 30. Fish Slayer said, I could still go for hours. It's only nine. Is that a challenge, Fish Slayer? This is a, we're at four hours and 20 minutes on this live stream right now. Sound like a dang challenge to me, bro. What up, Cast and McCast? Doing it big with these live streams, liking them, brother. Thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Check out my man, Cast and McCast, um, for sure, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm, when you got a YouTube channel, uh, the thing is, so when it comes to fishing and outdoors channels, right? How many fishing and outdoors channels do you think there are? Because, uh, you know, when I was on Fish Brain, I was like, dang, there's a lot of fishing and outdoors channels. Then there's the ones on YouTube you don't see from Fish Brain. There's a bunch more. Then you get on Instagram, you realize how many people out there have a little YouTube link next to their name, and they are holding a fish in their picture. So you know their YouTube is probably about fishing. There are tens of thousands of fishing and outdoor channels out there. And the one thing in any type of any topic of channel that you got you have to be known for something or stand out in some way. If it's just, oh, there's another guy who catches fish and posts it, you're not going to stand out above other people, you know what I mean, and have ha and be known for something. I want to be known for having really long marathon live streams. I think that'd be cool because I'm like not everybody can do it, and I have the ability to keep these things going for a long time, even when I literally have nothing planned because I had nothing planned after my mystery tackle boxes at all tonight, and we've gone – probably just as long as we went with the mystery tackle boxes afterwards, just chatting. Um, but I also want to be known for like having really good, uh, really good discussions and really like supportive people and like a really good fan base and stuff like that in my live streams. I think that'd be awesome where people who don't know me have never been in a Sunfish King live stream could hop in the middle of one of these, meet 10 new friends, have great conversations, get a couple of pieces of advice that can help them with their fishing and then give some advice to them. Feel like they helped. That's like the whole experience right there. You join in, we have a good discussion, we keep it friendly, you make some new friends, and then next time you're bored on a Friday or Tuesday or something like that, you got nothing going on, and then you see that notification, oh, Sunfish King is going live. I want it to be like a cool place you can just come in and have a good time and chat. And the biggest thing, not there's no judgment here, there's no, there's no haters. I block haters as soon as I see them. I haven't dealt with that yet. Uh, it's just a positive place for everyone to talk about fishing outdoors and whatever. So Jake Martin just joined too. Oh my goodness. What's up, man? Jake Martin. I always forget what time it is where you're at. Are you in mountain time? Yeah, I think you're in mountain time, right? Central time, mountain time. One of the two. Is it an hour earlier there? Are you at, is it 10 7 for you, Jake? It's 9 7 for fish Lair. He said run a seven hour marathon. LOL. That would be three more hours. I don't know if I could do a seven hour marathon. This can be a five. I can, this live stream can definitely go to five hours. We can do this another 30 minutes. He said, you got to be Stan's 13 hour marathon. 
Stan, was that you talked about that? Was that a, just a discussion? Were you not even fishing, or was that a fishing one? Jake said twenty nine hour marathon. Yeah, I'm not doing a twenty nine hour marathon right now. But I did like your idea, Jake, for trying to do like a long marathon in the future. If I can work that out with uh, battery on my phone and all that different stuff. Jake said 10. It's 10 o'clock for Jake. It's 11 o'clock for me. So you are in mountain time. Mountain time is the best time. Fish layer, freshwater. Sunfish King, what is your longest marathon stream? Five out. Sharp, how long did we go? The first stream we ever did. He was not expecting it. I was not expecting it. It just happened. Was it five hours and five minutes? Five hours and ten minutes? It was the longest stream ever on YouTube is 259 hours, 46 minutes, and 45 seconds. But it wasn't just one person sitting there talking the whole time. Yeah, he just did a fishing talk show for 13 hours. All right. No, I've never striper fish, but anyone else? Yeah, I know. How do you, how do, you do 259 hours unless different people are coming in? Or the guy just sleeps and no one cares. Everyone's in the chat. just The chat is popping off while the dude's just knocked right there for like eight hours. <laughs> that would be so hilarious. But, but uh, okay. It's easy to talk when awesome people are listening. Yeah, I don't know about it. It's easy to talk for 13 hours even when awesome people are listening. That's I can't believe you did that. 13 hours? Did you like leave at any point of it and – have someone else. You just sat there for 13 hours straight. I'm thinking how many bathroom breaks and food breaks I would need in 13 hours. That's nuts. That is nuts. So, yeah, I'm going to put that down right now. Here's a goal of mine. I have to beat a 13-hour live stream. I'm not going to go for, like, the 200-whatever-hour live stream you said. But, yeah, if I can beat Stan – because how am I going to be known for marathon live streams if I don't do actual marathon live streams? Yep, I got to do a 13-hour one this summer. Jake said ever striper fished. Harrison has. I've caught two white bass, but I've never caught any stripers. I don't think there are stripers near me or anything like that. What up, snags and drags? Thanks for joining in. This live stream, if you can believe it, we just hit the four hour and twenty six out four hour and twenty six minute mark. So we're we're doing this thing, man. We're going for a marathon here. I opened two tackle boxes, then I went ahead and opened a third tackle box, showed everybody everything inside. I've already gone over like the top couple baits out of all of them several times, but I guess I will show you snags and drags. Um, you like catching bass, man? I think you like catching bass. What do you go for, snags and drags, um, on your channel? Because I honestly, I got so many people that I follow that I'm getting people mixed up right now. I don't want to, don't want to confuse you with someone else. But I will show you the top two bass baits that we got just for fun. Sorry, everyone who's already seen them; they're super cool, and I'm showing them again. There's there's five mystery tackle boxes here. This is nuts. Top two bass baits that we got. Oh, yeah, look at that. The Biospawn Rattlebot in Red Crawl. Pretty nice right there. That is a $7.99 set crank, so $8 crank. That's for you, Snags and Drags. Pretty beautiful looking crank. And then I got a uh, Chatterbait. A, what do they call it? The Clicker? No, the clickbait. Guggen Squad clickbait and sexy shad. So that's $8.99 chatterbait right there. And I got plenty of soft plastics to go with them in my last couple tackle boxes. So that's for you, snags and drags. Wanted to show you my top two uh, top two lures that we opened tonight. And if you're still in here, snags and drags, join us next uh Next month when we do the same unboxing, because sometimes you get crazy stuff like that bull, that, that bull gill. It's a $15 bait. Did not expect that to be in there. Okay. Give the guests the link to the hangout. Apparently, you could stream on YouTube with guests. What do you mean? Give the guest the link to the hangout. 
I'll share the link, but I don't think it works. I'll share the link, but I don't think it works. There it is. If anyone wants to test it out, Fish Layer, you can test it out if you want. That'd be cool if it works. That would be mind blowing. I didn't know if you could have guests on these. That I knew it. I knew it, Stan. Yeah, I didn't think so. If you can figure out a way, Fish Layer, let me know. But yeah, I didn't think you could do that. I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I think you got you got to stream through uh, Streamyard or I don't know if Streamlabs can do it. Maybe. <clears throat> so, Stan, what do you say? Sorry, I need to get a drink. <clears throat> Stan, you said uh, the live will keep going, but YouTube will only post 11 hours and 55 minutes of it now. I had people up on the panel. So are you saying, yeah, no, people can't join, unfortunately. Sorry, NKR. Um, yeah, I want to get unlimited, guys. I want to get unlimited. I just need to get some more people who are willing to donate a month or, or a dollar or two a month. And then if I can just get that, I'll make it happen. Or if I start making more money, I'll make it happen, too. So that's my goal is to get unlimited live stream on um, StreamYard like Stan has, and then I can have people on here anytime I do a live stream. That's the goal. That would be ideal. So, yeah, no matter how long you do a live stream, even if you do a 200 and something hour one, Stan, are you saying that at the 11 hour and 55 minute mark, it it just stops it? Like YouTube has a 12 hour limit for videos. It won't let you go over 12 hours. And Kara, we already talked about this. You already know the answer. You already know. Is anyone live right now? Does anyone know? Snatcher's done by now, isn't he? This thing was like... Oh, yeah. That was like five hours ago. Yeah, no one goes live that long. Yep. Let me know if anyone knows if anyone else is live right now. But I'll just keep this thing going. Um, NKR... Yeah, you'll get your sticker, man. NKR, um, actually, now that you're here, let's talk about this. You got options, NKR. Do you want one of the fish stickers? I'll send you one sticker. You got to choose wisely. Do you want a fish sticker? Do you want a Sunfish King YouTube production sticker? And just because it's hard to see because it's white, it'll show up on – you just can't put it on something white. You got to put it on something darker. Or third option, do you want my super cool Sunfish King logo – my alternative logo sticker right here, which is also hard to see, but it looks super cool. It's got a little fisherman down here. So that's up to you, NKR. Do you want fish, Sunfish King Productions, or the, the logo thing? Oh, NKR wants a fish. What color? What color, NKR, you want? The America one? Can you screen share on YouTube? No, that's what we're talking about. You can't. You can't do anything. It's just it's just me here. Until I get unlimited live stream on StreamYard, it is just me. I can't have people on. And Carol, you want America? You want green? He said America. All right. Show you the rest of the colors in case you change your mind. But yeah, and Carol wants the America one. Awesome. Pink. Orange. And purple. So you want the America one, right? There, most patriotic sticker ever. And yeah, it says Sunfish King up there. Cass said black, blue flipping jig with bandito bug trailer or watermelon red flake crawl text rig. Yes, sir. America or teal, your choice. I'll give you the America one, man. I'll give you the America one. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to try to send that out uh, in the next. I will send it out in at the most a week from now. If I, if I can send it tomorrow or this weekend, I will. I can't do it Sunday because the, the post office closed. So I'm either going to send it tomorrow or sometime this week. And it just depends on how busy I am. So NKR, as soon as I send that out, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Popping out all the options for the stickers. Yeah, I didn't even show off this one, but that's because I'm not, I'm not giving this away. This one was a little more expensive. But, yeah, I got plenty of stickers going on. Shameless self advertisement and self promotion, guys. I don't care. 
But yeah, I got all those stickers for sale. Here's my email, guys. If anyone's interested in supporting the channel, but they want to get something out of it. If you want to support the channel, but you don't want to donate to the PayPal link because you feel like you're just getting nothing out of it, which you will get something out of it. You'll get me streaming more and having people as guests and eventually getting a kayak. But those are the ways that people can monetarily contribute to my account. And if you don't have the, the means or the funds to monetarily contribute to my account, Please don't worry because I don't care. I just want you guys to contribute by being here. That's that's all I really want. I want you guys to be here in the chat. That's the most important thing. NKR, if you wanted to, you could send me two. I'm going to send you one, bruh. They cost – every one of those stickers costed me money. If I was rich, I'd send you 100. But, yeah, you'll get your, you'll get your uh, USA America fish sticker. Put it on your tackle box. Put it wherever you want it, whatever you want to do with it. It'll be all yours, NKR. You ain't got to pay for shipping or nothing. <laughs> he said, I'm so excited. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yep. Let's see. So, that's awesome, dude. You're the best. Uh, Sunfish King, he said, are we buds or friends? Yeah, we're buds, dude. Definitely. Appreciate all you guys being on here for sure. So, does any of you guys who are in the chat right now, he said MTB is definitely worth it. Yeah, especially when you get like one of them bullshit things. Like, I mean, bullgill, not the bullshit. When you get a $15 bait in a tackle box that costs $15 and then four more baits with it, it's kind of hard to not be worth it. Wish we could collab one day. Maybe we'll find a way to do it in some video or something. No, I don't have PS4. Hard hat by diesel jig said casting with cast. Um, which one? Because this is a hard hat by diesel jig. This football jig is a hard hat jig that I got rigged up right there with a bio spawn, vile crawl, and sprayed grass. I don't know what color they call this though. This <coughs> combo, I think. Oh, no, I do know it's Okeechobee crawl. That's Okeechobee crawl right there. I do know. I'm just being dumb. But yeah, this is my hard hat jig. And then I, oh, wow. This thing looks like I've been using it for months. And I've only taken it out twice. It is all nicked up from rubbing it on the rocks. Yeah, and then I got a, uh, I got a flipping jig also by hard hat diesel jig, whatever. I haven't thrown the flipping jig yet. I just, I was working the football jig recently. But yeah, this should be money this type of year, this time of year. For sure. And then what I was throwing for finesse stuff for that. Oh! There goes my. I always got to knock over a rod in the middle of my live stream. I was doing like a Ned Rig type of crawl, hopping it along the rocks. Ooh. And that crawl, I didn't even buy. My friend just gave it to me. And the, the net head and everything. So I don't know what brand or anything it is. My friend Dallas, Bassman Outdoors. If you guys aren't following him, check him out. We're going to be doing some Sunfish King and Bassman videos. We tried to make one the other day. I need to save some footage from it because it was freaking hilarious. Our, our dumb butts went out in the neighbor's boat when the winds were 50 miles an hour. And we got immediately blown all the way to the side. My friend Dallas, he's just casting. I'm sitting there humping with my feet because it's a stupid little paddle boat thing with a flat deck. So it's a pretty good boat when it's not, you know, super windy and stuff. He's just casting. I'm like, dude, I might need some help. He just keeps on casting. I'm like, come on. So yeah, we had to pump our legs and get like all the way back to the dock and it took forever. And then we're like, all right, we're bank fishing today. So it ended up being kind of funny and stuff like that, but we didn't catch anything. So probably won't end up seeing any of that footage, but we got some fish king and bass man stuff coming out soon. That's the plan. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's hilarious. Let's see. NKR, we could do an interview style stream if you want to at some point in the near future. Yeah, I mean, you know what else I was thinking, Harrison? I got a lot of people who ask him for interviews, and a lot of them are people who I don't want to have like full interviews with, but they're people who I wouldn't mind having for a few minutes. And we could do this with you, or I could just do it by myself. I really don't care how, how to work it out. But I want to do something where I allow anyone to come in the chat, and then they can say if they want to be interviewed. If we don't know them, then we won't let them in. But if someone, if it's someone we kind of know, we'll, you know, let them know the rules, no cussing, no controversial stuff, no being mean to anyone. And then we'll let them in for like, you know, two to five minutes at a time. And they can just, we'll ask everyone the same thing. Like, 
tell us about your channel tell you tell us what you got planned and then what do you want to tell the people and then we can go on to the next one so that's an idea i had to let you know five ten people in the same live stream come in and introduce their channels and feel like they've had you know their chance for an interview but obviously we can't possibly give like an hour long interview to all these different people and stuff like that but that's an idea that sounds good we can work on that okay jake said i would love that yeah jake i'd like to have you on if you plan on having a a channel at some point that'd be cool if you ever want to do it or you can just stay in the chat it's up to you no one has to come on so is anyone in the chat besides me and uh cast and cast subscribe to any mystery tackle boxes this is <laughs> what up, real RC fishing. This is another person asking if we fish for striped bass. Hey, man, where are striped bass around here? There, I caught two white bass at your spot at the Blue River. I can tell you exactly what hole they were in there in that really deep hole in between the in between the uh, the red bridge and then all those piles of sticks and stuff down there. So in between where you would catch the little flatheads and stuff under the bridge, and then further down. There's a big hole with like no trees or nothing in it. And if you work like a crank or like some jigs or something through there, um, there's definitely, definitely, or a spinner, there's definitely white bass in there when, when it gets warmer and when it's the right time of year. Let's see. Cass has been stuck at a seven pound bass here in Texas for years. I've never even caught a four pound bass, dude. Freaking Texas bass getting all giant for no reason. Harrison's, I've, I've gotten three stripers. I bet they fight really good. Let's see. Stan has done the open mic night type thing. Okay, yeah, how did that work out? Um, was it good? Did you have any issues or anything like that? That's that's what we'll call it. Yeah, open mic. So we just come on here. Um, we'll leave it. We'll let people in one at a time. It doesn't really, it's not really cool to have like four people in at once. But yeah, maybe me and Harrison could host it. Um, I hate to say like, don't let forward fishing be part of it because he's part of our multi-species weekly. But I think that at the most we should have two hosts, you know what I mean? So that there's only three people talking at once. It gets so crazy. Like multi-species weekly. I almost don't want us to have guests very often because it's, you know, it's really hard to have four people in there at once just with audio and talking over each other and stuff like that. Three is a really good limit. Every once in a while you can do four, but yeah, do the open mic thing, have one or two hosts. So either me or me and, uh, sharp and then yeah we can have people in for two to five minutes at a time and we'll just have like maybe three basic questions we ask everyone like tell us you know why you started youtube and tell us about your channel example uh tell us you know if you have anything planned any videos coming out whatever and then some third random question did you hear about the murder down in the blue river in february yeah everyone tells me when i go down there that uh that i'm gonna catch a dead body was it near where we fish, RC? Harrison said, I've gotten three mystery tackle boxes. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to keep getting two every month for the next few months, and then I'm just going to keep opening them for you guys. Hopefully, I can make some mystery tackle box like videos and stuff, like challenges and catching a bunch of fish on them. No, I don't think I heard about the murder in the Blue River. I'm still going to fish there anyway. I'm not sure my folks won't let me. Go. Oh, they won't let you go down there to fish anymore. That sucks, bro. But at least that's it's more fishing for me, less pressure. What's crazy, I, I'm going to start bringing my, my 380 down there. Fish layer, wait, what? I just want to get a drink of water. We're talking about uh, the place that I fish. Somebody got killed near there or something like that. And so the re our, our RC fishing in the chat, that's the real RC fishing from Fish Brain. I guess his parents or whatever won't let him go fish down there anymore because someone got killed i run into a bunch of homeless people there and stuff like that but i haven't run into anything worse than that so i'll just bring my pistol with me in case anything happens but it should be fine most of the people i've met down there at the river have been cool actually but i will be careful i'll keep that in mind because i don't want to end up being murdered in the river or anything like that it's an awesome spot though besides the murdering and stuff good fishing spot Harrison's got dog walking money. What do you got on your list of stuff to get? When you say more gear, are you talking fishing wise or filming wise? 
Mm -mm. I didn't need dinner, man. I didn't need anything before this live stream. I thought I was going to have time. That's why I scheduled it for for 7. And then I changed it to 6.45 like an idiot for some reason. I got home at like 5 something. I was like, oh, I have over an hour. Took a shower, put all my stuff away, did some stuff. And I'm like, oh, wow. Now it's like 6 o'clock. I only had 45 minutes. And then, I don't know, time went way too quick. I didn't eat dinner. So all good fishing spots are usually very unpopulated. Yeah, it makes for good fishing. I definitely to stack up on more line. Oh, you want to stock? You definitely need to stock up on more line. Yeah, I, I advice I'd give and stuff, especially like fish slayer still uses the cheap line. After a while, you just, when you catch enough fish and you're doing it for a while, you won't be able to do it anymore. That cheap line stuff sucks. It just sucks. NKR said 39th like I am. What do you mean 39th like I am? Something's going way over my head there, NKR. I'm not getting it. But yeah, I did not uh, I did not have dinner, so I'm sitting here eating cheese and crackers for a snack. I wanted something I could grab quick. Maybe a new combo? For what? For bass? For catfish? I'm going to try to stop eating on here, guys. Sorry. I apologize. I talk with my mouth full and stuff, but there's these things called like basic human needs, like food and stuff like that, unfortunately. Feel ya. Just used up my last bit of floor. Great. Yeah, I'm going to need to buy some. What do you guys recommend um, as far as line for throwing cranks and jigs, your basic bass tackle? Hard baits, stuff like that. And even what do you recommend for throwing soft plastic? So go ahead and comment, guys. Let's talk about line for bass, um, for bass baits. I'll start off if you're throwing if you're throwing top water, let's not we don't even need to get into that because I already know what I'm doing for top water. I'm using 50 pound, 50 pound braid. And then if it's really dark and I don't want them to see this, then I'm I got a, like a dark green version too. So 50 pound power pro is what I'm throwing for top water. What are you guys throwing for cranks? What are you throwing for jigs? What type of what type of line? Because I'm just now getting to the point where I want to throw what I want to, you know, the right thing. Like last year, I was fishing with like mono or just some basic fluoro for like everything. And I didn't think too much about, oh, this line's gonna stretch. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't even use a bait caster at all last year. So all my bass were on spinning. So now last year was my first year ever fishing. And I was serious about it, but I wasn't serious like I am now where it's like, I want to get to where I have like three or four different bass rods for different types of baits, which I only have one right now. Um, I, I take that back. I have several spinning rods that can be used for like finesse and stuff like that, but I have only one bait. Caster. So let me know what line you guys like to use for different bass baits, because I would love to learn. Power pro Jake, are you just talking about for you throw a braid for cranks and stuff? Or are you talking about top water? Let's see. Cranks fluoro because it sinks and has stretch. Yeah, I would definitely throw – I'd probably throw fluoro with all that stuff unless I'm wrong, like with, with jigs, with um, cranks, stuff like that. And then I don't know. Here's some 17-pound fluoro. That might be a little thick. Might do closer to 12 or something like that, but 17 would probably work. It's just weird. 12 pound flora with 10 pound mono, four foot leader. Why does everyone do leader? I'm not doing leader, guys. <laughs> it's too much work. I want line that I can just tie on. Everyone has to do a dang leader. It's crazy. You guys all like doing way too much work. I don't I don't tie uni knots. I don't do any of that crap. If I'm doing a leader, it's gonna be like a two foot leader with a swivel on there, and it's gonna be for trout fishing or cat fishing or something like that. I don't like the leader, guys. I'm sorry. Too much work. Maybe in a couple years when I'm getting more serious about fishing, will I do all that stuff? But I'm not going to hook up with the first big bass in like two freaking months and then lose it to a failed knot because I had a leader to a leader for no reason. I just don't. I don't agree with the leader thing. Good night, NKR. See you later. And I appreciate the advice. I'm not saying like, oh, that's not good advice because I'm sure it's great advice. I just. I have no interest in tying a leader unless I absolutely have to. 
to me, if I'm doing a leader, it's going to be a swivel. I'm not going to tie a leader to a uni knot and do all that crap. I have zero experience with it, and I just not a fan of tying line to line to line to line to line. If you have braid main line and you want to throw a crankbait, that's not going to work out. You're going to need a fluoro leader most likely. If you have braid main line and you want to throw a crank, that's not going to work out. Why not? Can anyone see this comment? Ryan B. What up, Ryan B.? He said, can anyone see this comment? Well, I can, Ryan B. Try all bright, no pretty simple. 40 likes, that's awesome. Try all bright, not pretty simple. I can, but I just don't. I've never had a reason ever to tie on a leader for bass fishing. Haven't needed it. Haven't needed it. I will if I need to, I guess. And I'll, I'll write some of this stuff down. But I like to keep it simple, guys. I don't like to do all this extra crap if I don't need to. I caught 400 bass last year, and I never once in my life used a leader for bass. So I would like to get better, and if, if I find out that that's, like, what I need to do, then that's what I'll do. But He said him and Backbone made up. Oh, you guys kissed and made up? That's good, man. <clears throat> as long as everyone's getting along. I just don't like the... And next time, if you guys are going to do a little arguing stuff, that's fine. Just not on my live streams. That's all I ask. I get it. It sucks at first, but you won't regret it. Okay. Apparently, I need to start tying leaders on and stuff, guys. Do you go to Central Missouri State? It's called UCM. University of Central Missouri. It hasn't been Central Missouri State for many years. Bass can see braid. Bass are line shy, so you'll get more bites with leader if you're using braid. Hmm. But for topwater, would you you'd want the whole thing to be braid, right? So there's no stretch at all. My thing is, why would you use braid for bass unless you're doing topwater? And then if you're doing topwater, then you're just using the entire thing, the entire thing braid, in my opinion. In my opinion, you're either you're either throwing braid for bass or you're throwing fluoro for bass. But I know you guys know more than me. So I'm just trying to understand why and everything. Speaking about self-defense on a fishing rod. Speaking about self-defense on a fishing trip, a seven foot medium heavy rod, a one ounce football jig and some trebles will do. No, it won't. That's why I got my pistol with me. A rod ain't going to do nothing if someone has a gun. Ryan B, it's smashing that bass. Oh, what's up, dude? Ryan Bright? My comments are not showing up in the live chat under my YouTube channel name. Really? That's weird. Everyone check out my man smashing that bass. This is Ryan Bright from uh, Fish Brain YouTube. He's one of the first u fishing YouTubers that I actually started watching. Very cool guy. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know what's up with the comments. Just I would say make sure you're in live chat, not top chat. And besides that, I really don't know. Sorry, man. But I'm glad you're in here. And stuff so uh ryan tell us do you do you use leaders ever when you're fishing for bass do you ever go from from braid to a leader and if you do what what type of base do you do that with why we're just talking about a uh, line for different bass baits and stuff right now or you said do you yeah i go to missouri i go to uh Whatever we said, UCM, University of Central Missouri. They just gave me a hundred dollars for some of my research. Just a hundred bucks to put in my pocket. Pretty cool place. Braid serves as a good backbone. Use braid for heavy cover. Yeah, but do you use a leader? Is what we're asking. Like my thing is, people are telling me to use leader and stuff, and I'm saying I'm using braid if it's like top water, heavy cover, heavy cover, um, punching baits, stuff like that. If I'm trying to yank them through heavy cover, but I'm not doing a leader. I'm just doing straight braid. And then if I'm doing cranks, jigs, something like that, it's probably going to be fluoro, right? Without any braid on there. That was the point I was trying to make. And this is coming from someone who doesn't, is not a huge bass fisherman. I'm just a multi-species fisherman and I need more experience with the bass and everything. Braid and heavy cover. Yeah, for sure. I just, I'm still trying to get down the reason why you would need, uh, why you would ever need leader, but that's fine. 
Nine more minutes to five hour marathon. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, yeah, if we go over five hours and this will be my longest live stream, that's cool. It's not just you. It's every live. Try to go. I'm going to try to figure it out. Just haven't got there yet. What kayak are you planning on getting? Let me see. Um, I don't know exactly. Let me see. Fishing kayaks. I don't have any money for one now. It's if people if people actually donate to my kayak fund, then I'll be able to get one. If not, let's see. This one looks pretty good. So delivery is what's going to get you. Tractor Supply Company has one for three hundred dollars. I don't think that's the one I was looking at. Yeah, it might be actually. Did I see it bigger? Let's see, it looks like it has three rod holders on it. Yeah, so it is the lifetime angler fishing kayak. I mean, maybe I should get go a little more expensive than the absolute cheapest one I can find. That one looks good too. There's a little more expensive one, but yeah, for two ninety nine ninety nine is the lifetime fifty two pound sit on top fishing kayak. And then there's the lifetime Teton one for another hundred bucks. I don't think I'd go any more than like four hundred dollars. For a kayak. I don't use leader. I'm saying use braid for heavy cover. Can you take the chance of snapping the line? Yeah, I always use braid for, for heavy cover and top water and stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't use leader either. See? Smashing that bass doesn't use leader. And he catches nice fish. Have you already unboxed, said Bob Gray? Yes. And unfortunately, I, I keep showing off the top baits and everything that I unbox too. So I don't think I can. Unfortunately, for the people in here, if I were to show the baits again, I think they would just get, lose interest and leave. Um, unfortunately, Bob Gray. I guess what I can do is probably this will be the last time, guys. Sorry for showing these baits again. But I'll show you the top two baits one more time. Sorry, guys, for showing you these again. But this is for Bob Gray. This is for you, Bob. Thanks for joining in. How's your night going, Bob? You do any fishing today? So this is, is $7.99 value. It's the Biospawn, uh, what do they call it? The Robo Rattlebot, sorry. The Biospawn Rattlebot, and it's in a red crawl color. They have eight crawl colors and eight bait fish colors. And this is what the package looked like that it came in. Biospawn Rattlebot Crawl. It's just a, just a lipless crank, but it's got a very interesting uh, design to it. And that's an $8 crank right there. And then the, the most expensive bait from this one was the Guggen Squad click bait, which is just like a like a chatter bait. Got a big oversized blade to keep it um, fished pretty low. And then it's got a really nice painted head with the Guggen logo on the eye. That's a $8.99 bait right there. It's called Sexy Shad is the color. It's four hot hook on there. And it's a three eighths ounce chatterbait. So we got a couple other good things too, but I just showed everybody it. But that was just a sneak preview, Bob. And then you can rewind, or once this is posted, you can go back and watch the replay if you want to see what all I opened. Because I opened actually three tackle boxes in this video. And then if you join us for one of the next ones, we might get something else like this. This was last tackle box unboxing, $15 jointed swim bait. With Mike Buka Bullgill. So sometimes we get some really exciting stuff in there. I got an awesome topwater popper that I don't know if I have. Uh, it's probably I got in my car or something. I doubt it's, I doubt it's in here. I'm almost positive it's out in my car. So I, I can't really show you guys that one. But it's the Guggen uh, blooper or whatever it's called. It's a topwater popper. It's a nightclub. So it's like black and green. Super cool one. So we have 40 likes. Is that correct? 40 thumbs or 39. I got the bullgill last time. Yeah, I got the bullgill last time too. I'm wondering if they're like the same and stuff like that. You like that chatterbait? Yeah. What would you use? What would you use as a trailer with? We'll show it one more time. I'm curious, Bob. I want to know, man. What would you use if you could throw anything for a trailer for this? So we had, what have we said? Someone said white and silver speed worm, which I think would be a really good color combo. Someone said um, a speed crawl trailer. They didn't really give any color, so whatever color would look the best. Or 
one of the things that actually came in the same tackle box, which would be kind of interesting. Um, where are they at? Where are they at? Where are they at? Somewhere. Where are the soft plastics? Some of these little beaver, uh, or I guess they're called the little otter, not the little beaver. The three inch little otter by uh, Gambler. Those would be okay on there. The color's a little weird. And then there's another thing of soft plastics that came with it. It was the. Oh man, where are they? There are these jointed, um, I think they're in here. These jointed soft plastics. So these things came with them too. And that would that'd probably be a somewhat decent combo, I believe. Let's see. Bob said, I just put 750 down on a canoe. Frontier 12 with spot lock trolling motor. Can't wait. Oh, oh, I mean, not that wasn't. Sorry, that was Ryan B who said that. I got that mixed up. Ryan Bright put 750 down. So Frontier 12 canoe. I'll look into that. Yeah, I'm more spending. I'm more trying to spend like 300, 400 on just a nice fishing kayak at this point. Frontier 12. No, go away. Go away, Google. No one asked you. Frontier 12. Oh, wow. The new canoe Frontier 12 fishing kayak. Wow. You spent $750. These ones say they're $1,300. Oh. That thing looks stupid nice. Yeah, I can't wait to see that, man. You can make a video when you get it. Yeah, exciting stuff. I definitely want that kayak, but money is... Not coming easy right now. I have a PayPal link in my description if anyone's interested in help in supporting the channel monetarily. But I totally understand if you're having money issues and don't want to do that. So my goals with that is I'm trying to get a fishing kayak to make my channel and my content a lot better and more access to more water and stuff like that. And also, I'm trying to get you guys to help me or some of my supporters to help me pay for my monthly subscription to uh, StreamYard. So I can do more fishing live streams because I only have 20 hours a month at this point that I can do on StreamYard. Right here is unlimited, but if I want to do it from my phone or if I want to have guests at all, I'm, I'm limited. So those are my goals. Those are the goals. Harrison said, Kai Tech, let's put that down. I want to write that down. Harrison knows what he's talking about. I know. So with the clickbait, he said, Kai Tech. Are you a Kai Tech guy, Harrison? I feel like you've said Kai Tech before. Swim Impact. Or the Biospawn. Let's see. Eco Swim in a pear color. In pear. Okay, Harrison. Getting specific with it. I like it. That's what he would pair that with. 40 thumbs up. That's great, guys. That's probably a record for me. If you guys haven't hit the thumbs up yet, please hit it. Ryan said, that looks good, man. The red crank should work good now and in the springtime. Yeah, I should probably go out and start throwing that red crank now. I just got that today. I was throwing – um. so these are the two red style cranks that I have been throwing out in the creeks. Or out in the lake, I should say. and haven't been getting a whole lot of, whole lot of luck with it. Ah, it's one – dude, you guys don't understand how many tackle boxes I have. Oh my goodness. Of course, fourth time's the charm. Here we go. I've been throwing this red crawl crankbait, but I mean, lipless cranks have been doing a little better lately. So maybe I should try that instead of the, the square bill type deal. That's like a shallow diving crank. And then also, especially more over the winter, I was throwing this wiggle wart, which it's got bearings in it got like a wobble to it when you when you retrieve it and then it also makes a rattle those are the two cranks i've been grinding with and with very little success okay oh exo swim not eco swim okay 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 i thought eco swim sounded weird i was like what does it swim and save you money it's the exo swim <laughs> that rattle bot 
hot sauce is nice. Is that what they call that color is hot sauce or, or are you just like saying that like slang? Cause it says rattlebot crawl, but I didn't see what, um, to me, I didn't see a color on the package. It didn't say what they called it. Let's see. Jake spinner bait with a Kitek trailer. What was that answering? Are you just saying that's fire just in general or what you would throw right now? Lose American Hero combo. Thanks for supporting vets. Yeah, and I, dude, honestly, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I love supporting the veterans because they make it so that we can, you know, support a free country and stuff like that. Anyone down to defend the country? But um, what's awesome is not only did I buy this with my American, I don't know if I told you guys, I'm in the American Fisheries Society and I'm the vice president for uh, Warrensburg. And we do this event where we get some veterans together, disabled veterans and stuff like that. We have a fishing day where we go fishing with them. And then we also have a day where we take out seine nets and we teach them different like uh, collecting techniques where you go and seine the, the river or the creek and you get little bait fish and you get little fish for like science and research and stuff like that and fish to put in aquariums. And it's pretty cool. Just get um, get veterans out there in the field and just get, get their mind off different stuff and give them something to do and help people meet each other and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm all about stuff like that, man. Let's see. Jake likes to RC sexy shad square bills. Let me write that down, Jake. I'm running out of paper space to write stuff down. So let's go. With, and are you guys just talking about like pre-spawn baits or just baits in general for bass? Just what you guys like. Like when would you throw that type of stuff? Let's see. It's a sexy shad. I'd probably throw a shad closer to like fall because the shad start dying way earlier than all the other fish or even over the winter. We don't have a whole lot of shad and a lot of lakes around here. So like the only time you can do super, super good imitating shad is when they're like dying and stuff like that. We don't have a lot of shad. Let's see. RC sexy shad square bills. And I'm not going to lie, Cass. That's honestly my only bait caster that I have. Still in the learning process. Here. You ever do any live night calf fishing videos? No, I'd love to do that here in the future. And we were just talking about like doing like an all night live stream calf fishing video or something. The issue is, Bob, I have about two terabytes of video that I need to edit right now. And I just every time I want to edit, I either do a live stream or I have homework or I, just something happens. So I don't see myself having a night free. Like anytime it's nighttime for like this entire summer, I'm probably going to be trying to edit if I have the time to edit or doing a live stream. So I've kind of got, you know, like a live stream discussion or something. I've kind of got to the point where I would have to really hard work that into my schedule because the night times are the times when I have free to edit and do stuff like that. The daytime I'm either in school or in work or fishing. I don't know if I can work it out. I will, but no, I've never done one. I've never even, I'd have to have a bunch of lights and stuff. I know those guys all have it all figured out, but I'm at the point where when it starts to get dark, I either leave or I stop filming with my GoPro because it, I haven't found anything that films well at night unless you have the whole area lit up. So I need to talk to some of these people who do these live night catfishing and find out how, you know, different tips and tricks and then probably try to work one out. I'd love to do it. Let me know if you guys would like to see something like that. Um, the best catfishing spots around here, I'm not going to lie, there's not a chance I'll go to at night because they're all like through the woods with a bunch of homeless people and stuff like that. All the spots that I've found. So like the river spots, way too sketchy to go out there at night. The few times I've been out there and it's gotten dark, it's been absolutely horrible walking back. Super scary. So yeah, I haven't found any good safe catfishing spots yet besides like the lakes around here, which, you know, if you want to see me catch five pound catfish, then yeah, I can fish in the lakes around here. But I don't think people want to see me catch five pound catfish. I think they want to see me go in the river and go for monsters. I haven't found any spot in the river that seems like a safe place to go at night yet. I'm jealous of people who have stuff like that. <clears throat> Fish and Junk said, you're still live. Nice. Yes, sir. Have you fished Lake Jacomo or Blue Springs Lake? Did you know Lake Jacomo? I'm pretty sure. Has the Missouri State record uh, channel cat. Like 32 or 34 pounds, something like that. 
I'm pretty sure the state record channel cat is out of uh, Lake Jacomo from like the 70s. I've never fit. I might have fished Lake Jacomo or Blue Springs once. I think when I first started fishing, I went out there. I had no idea how to fish, so I didn't catch anything. I had no idea how to fish. I went out there with my whole giant cooler, and I brought all this stuff and everything like I knew what I was doing. I banked fished for like two hours while my dad rode his bike. I didn't catch a dang thing. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know anything about fishing. The only time I went out there. So let me know, RC, if you uh, if those lakes are good or whatever, if you catch a lot of stuff there. I'll have to go back and try. Ryan, I'll make a video. $3,100 total on the water. Oh, my gosh. I don't even – I can't even fathom $3,100 right now. That's more money than I've seen in one place in quite a while. I used to be really, really good about – like, I. there was a point where I had – there was a point where I had like $14,000 in a safe in my room just from like work and just from saving up money and selling a bunch of my stuff. And oh my goodness, I don't know what happened. I went like a little while without working and I just used that to pay for everything. And I bought a bunch of crap. It ain't good. I'm poor, guys. But Stan, like he said, he said, we fished the James River for Big Blues and Flathead. Sorry, guys, I'm way behind on the chat right now. Um, so, yeah, check out Stan if you haven't. They do awesome uh, fishing streams. Oh, yeah, he said, that's awesome. I'm a vet for bad. Thank you for your service, man. I didn't. I guess I somehow didn't know that, or maybe I did know that and forgot. But thank you so much for your service. You need to try the Strike King Rage Tail in the color to match that chatterbait. Okay. The Ra Strike King Rage Tail with that uh, with that Guggen Squad clickbait. Something in like a shad imitation color. For sure. Do that. Ryan Bright says, to throw the Strike King Rage Tail. Rage Tail. Okay. A lot of trailer... Uh, options for that thing lot of trailer options let's see fish layer freshwater talk about fishing and health benefits um getting outside is good for your health fishing is good F eating fish is good for you it's hard to be doing bad stuff and getting yourself put in jail when you're out there fishing. So it keeps you out of trouble and that's good for your health. So yeah, that's why fishing is good for your health guys. Let's see. Snags and drags is back in the house. What up my dude. And then, um, Cass is still currently serving. So yeah, thank you, man. We appreciate you. Thank you and Stan for your service, guys. I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. If there's any vets in here, thank you for your service. Yeah, Ryan's showing respect as well. Sexy shed and bee killer. Since I can't fish at the river anymore, I might try either of them. If I catch something cool, I'll post it. Awesome. What up, Funkin' CT? The Funkin' CT just joined us. How are you doing tonight? Catch any fish today? You got any plans for fishing over the weekend? My spring break starts tomorrow, and it's going to be rainy. If you're in the right spot in a lake, you can catch big cats in lakes. Well, it depends on if there are big cats in those lakes fishing junk. Can't, you can be at the right spot in a wrong lake and not catch nothing. 80-pound flatheads is the biggest in the lake. I yeah, I have to travel quite a while to get to a big lake, man. My lake across the street has five pound catfish in it. US, 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 US. Fish layer is one away from 60 hook sets. Congrats, man. Getting close. I recently did a live stream with Fish Layer. We just kept it friendly and talked about fishing and stuff like that. He was celebrating 50 hook sets and he's almost to 60 already. So he's growing at a good rate as well. Keep on working, bro. Keep on working. Oh, that's so weird. All right, so Cass, on my, on my phone, your emojis work. It shows three thumbs and then three American flags. 
on my computer because I'm looking on my phone and the computer right now. On my computer, it shows three thumbs, and then it just says U.S., 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 U.S. It doesn't show the uh, the American flags, which is super weird. Funkin' CT did some sight fishing today. No beds, just a few small bass visuals. What is the weather there in, uh, I'm guessing you're in Connecticut. That's why it says Funkin' CT. So what is the weather like there in Connecticut, in CT? Yeah, I don't know why, Cass. I don't know. It just says U.S., U.S., U.S. <laughs> Either way, it still works. I got the I got the message either way, man. Let's see. Oh, I got a lot of people trying to send me messages right now. Oh my goodness. All right, guys. Anyone in here uh comment your PB bass and your PB catfish, any species. Let's hear it. Fish slayer. Fish and junk just hooks at you and got you to 60. Bro, fish and junk, fist bump right here, man. Appreciate you helping out the Sunfish Squad. Thank you, man. For real. Connecticut warmed up like 65 degrees. Okay. We got to 70 here in Missouri a couple days ago. It was dumb windy. Like literally dumb windy. I don't know what the heck was going on. The second it stopped being everything frozen, it got nice for a few days. But the whole time it was like, literally, I've never had this much wind here. It's crazy. It's like 50 mile an hour winds. I tried to fish. My buckets and baits were blowing all over the place. It was crazy. And then the second that was over, now it's pouring rain for a few days and we're down to 40 again. So water temperatures were rising and now they're going back to cold again. Everything's getting flooded, muddy. The fishing's not going to be great, but I'm still going to grind and see what I can do. I've still been grinding to see what I can do. Um, but yeah, anyone who didn't hear me, go ahead and comment your PB bass of any species and your PB uh, catfish, any species. I'm, I want to hear it. And I'll let you guys know what mine is. Catfish, it's embarrassing. I don't want to talk about it. And then bass, it's just under four pounds. Fish layers, PB bass is one ounce. Um, Jake Martin's PB bass is 3.8 pounds. And a 14-pound channel, that's a monster channel, bro. My biggest channel is definitely smaller than that. Cass is out. Yeah, again, thank you for your service. I didn't know that, man. Appreciate that. And um, Thanks for being in here for sure. Join me at 7.30 Central Time uh, tomorrow. We we'll talk about talk about YouTube channels, content, fishing, all of it. It's going to be good. And then Sunday, guys, we're doing trivia. Doing trivia night Sunday. Anyone who could join us. I don't know how that's going to go, but I'm just going to be positive and say it's going to go fantastic. The real RC's biggest largemouth was 4.4 pounds. You got to tell me where you caught that, man. Flathead, 11 pounds. Got to tell me where you caught that, man. Funkin' CT is new. Yeah. His biggest bass, maybe four pounds. Catfish, maybe seven pounds. That's Both of those are bigger than mine. So I don't want to talk about it. PB bass is 1.8. PB channel is T pounds. T pounds. Okay. PB Blue is 16 and a 40 pound flathead. Wish I had caught the 80, but I know they're there. 40 pound flathead. What were you using for bait for the 40 pound flathead fish and junk? What were you using for bait? Because we have some big flatheads in a couple of the lakes, but they're like, I have to go like an hour away in Kansas or something like that to get one of those big flatheads or try the river spots. Fish and junk said five. I mistyped. Five pound channel. Yeah, me too. I'll just tell you guys right now five pound. That's my biggest channel cap. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. I'll tell you that five pound channel cat fought like crazy. It was on a minnow too. Live minnow. Random. Stan is blowing everybody away with a nine point freaking three ounce smallmouth. Oh, largemouth. Sorry. Whoa, I was about to cry. That's still insane. Nine pound three ounce largemouth. Six pound smallie, which is a tank smallie. Fifteen pound channel cat, which is like state record in some states. 57 pound blue cat. Oh my goodness. And then a uh, flathead 54. That is nuts. That is nuts. Stan, what's the biggest catfish you've kept in eight out of all those? Have you ever kept like a really, really big catfish and tried to flay it up? Just to be clear, I started off with a sit in kayak from Lifetime, $200 from Walmart. And fell in love with the kayak bass fishing, so I upgraded to the canoe twelve. Sit in is that like is that like the sit on or 
is that like you're actually inside it, right? Because the ones I'm looking at are like just the sit on flat deck ones. Um, I want to see what if anyone knows anything about those two hundred ninety nine dollar lifetime kayaks. If they're any good, or if I'm just gonna be wasting my time. I think they'll be pretty good. Dirt tracking thirty one gaming man. I'm a sad boy. No replies to my comments. Can you see my comment, please? I need to know. Yes, I can see your comment. Um, <clears throat> just because I didn't respond to it. He said, not a lot of luck. Six pounds is my PB catfish, my bass, at least four pounds. Nice. The bass was in Lock Lloyd Lake. They snuck in. And the flathead was in Lake of the Ozarks. Oh, my gosh. Was the flathead on a – did you catch it on line and pole, or was it on a uh, – Jug line, trot line, something like that. Fish and junk was using a live white bass. That's highly illegal in Missouri. Personal. Yeah, that's freaking nuts. That is nuts. Fish and junk said, Stan, can you, Stan, can you show me the way? Yeah, watch. Go check out uh, two stands and watch his live stream. So he'll show you the way, man. He'll show you how to catch big cats. Got to go watch his live stream. So he's doing – Stan, aren't you doing one? Yeah, Sunday morning. He's doing. He goes Sunday morning at uh, what is it? Eight eight central. Check out Stan Sunday morning at eight central. I believe. I think it's every Sunday morning goes live. So yeah, check out his streams. He releases all big fish. That's how I am with the really big ones. Except of course, my biggest fish ever, forty one pound carp, died on me. Sharps checking back in again, just seeing how things are going. Well, we're at five hours and nineteen minutes. So we, I beat your record, Sharp. New longest live stream. Got you beat, boy. Got to step up your game. Step up your game messing with the Sunfish King. Hey, um, I release all big fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Biggest cat you've kept is about 8 to 10 pounds. You usually keep 3 to 5 pound channel catfish. Did you notice anything? And the biggest cat you kept was 8 to 10. Was that a channel catfish or was it a flathead? And uh, what was the taste like? Did you notice the taste was any different or the meat was any tougher or anything? I know people say that like bigger catfish aren't good, but I imagine 10 pounds would still be pretty good. Like that 40 pound carp I ate was still good. I didn't even think a carp would be good at all. It was just the way my aunt cooked it. I cut a crawfish with a net. Does that count? No, that's not a catch. That's just playing around in the creek. And there's not that that's not cool. You know, that's super cool, but yeah, it's not fishing. Just my rule. My rule for fishing is I consider fishing anything you caught on a line and pole. So I don't know where I put jug lines and stuff like that on there. They're not really fishing. Um, and then like with my micro fishing out in the creeks, I had a bunch of people, haters on fish brain, who thought that I was going out there with a freaking net, netting them up. And they're like, why are you posting pictures of these? I'm like, zoom in. And they zoom in and see that I'm using a hook this small, size 26. And I hooked it barely through that minnow's mouth, just dinking it around. Super fun. Then they're like, yeah. So like, I consider if you catch something on a line and pole, it's fishing. If you catch something with your hands or you catch something with a net, it's not really fishing. Just playing around in the water at that point. Still fun. Sharp says, Stan is a living legend. <laughs> Fish, though, you probably got hook sets from every state. I don't know, but I've got some people from Indonesia and some other countries and stuff like that, which is really cool. Every Sunday morning, we got confirmation. They fish the James River live at 8 a.m. Eastern. Every Sunday morning. I knew that. I just wanted to make sure I was right. So check him out. I went skinny dipping in the creek. Big mistake. Big mistake. Oh, did, it, did you catch a crawdad with something besides a net? <laughs> you get a little pinch somewhere? Yeah, I went out today. Caught two bass. The only day I caught bass on the baits that I painted myself. I used the Mega Bass 110 plus one Jackal Rearrange and KBD Jerkbait. Yeah, Ryan, I suck with jerkbaits. I got to get better with jerkbaits. One of your first videos I saw, you were throwing jerkbaits and killing it. It was like uh, um, maybe not one of the first, but one of, one of the longest ones I remember ago. You were throwing some type of trout-looking jerkbait thing, and you were catching bass on it out of that little pond. So that was cool. It looked like, and I commented on it too. I was like, man, jerkbaits look like my style because it was just like a twitch, twitch type of thing. I don't know exactly how you were popping it, but it was kind of like how I used uh, like little crappie jigs or whatever. It reminded me of that, but something about the jerkbaits. I'm not a huge fan of grinding with them. 
Dirt Tracking tried to say something, but his message retracted. Let's see. I would rather whoever fishes with me catch the biggest fish ever. That's how I am a lot of times. You get to the point where, I mean, I'm still super excited to catch a bunch of fish, but I'm starting to get to the point where I like, like the other day I took my friend who, he said, we went creek fishing and we were just catching chubs and shiners just because it was between classes and we wanted to have fun and whatever. I took him out of the creek and when we when he got to seven, he ended up catching 10 or 11 chubs and shiners. When he got to seven, he goes, this is the most fish I've ever caught in one sitting. I was like, dang, man, that's crazy. And uh, I told him if he rolls with me, well, I'll get him a hundred fish in one day. You know, I've done stuff like that before. So that's just getting, it, it was like his catches were more exciting for me. I was sitting there filming and I would just stop like messing with my rods and I would like put the camera over on him because it was just exciting to see him catching fish that he's never caught before. I took him rainbow trout fishing for his first time and he loved it. Um, I was, I probably caught 10 fish that day. He got three, but those three he caught were more exciting for me than anything else. You know, I love, I love taking people out and having them catch either their first fish or have a fire day or something like that when they usually don't just new experiences and stuff like that. Super cool. <clears throat> Sorry. My throat. I don't typically weigh my best. I need to start doing so. Yeah, I would. I would because then when you say it was a six pounder, it makes it easier for people to believe if you actually did weigh it. There's a lot of haters out there, bro. You'll catch a nice fish and they'll be like, two. That's a two. A lot of haters. Fish layers telling us these are his keep standards for bass. Oh, his keeping standards. He said he keeps a bass if it's 1.5 to 3 pounds. Dude, that's way too big of a bass to be keeping, in my opinion, man. Those, those are the bass you need to leave in there to become hogs. Crappie perch, 3 to 18 inches. So any. <laughs> so any. Catfish, one to 10 pounds. Okay. Bluegill, three to 12 inches. So, any. So, yeah, you'll keep any fish, is what you're saying. Fish layer saying you'll keep anything. As long as it's not like a fry. Why would you keep a three inch fish for what? You can't use live bait there. I guess cut bait. Stan, we just did a live premiere last week of a 50 plus pound flathead that Stan three caught a couple weeks ago. And I love the family aspect of your channel, too, dude. Um, my brother fishes every once in a while, and my brother in law fishes. And I'd love to get them on my videos at some point. But, yeah, I just can't do family fishing videos because I don't have kids at this point. My dad doesn't fish. My mom doesn't fish. My sister doesn't fish. My brother fishes, but he lives 30 minutes away. And my brother-in-law fishes, and he lives with my brother 30 minutes away. Quick question. I chirped in three hours ago, but I was just checking. The content stream is tomorrow, right? Yeah, Sniper. I'm going to make it sometime in the morning, and it's going to be for 7.30 at night, the content stream. Yes, man. Bring Come in with a notebook to take notes and come in with some questions. Let's see. Third tracking went trout fishing. I was in a rock. Busted my tail, got clothes soaked. My mom said, don't get wet, and then got soaked. Went home naked, and my phone was dead for two, for hours. PTSD. What? <laughs> That's a fishing story, bro. Two stands fishing. A lot of times on our live, I'm fishing from the bank, and Stan is out in the kayak. Yeah, that's cool when you guys are doing that. Pretty cool. Just as like a father son thing, even not even for the live stream, just so you can be like checking in on him and like it's cooler than having a phone and him calling you and being like, Hey, I just caught one or something. You can actually see it on the live streams. So that's super cool. I'd love to do something like that with somebody. My phone keeps going from from landscape to portrait. So sorry guys. Good night, sniper of spades. Thanks for joining in. And uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow around 7 30 uh, central for that live stream. That'd be great, man. Where are you going to be? Where are you going to be hit cover? That's why I got the spot lock bowling motor on the Frontier 12. Yeah, spot lock is awesome, dude. Jake wants to know what everyone's biggest carp is. He knows that I'm going to go get the picture and show it off. What's everyone's biggest carp, says Jake. Yeah, RC, I'm going to do that right after I rent a private jet and uh, and a yacht because I got all the money in the world. 
I'm not going to rent a house on a lake, dude. What are you talking about? I ain't got money. I'm confused. So, like, your brother-in-law lives with your brother, but he and your, but and he your sister's husband. I'm confused. Yes, my brother, my brother-in-law, and my sister all live together 30 minutes from here because my brother is like 19, 18. No, he just turned 19. Um, he just turned 19 in February. So he is fresh 19, and he's living with my sister, who's 20-something. So he hasn't moved out and got his own spot yet. I was, like, kind of living in, like, at one town over with my friends for a while when I was younger. But now that I'm going to college, I'm back here with my parents in this house for a little bit. And then I'm actually about to move out in the next couple months, I think, unless uh, unless I wait a year or wait a semester to go to college for uh, graduate school, for like master's school. So I'm not sure. I'm living in with my parents right now just while I go to college here in Missouri. I thought about moving out a couple times, but it was like, why would I move out here and get into like a house and start paying stuff for like one semester when I'm just going to have to go um, at least a few hours away for the next school I go to. So I got a deal worked out where I'm kind of paying my parents a little bit and I'm just staying here. At this point right now. So I'm like, yeah, I'm the 25-year-old dude who's living with my parents right now. Kind of weird. It is what it is. College be like that. So, yeah, um, six-pound carp says fish layer freshwater. You got to say the species. You can't just say what pound. So what was it? He didn't get a weight, though. Oh, it was a two-pounder. I'm just joking. Um, oh, Wow. His 11-year-old granddaughter's PB is 30-pound blue cat. That's freaking nuts, dude. See, that's why I wish I had parents and stuff that fished. If I had parents that fish, I'd have a big old PB like that. Let's see. Say something about rent a house on a lake. Yeah, I can't afford a house on a lake, man. 15-pound carp. I mean, I can do a species challenge without renting a house on a lake. <laughs> What do you mean by species challenge? Let me know and I'll do it. 15 pound carp, that's huge. Um, that's pretty chill. I wouldn't mind living with my family at that age. I mind it. I mean, I wish I want my own place. I'm 25, but I'm just living with them because college and stuff like that. Y'all definitely beat me on this one. Biggest carp is maybe nine to 10 pounds. That's still a good one. Do you, do you catch carp stand and use it for bait ever for catfish? Catch your own carp and do that. I saw people hating on you. Don't worry. It's all about sharing your experience, enjoying your time out there. 42 pound common. Yeah, Jake, you had to beat me with the 42 with the 42 pound carp, man. At least my grass carp's bigger than yours. 40 pound grass and 20 plus pound mirror. Common carp, not even a pound. Fish layer, some fish can you sound tired. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not even feeling tired. It's my voice. My voice is literally 100% gone. It's gone. This is this is as much as I can. It just doesn't sound right. I hope it's back for the content creator live stream tomorrow. But, yeah, I like I have just maybe a little less energy than I had earlier, but I'm feeling all right. It's just my voice is gone. That's all it is. And once I run out of monster, I have to start drinking water. Yeah, I'd say I'm a little tired, but yeah, I can keep this thing going. We got five and a half hours in. Keep throwing those jerk baits, man. I'm telling you, they will catch you bass. I was throwing the trout magnet jerk bait, and they were killing the bass. All right, guys, let's talk jerk jerk baits for a second, and then actually first, I'll show you my biggest carp since we were talking about that, and I like showing off, and then we can talk jerk baits. So I'll do the same thing I did the other day. This one was just over twenty, a couple pounds over twenty. Skinny grassy boy, but this thing was like a freaking torpedo. Man, if it was going crazy, that's the third biggest. Second biggest, and this doesn't even count because I caught it by by hand. I didn't catch it by uh by rod and reel. I put a tiny little trout net over its face and just grabbed it with my hands from a kayak. It almost dragged me in the dang water. As you can see, I'm struggling just to hold the dang fish. That's what's crazy is the fish is only thirty pounds, and I carry eighty pound bags of concrete for a living all the time and somehow some about the the shape of it or something makes a 30 pound fish like 
literally hard to hard to hold. And then my biggest one, 41 pounds. That light's a little bright, but yeah, 41 pounds, 40 pounds and 15 ounces. So just one ounce off of uh, 41 pounds. And I think that's my Facebook profile. But yeah, those are all grass carp. All grass carp. The biggest comment I've got is only six pounds. It's six pounds even. I got beer for tonight and tomorrow. You're about to make me dig into my beer for tomorrow. Yeah, dude, honestly, it's crazy. Uh, before college, I definitely used to drink and stuff like that. It's the opposite. Like most people drink a lot in college. I started college and it's like, I will go out with friends on like a camping trip or something. And like we did some camping stuff back before all the COVID stuff started when college was like way more fun. Cause you could go on trips with people all the time and do all this camping stuff. And we did some awesome trips out in the woods and I probably, I drink a lot, like three days in a row, just drinking a bunch of freaking beers, hanging out with dudes, fishing and chilling out in the woods and going out in the boat and stuff like that. And, uh, then I'll go like two months where I won't drink anything at all. There'll be nothing in the house alcoholic. I mean, my parents all have stuff, and but like, I just won't touch it. It's just like, it's not that I'm trying not to. I just, I don't do it. And then randomly I'll hang out with people and then I'll just go, go right back to, so it's weird. It's like, I, I rarely drink, but when I do, I like drink 10 beers and chill with everybody and keep up with everyone else and stuff. It's crazy. Let's see. Um, so yeah, I haven't, it's been a, been a couple weeks probably since I've drank anything at all alcoholic wise. Trout magnet jerk baits, they were killing the bass. So let's talk about jerk baits for a second. And sorry if anyone's saying anything to chat and I'm not getting to it because I do want to talk with Ryan while he's here. I didn't know that Ryan Bright would be joining us tonight. Super awesome. Thanks for popping in, bro. But I'm going to, um, this is the thing I meant to show you earlier. This is not a jerk bait at all, but I meant to show you guys this. What do you guys think about this? Top water popper, the Guggen Squad. I've been trying to show you guys this for a while, but I didn't know where it was. I got this in my last mystery tackle box. It's two and three quarter inches, and we will get to jerk baits in a second. I just want to talk about it. Three eighths ounce. It says the cupped mouth, feathered rear treble, glaring eye, and ribbed rumble strips on the underbelly combine to form a vicious topwater bait with a uniquely enticing blooping sound. Cast the blooper tight to cover for slower, more subtle topwater presentation and prepare for a blow up. I am going to catch some dang fish on this thing. And it's got lime green and black. And the color's called Nightclub. That's what the color combo is called. Oh, we'll talk. I want to pull out a couple of my jerkbait type things and see what Ryan thinks about them. Um, but we have, like, I got some things that I want to address. He said, like, you are going to go to sleep any moment. No, I'm definitely not. I'm not even close to tired right now. That's just what my voice, I guess my voice sounds that much different than normal just because it's gone. My voice is gone, but I'm cool. Mostly some smaller carp. They make awesome catfish bait. Oh, I'm way behind on the chat. That was when I asked you if you keep the, oh, damn. 10 pound yellow tail. I'm way behind on the chat. I'm just sorry. I'm skipping a couple guys things. Um, Jake asked, let's say you see a 29 pound bass. There's no 29 pound bass. All right. Let's say you see a 29 pound bass. Jake said, what gear are you using to catch it and what bait? 29-pound bass? You want to have a good, good strong rod and some good, strong line. Um, big baits, big fish. Probably throw the world's biggest swim bait and try to get that thing to chase it. I guess it depends what time of, time of year it is, Jake. That would kill at night. The, uh, the nightclub thing? That top water? I don't think I've ever thrown top water at night. That sounds actually really exciting. Has anyone in the comments done top water at nighttime? I don't mean like as it's starting to get dark. I mean full on night throwing top water. The smallest speed in my box in the latest line. What time is it for y'all? Says Fish Layer Freshwater. Well, I'll tell you, um, Fish Layer, I know for you right now it's 1020. Because you are in Pacific time. For, for Jake, it's probably 1120, I would guess. For me, it's 1220. For Stan, it is 120 a.m. Where are you where are you come from, fishing junk? Ryan, where are where do you live? Um I'm trying to remember. 
I'm going to be way off. Where do you live, Ryan? It's like Pennsylvania or something. I have no idea, dude. You've said it in your videos and stuff, I'm sure. And I'm just terrible. So, Ryan, I'm guessing it's Eastern time, but I could be wrong. 12.22, so Fishing Junk is chilling in, um, chilling in Central time with me. Jake's never caught a fish on top water at night. Me neither. Fishing Junk said he has. Yep, so it's Eastern time for you, Ryan. 121. You're coming from Galveston area of Texas. Yeah. Hey, Fishing Junk, you should do me a favor and check out my man, Justin 2 fishing on uh, YouTube. He's part of the Sunfish King squad. He's definitely uh, part of the family. And uh, he catches some really nice bass and stuff out of Florida. I mean, Florida, out of Texas. And his, uh, his thing is he's always going and buying and trying out the brand new um, – like Guggen baits and name brand baits and stuff like that. Like he threw the headhunter by 10,000 fish the other day and he was getting some big old hookups on that. Definitely, definitely tries out like brand new, awesome tackle and stuff. So you should check my man out. Throwing a live shad, a shiner or a bluegill in front of that 20. I like how he said 29 pound bass. <laughs> yeah. Respect Stan. Throwing, he's throwing some big old live fish in front of that, getting it to bite. I was going with the same idea with a big old swim bait, trying to imitate a big live fish. But yeah, you might just be better off doing the real thing. You need to com commit to jerk bait fishing for bass. Don't be scared. Okay, yeah, let's turn this conversation back to jerk bait. If you keep this going, I might be the last one on here. LOL says fish slayer. Yeah, because you're the only one who it's only like 10 o'clock for you right now. It's almost one for me or 1230. But yeah, let's see what I have for jerk baits here. I'd probably have, I would guess, two total jerk baits if I were to look through all these. But let's see what they are, and then you can tell me, Ryan, if they are hot or not, and if I need to buy more. But go ahead and comment, guys. What are the what are the best jerk baits, or what are your favorite jerk baits? I found one thing that I think would, you would call a jerk bait. And then here's the. I think those are probably my only two things that you would, and I don't even know if they are jerk baits. I would guess they are. Let's see. Ah. I'm just making 100% sure, guys, that I don't have anything else that might be effective in the jerk bait category. No, well, I'm fresh out. All right, so are these things, one, are these what you would call jerk baits? And two, are they any good? We got these Rapala things. They don't even look open. They look they look kind of old and not even open. So what are these things? What are these? Are these jerk baits, guys? How do you work these? What do you do? Jerk bait. I'm the old school original Rapala. Is this what you're talking about, Stan? When you say old school Rapala, or is this like a newer type of Rapala thing? Fish and junk. Fish is shallow, three to four six foot a lot in salt water and don't use jerk baits yeah i don't know nothing about salt water if i if i was going to salt water fish i would go out there i'd rent someone else's gear so i'm not destroying mine and i'd probably just throw out some shrimp because i have no idea what else you can use like i would do a bunch of research first obviously but if you plop me down right now in some salt water i'd probably throw out some raw shrimp just assuming that would work good because that works good for everything rapala makes some good baits still are these jerk baits <laughs> it says calls it a original floating balsa wood lure oh it's a wood this thing's made out of wood what the heck it's wood i can't even open the dang thing ah! it is a it says swimming depth three to five foot it's three and a half inches it literally won't open i don't know how you're supposed to open these dang things this is what we're rolling with guys i don't think this thing's ever been opened I'm pretty sure this is the first. Yeah, it's definitely never been opened. Look at that. Brand new. Didn't know it was going to be unboxing some wars today. What do you guys think about this thing? They look kind of old. He said, yes, that is exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so Stan likes these things. You guys think I could, could catch some good bass on these? Suspending jerk baits could be good for pre-spawn right now, depending on where you are. What do you mean by suspending? Is that a certain type of jerk bait? Are you talking about putting one under a float like you would suspend a a jig? That's exactly what I was talking about. Sweet. Floating jerk baits are good when bass are active and aggressive. Yeah, this one says floating on it, and then this one says sinking. So I don't know the difference. I mean, obviously, I know what floating and sinking is. It just 
I don't know the difference in working them, when to throw them, stuff like that. This one's also a lot smaller, I've noticed as well. So are these both jerk baits for bass, or is one of these more for something else? Because it's so small. Fish and Junk said the hooks look cheap. The hooks look cheap on Rapala's. How do the hooks look cheap? What do you make? Where do you get that from? Where do you get that from, Fish and Junk? I'm, I'm in like 240 quality right now. I don't know how you can see how cheap the fish, the hooks look. Jake Martin, work those guys slow when it's cold and windy or just cold. Fish layer. Jerk baits have three types. So is it floating, suspending, and then sinking? Is that what you're talking about? Fish and junk. They look like they'd bend. They look like they'd bend. What are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean by that. Like, how do these hooks look any different than? Let's go back to the crankbait that nobody had any issues with. I'm trying to figure out what you're talking about, man. So this crankbait. Which I didn't hear anybody go, oh, that thing sucks. What is the difference? <laughs> the gauge is like the same thickness except on the shank. What, how do some hooks look any different than others is my, my question for you. Oh, let's see. Fish layer freshwater. Suspending means it will sink to a certain depth and stop. When you retrieve it, it dives also. Yeah, it sounded too confusing. All right, so I need I need Ryan on this one. What type of jerk baits you are you throwing? How are you working them? Are you doing the suspending ones, the floating ones? Do either of these look good to you at all? Jake Martin said hooks seem fine. Yeah, there's nothing. There's, these are Rapala hooks. There's nothing wrong with them. I don't know what you're seeing. Hooks seem cheap. I don't know. They seem like hooks. Near six hours, you're crazy. <laughs> Apparently. Man. I like thick hooks. Maybe just because I fish salt, but those look flimsy to me. Yeah, these are the same hooks as they're, that are on like all the bass stuff that we've that I've pulled out so far. Same type of little hooks. <clears throat> See, apparently uh, Ryan had to leave or something. They look great, says Fish Slayer. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I have to do some more research on when to fish, what, where, when, why. And Fish Slayer, I have a hard time taking uh, jerkbait advice from you when you say your biggest bass was one ounce. Just being real, buddy. That seems like the person you wouldn't want to take advice from for bass. I've caught a four foot long pike on that Rapala and never had a hook bend. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm not trying to like prove anyone wrong or nothing. I was honestly just 100% curious what, like, what about the hooks looked flimsy because of all the stuff I've been unboxing all night, they seemed about the same as the rest. The shank was like the, the gauge of the hook is maybe just slightly skinnier than it is on those crankbaits. I'm going to throw it in late spring or early fall for the floating. Suspending maybe during transition periods. Anytime the fish are going to be down in the middle water column. The bass was from a tiny size six hook and worm. LOL. Yeah, I've caught three and a half pound bass on size six and worms. They work, man. Size six hooks and worms work. I've caught some hogs on worms. All right. So Ryan said. I'm down if you're down. I'll be the last one here. <laughs> yeah, so Ryan, um, what type of jerk baits do you like to throw? You throw the sinking ones. What brand do you like to throw? Do you think either of these look good? This is it says an original floating one. When would you throw the floating one and how would you work it? And then, yeah, thank you, Fish Letter Freshwater, for giving me your advice on that. I also want to know Ryan's, too, to see if it's any different or about the same. This is a sinking one. It's a little smaller. What do you think of those? Those are the only jerk baits I got. So if I were to tie these on, should I do these on like, should I do these on like, uh, on like a spinning combo or should I just put them on my American Hero bait caster? And what type of line would you use with them? I got a million questions about jerk baits. 
I like the Rapala Rip Stop. So what is that? Is that just a different, just another type of jerk bait thing or something? I'll have to look it up. Rapala Rip Stop. Yeah, I've got two jerk baits. I have no idea when to throw them, how to throw them, how to work them. Nothing. Let's see. Rapala Rip Stop. Rip, 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 rip stop. Images. See what that looks like. Oof. So that doesn't look too different than that floating thing that I have. I'll put it away. Yeah. The rip stop to me looks like this. It's three and a half inches. This thing is also three and a half inches, I believe. Yeah. So similar size to this, and the shape looks about the same. Oh, what's the difference? It has a different um, smaller bill on it and more angled. Okay. How do I make this go away? Please go away. Let's see. I have done no night fishing for bass, but it's one of my goals this year to do. There is some lake near me that allows it one month of night. One night a month. Yeah. Uh, so we were talking earlier. Uh, it seems like for some reason full moon is the best time to go bass fishing at night. In my lake cross street, I can fish where, whenever. But whew, that was the first yawn. Seems like uh, when it's a full moon, you can go out with like spinners and stuff and something that has like a good blade or re really reflect that, that moonlight. And it seems like you just tear it up during a full moon for bass. I've definitely had some neighbors go out there and tear it up. It's 1.33 a.m. where Ryan is. I'm getting these, these messages super delayed, everybody. The more aggressive, the faster you fish jerk baits. Okay, so when it's colder, you fish them slower. The colder water, you need to fish deeper, so the sinking one. If the bass are kind of finicky and suspending, use the suspending one. Okay, and if the bass are just killing it or using the floating one, is that how that works then? And you can work it a little quicker? I'm going to write that down. So for jerk baits, yeah, 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 yeah. More aggressive the fish, the quicker retrieve or faster fish them, colder water deeper. So then I'm going to use the sinking one. Sinking. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If the bass are finicky, so for finicky bass, you use the suspending jerk bait. And then for, okay, if the bass are shallow or for topwater type of strikes, you're going to use the floating jerk bait. Okay, ah. Uh -huh. So the floating one was the bigger one. So right now, I would go out with the – right now, I'd say the bass are probably finicky and you want a suspending one. But I think you could also get them on the sinking one as well because it's super cold. Seems like anything but the floating one would be good right now. Yeah, there's more than just the what water column the fish are in, though, fish layer, because they're going to orient themselves on different types of structure, points, drop-offs, stuff like that. And if you're fishing in the middle of the uh, middle of the lake in the same exact water column where the fish are, but they're all oriented around the edge of the lake on the drop-offs, you're not going to catch nothing. Okay, thanks, Stan. Appreciate it. The action comes second. Again, fish slayer, the one ounce bass, have a hard time taking the advice from you. No, no offense, man. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. So fish slayer, he said, nah, talking about every species of fish. Okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yep. It's hard to know what water column the fish are going to be in, though. I mean, if you're fishing for something like catfish, yeah, they'll probably be along the bottom. But 
when it's carp during the day they're going to be feeding on the top then they're going to be feeding in the middle then they're going to be feeding on the bottom so that's hard i feel like the bass are a lot the same way from what i can see there's from what i can see there's our jerk baits oh those are jerk baits yeah this is a if the quality is real bad then whatever but it should be a rapala floating jerk bait for some reason uh Ryan, your comments are coming in super delayed. I don't know why. Don't know why. Later, Jake. It's only 11.30, Jake. Going to bed already? Oh, he didn't say he's going to bed. He just said awesome video. Later, man. You got some good old school baits. Yeah, I just inherited these. I just found them. And they have never been used. So maybe I should make a video of me going out and grinding with these things. It seems like this floating one's going to do me a lot more good when it gets warmer. And this one would be more for right now. I don't have a, I don't have a, a suspending one, but it says finesse sinking. And it is pretty small. It is a little smaller. But I guess, again, going along with the sinking, colder water, finickier fish. So you got smaller, um, you downsize baits. Those things all go together. I should have just like figured all that out just by looking at it. All right, all right, all right, all right. How cold is it right now for you in Missouri? So, last couple of days were like 60 or so, and then it just went down like yesterday back down to the 40s, and it's rainy and it's wet and it's crappy outside. So, that's going to really hurt the, the water heating back up and it's crazy how just because of weather patterns, like sometimes in Missouri by the first of March, I'm, I'm assuming some years you've already got warm water species going crazy in the, in the lakes and the creeks and everything like that. But because we've had so much cold weather and then now it just, it just re got cold again, cold fronts coming through for a few days, it's going to just keep dragging on that return of the warm water fish to shallow waters. So it might be freaking April 1st before I get to start like really slamming bass and sunfish and stuff like that. They sit in the water column. They typically do not sink or float the suspend the uh, suspending ones. With the new ones, you'll get a little bit of a rise if it sits too long. He said, yes, bam, you pick it up super quick. Sunfish King, I love this stuff. Yeah, I like learning, man. I really do. That's why – and it, I need to get a more organized system because every time I had these live streams, I'm always writing down like the advice you guys are telling me. And then I'll be honest, I don't have like a filing cabinet. So I just have, this is from, I don't know what live stream. This was from yesterday. I know because it says hit up the palm predator. And then this was from a long time ago live stream. This was from multi-species weekly, two multi-species weeklies ago. This was my uh, questions for off the hook. So yeah, I'm just getting unorganized here. I drew a rough crude sketch of the state of missouri and that's where some species is i don't know i think bowfin is just along the mississippi river so yeah i've just got a lot of a lot of stuff here i need to get better at organizing them and stuff like that oh let's see so you're in a cold front right now kind of yeah it's cold gonna be yeah a bunch of cold air came in for a few days yep fish layer i'm trying to take advantage of this time and not fish and just try to get some stuff done upgrade the hooks i'm not gonna do that i don't have money i said yeah why would i upgrade the hooks what's wrong with them These hooks seem fine. These things have never been thrown before. Hooks are incredibly sharp. He said, I don't know. Cold front is easy to get skunked. Not for trout. You just got to know what to fish for, man. I could, catch a, I could catch trout right now, and if we didn't just get a bunch of rain, I could go catch chubs and shiners. But the creeks, got, the creeks are heck of flooded right now. I just go for what's not going to skunk me most of the time. I don't like getting skunked. So I, I, that's why I catch so many fish is because I just, if I think I'm going to get skunked on bass, I don't go for bass that day. I go for something else.
they will bend out. So as I said already, you should upgrade the hooks. Oh. Put you. Yeah, I'll use them without upgrading. I mean, I don't I don't even know where to buy hooks or like I don't have money to upgrade hooks at all. So I'm going to go throw these without upgrading the hooks. But if I have some problems, I'll look into it. I don't have money like you guys do. Like I don't have money to sit there and pour into fishing. Like baits are expensive enough, let alone buying new hooks to put on and stuff like that. I do like the advice. But probably not going to upgrade the hooks unless something happens. I just want to get a bite on one of them. I don't care. There's a lot that goes into the hooks and the split rings. It will affect the rise or fall because you're adding weight. Yeah, see, that's why I don't want to do it at all. I don't want to change the weight or anything, ratio of it. I'll just leave them. Leave them how they are. Leave them how they are created to be fished. Should be fine. Should be good. Ryan, you ever fish uh, football jigs, flipping jigs, stuff like that? That's where I really, really don't have a lot of experience. So what I got tied on in the American Hero right now, dude, is this Okeechobee Crawl football jig. And basically, most of what I'm doing is just slow dragging it along the bottom. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll pop it or hop it a tiny bit. But I'm mostly just slow dragging it. And it's been a grind so far. And then, so this is the bio spawn bio crawl for a trailer in the sprayed grass kind of a long trailer on there i could definitely uh trim it up a little bit along the top and and rehook it on there but yeah let me know what you guys think about that and then if anyone has a good experience with jigs let me know if there's any other ways to retrieve it besides either i'd either do a slow drag reel in the slack slow drag Reel in the slack, and then every once in a while, I'll do a little bit of just kind of imagining it just sitting there popping up and down on 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 the bottom or whatever. A little bit like a flipping jig, but a lot less like popping. And stuff. Those are just the two types of retrieves that I've seen um, on YouTube. If you guys know any other retrieves for a football jig, or if you guys think that football jig is not good for this type of time of year or if you see anything wrong with it let me know if you buy your own hooks you could make your own hard bait i i want <laughs> as cool as that sounds i want to catch fishes on hard baits that someone else made like i just want to catch fish on hard baits period before i yeah i can see your comments ryan it might be a little bit delayed but i can see your comments Mo Creek Fishing is back. What up, dude? Mo Creek Fishing. How do you retrieve your uh, football jigs, flipping jigs, stuff like that? For a, ah! for a football jig like this, would you just slow drag it across the bottom and then reel in the slack? Slow drag it. Well, obviously a little slower than that. Or would you do like little lifts and drops? Would you do any popping at all? Let me know how you would work the football jig. Because that's a bait that I'm very new to, but I'm determined to catch some fish on it. Determined. Buy some weights, get some paper clips, get a plier, buy some spinner blades, and get some candy or chocolate. Candy or chocolate. Make a video, I guess, Fish Slayer, of what you're talking about. I've never made my own bait of any form. I suck at using like a lot of baits that you can get at the store that are supposed to be good. So, yep. I think it's cool though. I mean, Jeremy Albritton, who's one of my mods in here, he makes his own like bucktail jigs and he makes, uh, he pours lead and stuff like that. And then Fat Basses does his own um, soft plastics. Off the Hook does his own soft plastics. Um, I know a couple people that tie their own flies, so I do mess with a lot of people who make their own baits and stuff like that. I've just never experienced, uh, experimented at all with making my own baits or nothing. It'd be cool. Stan just won the recent Blue Cat tourney that they were in. Or Mo Creek just won. Sorry. Stan said that Mo Creek just won the recent Blue Cat tourney 
that they were in. Him and Parker Pursuits killed it. Really? That's awesome. Recent Blue Cat tourney. So was it was it for the biggest fish or the most fish or combined weight? How did how was the how was that scored? I'm curious. So that's how you make your own inline spinners. Why do you need candy to make your own inline spinners? Yeah, congrats. That's awesome. I've I don't think I've ever been in any fishing tournament ever. I feel like fishing tournaments are like ex usually exclusively for people who have boats. I feel like if you don't have a boat, you're just not invited to the fishing tournament lifestyle. It's usually something you need a boat for. Yeah, Moe Creek. So my man who's on YouTube, Bassman Outdoors. He's kind of giving me a little bit of tips and advice just because he lives kind of close. And, yeah, that's that's all I did except for a little bit of, like, lifting and dropping and stuff like that. But, yeah, he said drag and then real slack. So just do the slow drag across the bottom and reel in all the slack. And then what he's saying, watch that line because what you'll see is when you do this and then you're going to reel in the slack, he'll bite right there at that point or, like, at the wrong time. Or – You'll, you'll, you know, you'll be working it and then you'll just, he'll just barely move it. So apparently you'll just barely see it. Sometimes you won't even feel it. And that's what my friend was telling me, Bassman. He said, my friend Dallas, he said, uh, you're going to take some time to get used to the bite because the bite's really hard to see sometimes on those football jigs. And there's the whole thing where I'm fishing in an incredibly rocky area. So the entire time it's bouncing off rocks and it feels like little bites. So that's kind of driving me crazy. And it's getting hard to tell when I'm actually getting a bite and when I'm not. So it was a lot of grinding with that football jig, but it also kind of made me a little bit insane because every I'm, I'm trying not to set the hook every five seconds, every time I hit a rock thinking that it's a bite, but I also might've missed five fish while we were out there thinking they were rocks. So I don't know if you guys drag those more on muddy bottoms or, rocky bottoms or what i thought the rocky bottom was fine but it's just the entire time it feels like bite 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 it's really weird you just keep hitting rocks and stuff so i think it's gonna take a lot of getting used to um to feel the bite on those jigs but thank you missouri creek appreciate that man i'm uh i'm new to a lot of these different types of hard baits mostly from i didn't have much ex uh, confidence in throwing different things last year i caught a lot on the senko caught a couple on the cranks a couple on the top waters and then uh, probably about half of my bass were just on live worms. You guys were on the bank too windy to get the kayaks out. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. It Was it the river you were fishing? Because I don't know too many bank fishing spots at the river. That's my problem. We got some rivers around here, but I just need to do some exploring and find some, find some safe bank fishing spots. Seems like the rivers are always like along bridges and stuff like that. It's just really hard to find a bank fishing spot. It was most fish. Dang. Is it past six hours? Let's make it seven. Yeah, I don't know if we can go all the way until then, but we got seven people in here. It's basically the same for all species. Colder water, fish slower slower and deeper as water warms move shallow and fish can get more and more aggressive yes sir baldwin lake in illinois oh you're fishing a lake very cool i'd love to do a lake fishing uh bank fishing tournament a lake bank fishing tournament that would be cool oh no man missouri creek you and partner you and parker know your stuff yeah, I'd say they do if they won that tournament, man. I'm guessing it wasn't all just luck. Mm -mm -mm. All right, guys. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We got eight people in here, 43 likes. I'm just chilling. I love to keep this thing going. But I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I got to go pee. I've been in here for six hours without peeing. Uh, Should have peed when I went and got that snack. So I'm going to go ahead and go take a tinkle right now. Um, I'll come back. Hopefully we still got, you know, there's eight people here. Please don't leave guys unless you got somewhere else to go. 
I'm going to go to the bathroom. We'll see if there's still eight people in here when I get back. A lot of times when I go to the bathroom, I come back and three people have left. So that's fine. But go ahead and keep the chat going and uh, come up with any questions you guys have for me. Just to let you guys know, I just started fishing December 2019. I caught 5,000 fish last year and I caught 30 species, but there, I still have a whole lot to learn. So hopefully that gave you something to ask questions about. I'm new to fishing, new to YouTube, but I'm excited about all of it. Please ask me questions. I'll come back in two minutes after I've peed and I'll try to answer your questions. If no one's asked me anything, I'll have to think of something to ask you guys. So we already have one person leaving. I didn't even go to pee yet. <laughs> I'll be right back, guys. I promise. If anyone joins in, tell them that I'm peeing and I'll be right, 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 right back. If you got any good questions for me, go ahead and ask. Yo, we still got seven people. We didn't lose anybody. Thank you, guys. All right. Let's see. We would have to talk personally or over a live chat or over a live chat. I would agree with most of the comments in the chat on jerk baits, but with finicky bass, I would try a smaller jerk bait, like a three inch. There is just so much that goes into bass fishing in every bait. Yeah, like one of those was smaller. That's what I was talking about. One of them was smaller and sinking and more of like downsized. I don't know where I put them now. <clears throat> this was the bigger floating one. This was, I would say, finicky bass, colder water, smaller size, and then floating 
more like aggressive bass. And then, are you feeding a panfish addiction like me? I have a panfish addiction, and I have not been feeding the thing. I haven't caught a good crop year bluegill in like over a month. Fish Layer Freshwater said, thoughts on marshmallows for trout. I've never used them, but if you can get them to float, then white, a white version of this. So I've never used marshmallows, but I use power bait. This type of power bait absolutely is just crack for stock trout. It goes crazy. I prefer to fish for wild trout with spinners, but I don't have that opportunity here. So that sometimes you can get the stock trout on spinners really good, and sometimes they're just they're really not biting it, but they'll tear up the power bait. You gotta find out what they're going for. They have white power bait. Literally looks like they're but white. So it is almost a marshmallow in every way, except it's not an actual marshmallow. And those were great. White's a really good just all condition color to throw for power bait for trout. So I would say marshmallows can be very effective. Also, have you guys heard of this? What a lot of people do is if they don't have like we were talking about injecting or blowing up worms earlier to get them to float off the bottom for trout and river species and stuff. A lot of people don't do that. What they do is they take a they take a marshmallow and then they take a piece of a you know, just normal nightcrawler worm or some type of other worm species. Or like a some little larva or something, like a horn worm or something like that. They'll stick that on the marshmallow. And so the marshmallow, I guess, is enough to float the uh, – Max is here – is enough to float the, you know, little insect or whatever off the bottom. So I've heard people, a lot of people doing that. One of my friends on this brain does that. Come here, buddy. Oh. Here's Max, everyone. This is my – He's about to have his 13th birthday. He was fully paralyzed for four months, but survived. If you guys haven't heard the story. Oh, crazy survivor right here. This dog is nuts. He actually, when we, when we got him, he had already broken uh, both of his front legs. He got attacked by a big dog and had a bunch of broken ribs. And then one of the first things he did when we got him was he tried to go in the basement which we have a long bunch of stairs at the basement and then it's just like a concrete floor. And he fell off the top stair and landed off it like felt like 15 feet and landed on his back. Somehow just got up and pretended like nothing happened. I thought he was going to have like internal bleeding, but this dog, I don't know. He's like, he's made of steel. Absolutely insane. He's trying to get my snacks over here. Let's see. Uh, I'm addicted to all fishing too, Stan. Let's see. Panfish weekly. Yeah, I've been in Panthers Weekly a couple of times in the in the uh, chat, just saying what's up to people. It's always good to learn as much as you can, just talk fishing and stuff. Let's see, fish layer, if you're talking about stock trout, things like marshmallow, power bait, corn, work awesome. On native trout, not as much. Exactly, Stan. Exactly. Native trout, if I did, if I fly fished, I definitely use flies, but I use I use spinners and jigs for uh, wild trout. Max is bucking and weaving. He wanted to come say hi. Lay down, buddy. Um, yeah, stocked. He said, wild trout, I'll always go with flies. Yeah, fish layer, what fly, what fly setup do you have? What fly rod, what reel do you have? Let me know. Do you like it? Is it ideal for trout? How much was it? Let's talk about it because flying, fly fishing is something that I do not do. I've thrown a couple scuds and a couple different types of flies just with spinning gear in the river just for fun to see, you know, to mess around with it. And I didn't like it a whole lot. I didn't like it as much as the other stuff I was using, like jigs and uh, artificial salmon eggs and stuff like that. Let's see, Stan. I put my own tying stuff after watching Lyle. I tie my own stuff in 10 minutes. I'm 10 minutes from James. So this time of year, catfishing on the James is about to be on fire. Oh, I can't wait, Stan. I hope you get some PBs in all your species. I hope you get like a state record or something. You know how sick it would be on a live stream? To get like a 90 pound fish or something like that. I'm pulling for you, buddy. I hope you and I hope everybody that you go out with has has a lot of good luck coming soon. Because not only will that be exciting for you, but it'll be super exciting for all your uh, all your followers and stuff. The James is on my bucket list. It would be nice to catfish somewhere the commercial fishermen haven't destroyed. Um, Yeah, for sure. I know in the Missouri River, they're still... There's still uh, right around here. They made something 
some law where there can't be commercial fishing. So there's like one old guy who was grandfathered in because of the way the law was. And he's been for like years, he's been like the only person allowed to go out there and commercial fish, like right near this one, this, this area where we're at. And it's crazy. And he's super old now. I don't even know if he does it anymore, but it was crazy. He would go out and just catch a bunch of random fish. He mostly did carp, which was interesting. I don't know what he did with the carp, but he mostly caught carp, which is interesting to me. Hi, Max. Oh, I'm still behind in the chat. I'm sorry. Fish Slayer said hi to Max. Good boy. I have the fly rod I got at a garage sale and another. Okay. Another fly rod that I don't have with me right now. There's two fly reels. I mainly use dry flies. Yeah, the fly part is a science, and I'd figure out exactly what to use at exactly what time of year. But I just want to know as far as, like, actual people's experience with rods and reels and stuff, what works and what I should get and what I shouldn't get. Max, you're, you're moving my whole live stream right now. You got to go. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's freaking out. I always throw out at least one giant bait for the biggest fish in the water i do that sometimes too i've still yet to yet to catch a monster but yeah if you can fish with multiple rods what is it on uh like what are the rules as far as rod limits and stuff on the james because i don't know how it works in missouri um the normal license normal bank fishing whatever you can have three rods per person and there's no extra rod stamp. You just, you can have three rods per person. In Kansas, it's two rods. If you buy a rod stamp, it's three. So I bought one. So I could do three rods in Kansas just because I'm used to using three. I don't get no, like, I think it's on the rivers or maybe in a boat. I don't know exactly what the rules are, but I've seen people go out with like seven rods, five rods, something like that. And they said it was legal. So I don't know if it's because they're on the river or what. Max, what's up again? Oh, he'll be up for two seconds and then he'll start getting all antsy. Ryan, hold on. I'm getting behind in the chat. What'd you say, Ryan? I've not fished a ton of jigs, but I've caught fish on them. It's hard to type all this stuff if you're asking because you're learning. You want to know more about bass fishing. Yeah, I know. Uh, we'll have to. Ryan, when I do multi-species weekly and when I do, and I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get unlimited stream time so I can let you guys come on here. Because right now, if I had, here's an example. If I had unlimited stream time on StreamYard right now, I can have guests and I could let you come on and literally talk about um, like tell people your channel and stuff and they could check you out. And then that you could just talk about bass baits for like however long you wanted to. And I could let Stan on if you wanted to talk, but I can't do that because I'm not on StreamYard, and I'm, I literally have, I don't know what it is. One hour left um, uh, until the 23rd of free stream time on StreamYard. And the problem is I do these, I try to do a test live stream or I try to do like an unboxing and then I look up and it's six and a half hours into the live stream, which is fine, but this isn't using any, uh, stream time on StreamYard, So it's cool. But yeah, sorry to make you type all that stuff. It's cool. You don't have to like give me a whole bunch of advice if it's a whole bunch of work to type it all. Also, we can talk on fish brain or something like that. I try to use speech to text and it comes out like literally looking like English is my second language. I don't know what's up with the speech to text, but it, it is hard to decipher. Donkey baits for the win. <laughs> big fish, big baits, big fish, right? When we went uh, out with my guide, uh, I've, I've gone guide fishing once in my life, like fishing with an actual fishing guide. And that was in Colorado. When I went to Colorado, I did a lot of fishing just on my own, pulling over on the side of the road, brown drop, stuff like that. And, uh, we went for lake trout and pike, and I didn't get a pike, unfortunately, but I got some good ones to follow. But I caught a lot of lake trout that day, but the biggest one was only like, um, I forget how long it was, but it was like two and a half pounds, I think. So they fought all right, and you were reeling them from like 100 feet down. But he had caught, I think, 16-pound lake trout, and he was showing me pictures of like really, really nice ones out there and stuff like that. So we had at one point, I'm not even joking. He's like, I always test this out. I've gotten bites on it, but I don't think I've landed one on it yet. He, there was like, it looked like a squid, like the biggest tube jig I've seen in my life. And the weight was so heavy. Like most of those jigs, you're opening the bale and dropping it. And we were in like sometimes 80 to 100 feet of water in that lake. It was a mountain lake. And you're just like, did the bait hit? No, it didn't. You're just watching it on the, uh, on the fish finder and your bait's still like, 20% down. It would take like over a minute for your bait to hit the bottom. 
And he's like, when I'm fishing with little kids out here, it's the hardest part guiding them because they're just like getting impatient trying to reel up when they're still like only 10 feet down. So yeah, we use super heavy jigs. They would, those, these ones would get to the bottom super quick, but I'm talking this long. And uh, I caught like a, I caught a, a crawdad on one. I thought it was a bite. I was like, oh, I reel it all the way up. And apparently 100 feet down, there's a crawdad on the bottom. So that's the only thing I caught on the giant jig. But yeah, it never hurts to go out and throw some massive baits in the hopes that you might catch something massive. I don't know if you guys have heard about the swim bait kid. I don't know um, what his name is, but it's some kid on YouTube. And um, like the stories on you, I don't know if he's a YouTuber, but I saw his video on YouTube, like of, of the whole news story. And he, I don't know where he lives, Texas or something, but he, he won like state record, or not state record, the lake record at some lake from catching a monster bass. And what he does is he goes out and he throws like those 12 inch swim baits and just works them all the time. And you're like, he'll have many, many days where he doesn't catch anything because the bait's bigger than, like much bigger than the fish he's, he's fishing uh, in the area he's fishing. But, but I don't know, he caught like a 10 pounder or 11 pounder or something just insane. And there's all a bunch of people who were there. It was like a crowded park. So they're interviewing all the people who saw him and they said he was fighting it forever. So he was super stoked and stuff like that. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the chat. Zero to 10 weight fly line. Most important part of fly fishing. The bigger the fish you catch as the numbers go up. Yeah, I'll definitely be talking to you more. Um, about fly fishing fish layer on like a uh, fish brand or whatever. Something I definitely want to get into, but I want to do a lot of research before I start buying stuff. Max is freaking out. He wants up and then I pick him up and then he wants down. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. Kayak fishing tournaments. Yeah. Someone was telling me about kayak fishing tournaments somewhere, somewhere near me. I don't know if it was in Kansas or if it was in Missouri or what, but I do have my Kansas license. So with the kayaks I have now, no, not even like they're not fishing kayaks. I have this weird enclosed one and there's no rod holders at all. And it's, it sucks. But, um, I definitely, I definitely, if I got a better kayak would, um, would do a kayak fishing tournament. Let's see, where are these kayak tournaments? What I love about Epic Catfish. <clears throat> scientifically describes why you should keep it simple <laughs> yeah i'm all about keeping it simple if i could get into scientific terms that's what i need to work on it's not always about just dragging the bait it's about finding what presentation the best one every day of bass fishing it's like putting a puzzle together He's not afraid to call BS on some of those theories floating around. Yeah, fishing can be kind of like a puzzle, man. It's it's uh when I go for trout at even at like the Roaring River, which is somewhere they stock a bunch of trout near me. And I've had days out there where I catch like 50 trout in a day. But you there's people out there who are like, oh, uh, you know, sometimes I get my limit, which is four. Your limit's four uh, in Missouri. And I'm like, Sometimes you get your limit. I think my worst day out there, I caught 20. And that's, you know, sometimes I just, I'm just there for a couple hours. And the thing is, you'll start the day throwing some color of marabou jig or some type of spinner. And it'll kill it for like five minutes. And then that hole, that fish has seen that presentation like 10 times. And then you got to move on somewhere else and you got to throw something else. Or you could throw the same thing, just move into a different area, stuff like that. But that's like a weird example because that's got like a whole bunch of fish stocked into it. But it gets even harder when you're fishing a place where you have no idea where the fish are, especially like new lakes and stuff like that. And then I struggle even more with bass. Like I, I'm pretty decent with trout, but I, I struggle with bass sometimes when I'm at a new place. First off, finding them. And then figuring out what they want to eat. He said, you are really going to get to this seven hour. Yeah, I am starting to get a little bit tired, guys. If you can't tell, I'm starting to like space out and stuff like that. So um, I might end this at seven hours. I'm probably going to call it. It's on my time right now. It says we've been going for six hours and 27 minutes. So everyone pat yourself on the back because that's super awesome. This is definitely my longest live stream. Um, I think five hours was my, was my last one. Me and uh, Sharp, it was on his channel. 
and he was getting tireder than I am right now. I think forward fishing was on with us too. And both of them were like starting to fall asleep on, on like their chairs, like sharp, uh, Harrison, he kept standing up and walking around and like, he was swinging like a little toy baseball bat. And I could tell he was just trying to stay awake, but yeah, it is one fifteen here. And I've been up since, I don't know, probably six or something this morning. So I, I'm going to probably call when I ended at seven hours. I can't go longer than that. So 30 more minutes, guys. Um, but yeah, we'll get to the, we'll get to the seven hour. Isn't that what you said? Like a while ago, fish layer, you're like seven hour challenge or something like that. We'll do it. He said, y'all hook set him. If y'all haven't just for the seven hour effort, I'm pretty sure everyone in here is already hook set. And if you guys haven't hit the notification bell, hit that so that it, if, even if you're not going to join one of my live streams, if you're going to be going live at that time or something like that, you can know, um, Oh, he's going to be doing a live. So if I'm not getting a lot of people, maybe they're in Sunfish Kings live or something like that. I don't know. Might be helpful to know. I'm I'm like starting to get notified, like starting to click that notification bell on anybody I know who does live streams and stuff like that. So that way I can get that notification when they set it up in case I'm wondering if I want to go live last minute or something like that. I'm trying to not step on too many people's toes. I'd rather be in a live stream with a whole lot of people than have a live stream with like, you know, two people in it or something like that. Cause I'm not necessarily doing it for the watch time. Like some people, I think most people are just doing it just to, just to hang out and either share their fishing adventures, which I need to do some more fishing live streams soon or just discuss, um, fishing and different species and stuff. Like, uh, we do a multi-species weekly. Max is really freaking out. I might have to let you out of the room, buddy. Kind of distracted me. Epic shares what, Took him decades and decades of hard fishing, studying, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. See, all I can share with you guys is like my one year, which I did grind a lot and I was on the water a whole lot, but my one year of fishing experience that I've had so far, my one year plus, and I have done some research and I have, you know, talked to a lot of people like you guys who know more than I do. I try to learn what I can so I can share stuff like that. But yeah, I, I would like one day to have decades and decades of experience of studying all that stuff and be able to share it with people like i think kind of like stan said as i get older and I've, I've been fishing a lot longer and i catch a lot more fish i think it's gonna be a lot more fun just to you know teach young people and get young people fishing teach people fishing who have never caught fish before than it will be for me to catch fish myself i'm already getting to the point where it's like just as exciting to watch somebody else catch a fish and get super excited about it does your college have a college pond so university of central missouri is where i go to school i'm a senior it's my last semester and there is a place called Pertle springs which is just a little bit south of the school it's a historical area it's called Pertle springs because it was a natural like hot springs area and it was a tourist attraction and there was some polio outbreak or something, and they closed it down like a long time ago, like 1800s or something like that. And uh, now, like the old swimming pools all got turned into ponds and stuff like that. And so it's like a it's like a nature area. The main pond there has like no fish in it. There's just frogs and it's super shallow and stuff. But then across the way, there is a lake called like Pearl Springs Lake or Pond or something like that. And then there's something called Lions Lake right next to it. So like. There's some small bass, small catfish, and small bluegills there. And then there's a couple decent sized fish. But like everyone in Warrensburg, even like the, the people who fish tournaments and stuff, they're like, there is not very many good places to fish around Warrensburg. Everyone pretty much if they want to if they want to fish and they live near Warrensburg, they're driving like 20, 30 minutes to find somewhere better. Which is hilarious because when I go to catch micro fish or when we're going to try to catch fish for the for the native fish tank we literally drive to warrensburg to go to the creek and try to catch fish there it's hilarious does anyone make their own baits ryan says does anyone make their own baits yeah mo creek it's all about helping out everyone should do it yeah everybody should share the knowledge that they've learned and the experience that they've learned because I was just talking today to somebody who's thinking about uh, starting a YouTube channel. And he's like, hey, would you mind coming out and fishing with me 
and uh you know showing me the ropes on recording and maybe even like editing and stuff like that and i'm like you just asked the sunfish king if he wants to go fishing so of course of course i want to go fishing so (laughs) of course i'll go fishing with you so yeah like it took me a long time to figure out just the basic settings on my gopro like do i want to do like 4k what's the frame rate what's the different stuff and uh basically just took me a long time to figure out all those all the basic things just to start editing and stuff like that what to use and stuff and i think i could save this guy a whole lot of time and it would be fun for me i think to you know get out fish with him catch some fish get some footage for my channel and then also help him get started if he wants to have a channel i don't know if he's wanting to record for a youtube channel or if he just wants the video to have the video but max you are messing all types of stuff up right now well i'm not sure if you've been in before but Fish King doing a great job with the live stream, talking fishing, different points of view, learning. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is like the first live stream I've ever started to get kind of tired during it. So 20, 25 minutes, I'm definitely going to end this thing. But whatever you guys want to talk about for 25 minutes, Ryan asked if anyone makes their own baits. I uh, I know Fish Slayer was talking about, he said dough baits if you count that. And then he was talking about like the recipe he would use to make um a spinner or something like that, which I think would make a good video, you know, making little spinner out of random items or something like that and trying to fish with it. But yeah, I do know a lot of people who make their own baits. I don't know if anyone here does. Stan, I've he ain't trying to fake anyone out. He tells it like it is. If you're talking about Mimo, thanks. Max, just on. Un- All right, I think my computer's got enough charge. Max has unplugged this thing like four times. All right, I gotta let you out. Sorry, buddy. Hold on, guys. Max is getting more. Come on, dude. Come on. Let's go. He's not having it. Come on, buddy. All right. You got to stand here, but you can't get up. Sorry about that. (laughs) You accidentally disabled your mouse pad. Mouse pad? Disable. The mouse pad is the thing you put the mouse on. What do you mean disabled? Back in my day, <laughs> the mouse pad was a little piece of foam thing. There's no disabling. These are totally freaked out. Yesterday, airbrush man, hard beats, crankbaits, and trick baits. My house is like really cold for some reason. I did not mean yesterday. Sorry, mouse. Oh, disabled your mouse. I was going to say, if you guys got electronic mouse pads now, I need to look into that. I don't know what it would do. This is, I just got like some basic little Microsoft mouse. It was like $9. I don't think even think, I've had this thing like two years. I don't think I've even changed the like double A battery that's in the thing. Stan, not as much as I used to. Stan has made his own spin. I don't know how I missed that comment. Stan has made his own spinners, crankbaits, flies, jigs, and even a few poles from the blank. Oh, that'd be super cool. I remember in like eighth grade, and I remember this well because his teacher was super cool. He taught us like how to he taught us how to skin a coyote, which smelled terrible, but it was cool. He uh taught us just a bunch of outdoor stuff and told us a bunch of stories basically, but he took us like outside in the, in the, uh, we had this area that was like, there's a cross country field that went through the woods or whatever. And there's a pond out there. Sorry. I never knew that there was fish in that pond. And we went out there and we made like cane poles and we, we literally like made our own poles out of freaking nothing. And then we were just catching bluegill out of there. And a couple of people were catching nice bass. I don't remember exactly what I caught. Probably just bluegills and stuff. But someone caught a little catfish out of there. I think we were just digging up our own worms and stuff like that. And I was like, it was like old school fishing. Like nobody, he didn't tell us we were going to be fishing that day. So no one brought rods or brought baits or anything like that. I think at that point, um, it already got to the point where you couldn't even bring, you know, baits or anything to school anyway because they got hooks on them I, i'm pretty sure back in the day when you guys were kids you could probably bring baits to school if you guys were gonna be going fishing for class or something like that but nowadays a treble hook's a weapon so like fish slayer said 
there's lures that work themselves. Yeah, has anybody, has anyone here comment if you've ever seen someone use or use one of those automatic, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, like the electronic lures, the ones that just swim around. My friend who doesn't even fish, he got so excited. He texted me, he goes, man, I got to tell Max, you're freaking out. All right, here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to put a chair here. And I'm going to let Max hopefully sit. Oh, damn Max is really trying to crash my live stream. Oh. Max, you can use co pilot. There's too many rods. Max, you can be co pilot if you stop wanting to. When I edit videos, I tell him he can be co pilot and I let him sit in this chair next to me. But hopefully it'll work and I'll call him back. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah. I think he just wants my snacks. That's what it is. If anyone's used any of those electronic baits, as I was saying, let me know. Um, my friend got super excited. He's like, there's something I got to tell you. And he doesn't even fish. And he texted me and he's like, he's like, tell me about, you know, those little weird electronic swim baits, things that swim themselves or whatever. And I was like, I don't, I don't know anything about that, but that seems weird. I'd rather, he's like, you never need to buy live bait again. I'm like, live bait, I imagine will work better than those. And it's got to be more fun and challenging to, you know, try to work a swim bait and make it look like a fish rather than just sit there with it in the water. I don't know too much about them. About them. Good boy. Fish Slayer said, what? How many rods do you have? How many rods you got in total? If anyone knows the answer to how many rods they got in total, you can answer Fish Slayer if you want. Um, I have four in the room right now. A bit caster, spinning rod. Two ugly sticks, and then out in the cars, got a couple more loose rods out there. I got two of those little rods I was using for ice rods. <laughs> yeah, that's how big they are. No, they're like three foot. Uh, what are they? Shakespeare dock runners, three foot long. And I, I caught my first two ice fish on those. That's what I was using for my ice rods, but I also use them for like crappie fishing and stuff like that. They're super fun to fight fish on. That's what we were using the other day at uh at the creek me and my friend who were catching a bunch of shiners and chubs and stuff out there and we couldn't get over how fun it was to catch like these big fat spawning chubs on these little rods that were bending i got that all on footage so eventually that'll be that'll make it to the youtube channel let's see so i don't know how many rods i have in total fish slayer i definitely got i'd say eight or nine rods stan i'm not talking about the other outdoor stuff skinning animals Butchering and processing your own. I was basically raised outdoors. <laughs> yeah, so my when it comes to outdoors and stuff like that, I was my dad and my parents and stuff, like from the time I was young, they'd always take me outside, like hiking, and we go, you know, walk by lakes and we do a lot of stuff outside. And even, you know, some camping and stuff like that. But it was just never like fishing or hunting or anything like that. Like my dad and my mom, they just didn't do that stuff. I just started really fishing not too long ago, but I got like super addicted to it very quickly. But yeah, that's cool. I think that'd be cool. Like now my, my uh, brother and sister live out in the middle of nowhere and they got land and they got like, we go shooting out there cause there's just a bunch of land and they have a little pond and we, I've caught some decent bass out of that and some bluegills and stuff. So they definitely live out in the country to where they don't have an option, but to do outdoor stuff. So I like going out there and hanging out and stuff like that too, but it would have been cool to, to maybe be, you know, raised like that from the time I was young. If I have kids, I'll definitely, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely take them fishing and teach them about the outdoors and stuff like that. I feel like you got to very useful skills and keeps them out of trouble. It's a lot of the reason why I like fishing because I, uh, I don't know. I didn't get in a whole lot of trouble when I was younger, but I definitely would have stayed out of trouble a lot better and stuff like that. If I would have, uh, you know, had a, had a hobby that I, every time, uh, I get free time or something, wanted to go to the lake instead of just wanting to goof off with people and do some dumb stuff. Cause now if I get free time, that's the first thing I'm thinking. It's like, all right, can I work out fishing or do I have some too many chores and other stuff to do? Mo Creek. All right, I'm going to go back to uh, my phone here because there's a delay on the chat. Mo Creek said, I'm guessing you and me are about the same age, Stan. 
I'm 25, guys. I turned 26 in September. Fish Slayer, how many rods you got in total? Fifty-two. That's about what my dad is. I think he's like fifty-five, something like that. Not. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't make you feel old. Maybe that wasn't the right answer to say. <laughs> but my dad, you know, my dad's super young and everything, in my opinion. Fish Slayer's got to count how many. He said, "Let me see." All right, fifteen-minute warning, guys, just to let you know. Got to find something else to do with your night after this. But I do appreciate you guys tuning in to the Sunfish King live stream. We're definitely going to be going live tomorrow at 730 and going to be trying the fishing trivia thing to see how that goes. Sunday at 730. So you guys are all cool. I need to make sure uh, Mo Creek for sure. Going to go ahead and check out. Uh, go ahead and check you out after this. Mo Creek. Fishing. And then I'm definitely subscribed to everybody in here. Cool, cool, cool. Stand three is 31. Yeah, it's all good, just a number. Exactly, bro. I've seen people who are 40 years old who <laughs> act and seem every way and older, older, you know, and closer to just being done doing, doing physical stuff than people who are like 60. It's just all about, you know, frame of mind and how you spend your time and stuff like that. A lot of people are young at heart no matter how old they are. And yeah, it's just a number. It doesn't mean much. I got friends of all ages, man. One conventional fish layer says, talking about his rods. One conventional four bait casters. My house is so cold. I'm about to go get a jacket or something. Four or five spinning, one spin cast, and two fly rods. Very cool. Granddaughter's 11. That's why I said I'm old enough to be Sharp's granddad. <laughs> Almost. Sorry. Almost old enough to be Shark's granddad. Granddaughter's 11. Yeah, your granddaughter's 11, but you said her, she's got like a 30-pound catfish. That's nuts, man. Congrats. I'm sure you, you had something to do with that. Man, I can't stop shivering. I don't know why I'm getting so cold all of a sudden. The, we've had, we just got a new thermostat thing in this house, and like we've been noticing the last couple of days, like randomly over in the middle of the day, and it's like, is it like super cold in here? So we don't know what's going on with it. Mo Creek said, ask my wife. She thinks I'm a teenager sometimes. As soon as I shave my beard, everyone's going to think that I'm like 18 or something. I'm about to shave my head soon, and then the beard's probably going to come after. I asked a bunch of people in a recent live stream just for fun. I was like, guys, should I shave the beard or should I go babyface sunfish? And I had one vote for babyface, and like nine people were like, no, you got to grow that beard out, boy. I was like, no, I'm probably going to shave this thing. I'm not even used to having a beard this long. I don't know if you guys can see that. He's all curled up and knocked out. <laughs> oh, I woke the beast. Oh no. He's a good boy. I got three dogs. I got him. I got another wiener dog named Marley. And then who's kind of like high strung and crazy. And then I've got um, Mochi who's like, he's like three or four. He's a lot younger, still full of energy, acts like a tiny little puppy. And he's, we don't know what he is. He's some type of mutt, but they're all three rescue dogs. We love our dogs. We love our dogs here. He said, shave beard at 500, LOL. 
that's not like an exciting thing to do for my channel. I feel like I gotta do something more exciting than shave beard at 500. <laughs> I'll just grow the beard until a thousand. How about that? It's like, come on, guys. Then people will stop. People will stop subscribing <laughs> because they want to see how long it'll get. No, basically, here's what's going to happen, everybody. As soon as that weather gets to about 70 plus every single day, this thing's gone. It doesn't matter whether I want to keep it or whether I want to get rid of it. I think 43 uh, thumbs is the most I've ever had in a live stream. So thank you guys so much for that. I really appreci appreciate that. There's so many random emojis on here. And this chat, I don't know. I didn't even click emojis and they all came up. And there's just way too many. I don't see why you'd ever send half of these things. Bam. I like that one. So, guys, for the next, we got 12 minutes on this thing. If anybody has... Any fishing-related questions, YouTube-related questions, or if you guys have any good fishing stories, I'd like to hear that. Any good fishing stories, bad fishing stories. we got 12 minutes. This is 11 minutes. Anyone has anything they want to talk about? Because we're going to get to this seven-hour stream, and then I'm going to go face plant on my pillow and go brush my teeth and go straight to bed after this. <laughs> Not going to lie to y'all. We are all just waiting for the seven hour. <laughs> no one's got anything to say. We're just sitting here waiting for the seven hour. No, Fish Slayer. Now that you, you were the first one to talk, man, what do you, you got to tell a story now. Got to tell a fishing story, Fish Slayer. Let's hear it, man. Good day on the water, bad day on the water. Short story, long story, doesn't matter. So while Fish Slayer's typing his epic fishing story, is it good day on the water? You got it. Yeah, let's hear a story about let's hear a story about a good day on the water, fish slayer. I'll tell you guys a, a story about a good day on the water. Um, the uh, the place I was talking about, Roaring River. One day, I drove out there about three hours both ways, and uh, he said, "I don't know how I caught my first fish." Question mark. Anyway. Uh, fish layer, you can tell a story if you want in the chat. I'm just going to tell a story as well, but uh, or type it up, whatever, if you want. That's up to you. I'm not going to put you on the spot. You don't have to. But basically, Roaring River, I'm going to make some videos of that place. I think I'm actually going in a couple weeks. Um, at the headwaters, they stock it like every couple days. It's just, it's like, it's weird how it works. It's uh, we don't have like native trout in Missouri, we don't have wild trout, we have stock trout. And there's like soup, there's a couple deep lakes, and then the water that comes out of the dam is like always super cold because it's like, you know, 200 feet deep or something like that. And so it's really, 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 really cold year round. And so it can support trout. And they put, they put trout in there, and the ones that are in there that don't get caught, they just like go on, survive, breed, and stuff like that. And then there's some dam or some way that they can't get through at the end. So they can't get into like other waterways and stuff like that. Anyway, went to this place, Roaring River State Park. It's like $4. Um, when you get there, whether you have a trout tag or not, you don't even need a state trout tag. You just pay $4 and you can fish for trout that day as long as you have a fishing license for Missouri. It's in Cassville, Missouri. And uh, I've had, you know, good days, 20 to 30 fish there before. And this day I drove out all by myself. And every time I've gone there, it's been like camping a couple days, whatever, because this place is like two and a half, three hours away. Well, one day I just had one free day and I was like, I'm just going to go there and drive back literally like six hours of driving. <laughs> so I got up like, I'm not going to lie, probably 4.30 in the morning. No, because it it opened at like 7 or something, or 6.30. So I had to leave at like 3 something in the morning. And everything was fine. I got out there. I was super tired, whatever. And I slayed them. Like, I just was in tune with the trout all day. I put headphones on. I kept going to different spots. And I found this honey hole under a bridge. And I just nailed it for a couple hours. I took a picture this is back when I was like trying to post everything on fish brain or at least like I, last year I tried to keep, keep track of all my fish. So that's how I know that I caught 5,000 fish last year, which is crazy, even though 2000 of them were bluegills. So it's not, you know, that super crazy, like a lot of small fish, but it, anyway, it's, it's all fun, whatever. But 
I caught that day after looking back at the pictures. It ended up being 54. And if you check out my channel, I have I have all the pictures in one video. It's called like 54 Rainbow Trout, whatever. So I caught, yeah, I'll tell your story in a second, Fish Slayer. Um, I caught 54 Rainbow Trout that day. And it was absolutely insane. And it was a great day. And I drove home. And I got halfway home and I had to pee super bad. And the, the drive there is like the middle of nowhere. And I was driving so fast. I didn't realize how fast I was going. I got pulled over. It was a 75. I got pulled over going, uh, what was it? No, 70. I got pulled over going 94. And he said if I was going one more, if it was 25 over, he would have taken me to jail. He was dead serious. It was in Archie, Missouri or something like that. So I had to pay a bunch of money for that ticket and to get that taken off my record and stuff like that. But I think it was still worth it for a day of fishing. I usually don't get, I don't get speeding. Like I usually don't speed like that. Like that was crazy. I, I was upset with myself for going that fast. Even though it was the middle of the night, there was no one on the road. But anyway, that's my story. Yeah. <laughs> didn't didn't get that on on uh, GoPro or anything because I didn't have it at the time. But I have that up on the up on my channel. And if you guys check that video out, it is some of the most beautiful trout. Like they're all stalkers, but I don't get how they're they're super beautiful. Maybe some of them are like third or fourth generation born in that stream, so they're like kind of like wild trout. But oh my goodness, beautiful fish! I put a little bit of filters on them, but I didn't go that hard on those. Like some of them, I just left. I say fish layer. Here's his story. And you guys have probably already read it, but he said, wait, how's frostbite this winter for a fish story? Fishing at 13 below is rough. Oh, dude, I've never, that's insane, dude. Frostbite is no joke. Fish Slayer, I'm sorry if everyone's already read this already, but I want to read your story. I was fishing in a summer camp. They, they tied us worms and I brought my own lures. I insisted to use lures, so I just tied on my crankbait. Fish three hours with bites only. Then the crankbait got broken. The camp instructor's a nice guy. Going to shout him out in my next video. <laughs> cool for you, man. Awesome. He took a rooster tail and tied it on for me and told me to fish it. Just cast and retrieve. Five minutes later, bam, channel cat. Yeah, dude, he's got channel cat. He's got, that's crazy. You got, have you got two channel cats on, on rooster tails? I know they will go for bait for like lures and stuff like that, but usually people when they're trying to catch catfish don't throw rooster tails. That's pretty crazy though. His first catch was a channel cat on a rooster tail. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. Also, why uh why rooster tail is my favorite lure? Yeah, that's insane. It's very versatile lure. Let's see, Mo Creek, um, frostbite and then stan said when he was a kid he went overnight fishing with his dad and his friends they all had quite a few too many and he was a kid so not drinking he was the only one not drunk and he fell out of the jumbo oh no man mo creek wins to stan or lose maybe fishing until you get frostbite that deserves the golden whisker award yeah props for that man Fished all the way until he had straight up hypothermia. <laughs> He's like, well, my leg just fell off, but I'm, I, I think that rod over there is getting tugged right now. It's like, I'm not ready to leave quite just yet. All right, five-minute warning, guys. The conversation's going good, but I, I guarantee if we keep it going for 10 minutes, I'm going to sit here and just eventually face plant on my keyboard, hopefully in the stream when I do it. <laughs> five-minute warning, y'all. Thank you for being part of this is history here. Sunfish King's longest live stream, seven hours. Fish Lega said, yeah, two channels. I like how uh actually Ryan might still be in here. Hopefully his chats are like working or whatever. Because Ryan said he's gonna be in here until the end. Let's see, Fish Slayer, two channels, oh, two channel cats on Rooster Tail. He set the record at camp. No one's ever done that ever since the camp. Yeah, I'd definitely say you definitely like no one. No one's probably caught two. So did you catch like were your first two fish channel cats on a rooster tail? Because that's pretty crazy. I bet most people in the world's two first two fish weren't channel cats on rooster tails. That's pretty pretty impressive. Good show, man. I'll catch you next time. Yeah, later, Mo Creek, if you got to get out of here. Two-minute warning, y'all. Or three-minute, whatever. I got to get – all it's got to say, it's six minutes, 57 seconds – no. Six hours, 
dummy. 57 minutes and 35 seconds is what we're at. So just about two minutes and 20 seconds. And I'll end it just right after that. My leg. <laughs> my leg fell off. That rod's getting a bite. <laughs> Dude, that's dedication, though. That's how, that's how the people get the state records, man. Yeah, first day, a channel catfish on rooster tail. Second day, another channel cat. Oh, yeah, you said that. You said channel cat, channel cat, and then your next three were crappie. All on that rooster tail. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. I don't have a problem with rooster tail. I just slightly prefer uh, spinners better. And I think I need to work on spoons because I, I don't like them. I throw them out and they flutter around and I just... I like baits that feel good, and that's part of my problem with the jerk bait is I need to figure out how to, how to toss it a little better. Something about the uh, like crank baits and spinners, especially. I just like I cast them out. And I just like that that kind of feeling of when you just get it like spinning enough where the rod tips kind of vibrating, and then every once in a while you do a couple. It makes it really easy to grind when it's like something kind of smooth and it feels good. When it's when the action's weird and you haven't caught a lot of fish, you don't have that confidence in the first place to catch on whatever lure you're throwing. Then, uh, yeah, definitely uh, makes it makes it harder to grind and stuff like that. So that's part of the reason why I kill it with spinners when I'm out in Colorado. Is like, even if I haven't got a bite in three hours, it's fun to just chuck the spinner and just like just spin it enough to feel that that blade spinning against the current and just even the rod tip. It's a super light rod, so the rod tip's just steady vibrating. That's when it's fun to fish and not just catch. Fish Slayer says, yeah, night, Mo Creek. Good night, everybody, because I am going to end this thing pretty soon. Um, fish Slayer said, spoons are weird for me to fish, too. Yeah, you get you definitely got to do them with, uh, with a swivel. We can't do them without. Like, I don't do my rooster tails or my spinners with a swivel, but some people use a little swivel or micro swivel with it. But yeah, the spoon, you pretty much have to use it or else it's just tangling your line and it's not going right. Hey again, Mo Creek for really pushing me for the Friday night spot. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's the one thing is like um, I've seen ice fishing and stuff with spoons and vertical jigging and I feel like vertical jigging doesn't really work with uh, it just went up to eight. Someone else just joined. That's crazy. <laughs> That's nuts. Seven hour live stream, guys. We just hit seven hours. Hey, dirt tracking. We just hit seven hours. You sound exhausted though. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end this thing. I'm gonna go back and listen to it tomorrow and be like, dang, man. I just I have no voice. <laughs> and I need a, I need a voice for tomorrow's live stream for sure. So hey, dirt tracking. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for being an awesome supporter. You're part of history here. Sunfish King seven hour live stream. I'm gonna have to change the title of this after I put it out. Seven hour live stream. This is not a marathon. This is record on the channel. It is both. It's a marathon and it's a record on the channel. So, all right, guys. My voice is pretty much completely gone. <laughs> We're at the seven hour and one minute mark. I'm going to let everybody have two minutes to say whatever they want. Seven hour and three minute. I'm going to end it. So, any, anybody got any closing words? Anything they got to say? Um, Stan on Sunday morning, 8 Eastern time, has got a – it's going to be probably too early for you, Fish Slayer. But he has a um, a live stream fishing on the James River, so go check him out. He does that every Sunday. So check check out Two Stands Fishing. Um, he's in the chat right there. And Stan, thanks for joining us. Mo Creek, if you're still in there, thanks for thanks for joining. Um, Fish Slayer, definitely. You've been in a lot of my live streams lately. You guys, you guys are. If I didn't have, uh, <clears throat> oh my gosh, my voice. I'm definitely gonna have to end this thing. If I didn't have y'all as my supporters, I probably wouldn't. You know, keep keep doing these live streams because if i had like one or two people in here just not necessarily worth it you know not worth everybody's time and uh not just being in here it's everybody who contributes to the chat as well so thank you guys so much 60 seconds got 60 seconds to speak your mind guys <laughs> no anyway thank you guys so much for being in here i'm gonna go ahead and end it here in about 45 seconds Stan says, seven hours, awesome job. I had a blast. Love what you and Sharps are doing. This is an awesome group here. Yeah, man, I'm trying to make one of the most supportive, or not even make, but just, just you know, put together and, like, join and try to be part of what's already there because I've already seen, you know, you guys already have a super supportive group, and I want to be part of that and bring some of my own people 
along along the way and just see how many people we can network together and try to help and uh and you know getting these live streams and stuff like that because the more people you have in here the better the conversation gets for the most part and i don't know i just want to see where this youtube thing can take all of us i really didn't even know a couple months ago that i was gonna, gonna be doing live streams and everything so see y'all tomorrow says fish layer yeah see you, everybody i'm gonna go ahead and end this thing here we're at the seven hour and three minute mark thank you guys this is awesome yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll see you guys Sunday if anybody wants to join. And Stan, I'm going to try to be in there Sunday morning for your for your uh, live stream. Depends on how late I go, when I will be able to join. Um, but I'll try to be in there, man. So later, everybody. Thank you so much for being in here. Sunfish King out.